hold them accountable. I am trying to hold them accountable as well. But hold on, let me pull up these comments for Riv. Hello, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Pick Aside Podcast. My name is Joel Moran, and I'm here with River Brown, Andrew Velez, and Joe Dells. This now episode 344. In this episode, we're going to preview the divisional round of the NFL playoffs, debate if Tua is holding back the Dolphins, the pressure Turn on the Cowboys and Eagles, oh, wow. and ranking quarterback <laughs> needy teams. We're also going to talk about the Pascal Siakam trade. He just got traded to Indiana Pacers. Red, it's nice to have it's you on the show. River, River, River Showed Brown. Showed up to his job today. Uh, How do no, you do no, your job no today? No call, no show. You know, they're calling you Duck Man. I don't know why. I've only ducked once, maybe twice. Interesting. Interesting. You know, it's funny, Riv, because I said this on the show. It's it's ironic that you're the one that calls me the guy that needs to do their job and say, hey, Drew, do something. Do your job. And then ironically enough, when you're called to do the only job you're asked to do. Damn. You couldn't show up to the plate. You know what's funny? Ironically, he literally forgot to send you the prize pick thing right before the show. It's not true. Which is implying he didn't do his job again. I'm you know? sorry. You have no basis here. You just stand you're on. It's, it's that was That was a cute try, little deflection there you tried to throw. There's you're no cooked. deflecting today, buddy. You have no right to say that to Drew moving forward. I agree. I agree. No, and you know all. what, Riv? Let me bask in this a little bit. Let's read some <laughs> comments. Let's read some comments because I got to say that they were not kind. Uh, Riv ducking smoke is immature. Mm. Thanks for the rest of y'all showing up and putting in the work. Every bad equals loss equals Riv not showing up. Yeah, that one wasn't true. This one might be the best one of them all. Riv needs some discipline for not <laughs> doing his job. You need a spanking over there? Is that what you need? How much you lock in? I'm gonna lock in, man. Listen, I'm glad I'm turning into a villain. Because the villain role suits me a little bit better, you know? You like crazy. being a heel? This guy was supposed to be the people's dope. champ. He, he let the people, people down. People. God. And that's why I think it hurt the people that much it more. It did. It did hurt Because they, they felt like they knew Riv. They, they thought Riv wasn't going to duck. And then Riv let him down. And th that's what the comments are telling me. All the negative comments, they're telling me, we're disappointed in you, Riv. That's what they're no, telling me. I definitely lost some fans in the comments. Dudes was like, nah, I like Drew now. That's my <laughs> I see that shit. And I, I was, you know, people was DMing me like, Riv, you let me down, man. I, you know, and I tweeted that. I was for sure. But y'all got to understand, I was hurt, man. That, that that was a hurtful one, you know. This guy, I, I just take, don't take have through, sympathy. Take me through your Monday night. Whew. All right, so the Bills just won. Uh, you know, the Bills just won. I got home. They got a nice little win. So I'm like, you know what? This could be a good fucking day. You know, this could be a really good day. The Bills won at home. They had no turnovers. Maybe I can get an Eagles one, you know? So, I, you know, I'm, I'm watching the game. First quarter was nasty. Bucks was going up and down the field. I was hurting. But then we got some good plays. You know, we, we got a sack on third down. We forced them to get a couple field goals. You know, and then we hit the big Smitty T. Like I, was, I kept saying was it before. Tough. Get that shit to Smitty. Throw it to him. Throw it to him. First thing they do, big, big, big throw to uh, Smitty. Smitty starts cooking up. We go into the second half. It's 9-16. We got some good stops. I'm thinking, like, maybe we make a run here. Maybe we could tie the game up. We get the ball. We come out flat. Defense get a stop. We come out flat again. Defense get another stop. So I'm like, all right, wait a minute. The defense, offense catch up. Safety. At that moment, I didn't say a word for the rest of the game. <laughs> and then after that, the game was over. It was so bad. When they turned on the OKC game, and I left. Literally left after that. Went home. Where was you at? I was at Seb's house. Okay. Watching the game. And then I left, went home. I just, I, the thing is, I understand. Dark room. Tough, tough losses. No, really went to sleep. <laughs> I went get, to sleep. Tough losses, they, they hurt. They hurt, but at, at some point. Got to show up. Got to do your job, man. Listen, this, this one hurt. This gives me, I told, uh, Joel texted me, make sure I was good. I was like, bro, this is like D Rose 2012. First round hurt. Like, this was, this was bad. The thing was, it was kind of to, kind of expected, dude. Mm -mm. It was. Kind of. It was, but the pain don't change. It's not like you were like fourteen point favorite. Like I'm not gonna. Hurt, I'm not. I wasn't expecting this to get blown out. Like Riv, let me ask you: Do you That's think fair. like I wasn't hurt when was Tua and the Dolphins you know, got embarrassed? You and being a Dolphins fan is me be two different things. This will be more in your Denver Broncos fight. Like if Josh Allen were to have lost the Steelers, you wouldn't have been gutted. Like this, probably not. Also, it's a little to bit different because again, though? I don't think anybody no. saw the Dolphins beating the Chiefs legitimately. I just want uh, some clarity here. Um... When the 49ers beat the Eagles, you were there on the very next episode, correct? Um, I think I was, yeah. Okay. Was he? 
I think I was. I I don't know. I'm well, forgetting. Well, I I know for a fact that Joel did not. Sh- I'm excuse me that Riv did not show up for a game after Brock Purdy had a, a terrible game. I know for sure there was one of those. Minnesota. It might have been it? the Bengals one. It might have been. It might have been the Bengals one, or it might have been the Ravens one. Mm, it might one of the two. Did I not show up? I do feel like it might have been the Ravens one. It but did I? That was terrible. Was it because was he bad. played like? Did I not have something to do? Or just didn't yes. show up. I don't know, Riv. You no, tell yesterday me. Yesterday felt. Well, yesterday, Monday no, felt yesterday. Like the first time. Monday was the before say, I didn't I'm have shit to do. Coming. Yeah, Monday was like not I stopped answering. Me. That I was it. But um, maybe no, maybe I did. it was one of those games. Though. I think it might have been the Ravens game. Riv, I mean, the thing that kind of got me the most was the poll I put on Twitter. I feel like I sent that. I sh- voted in that. I strictly put that out just for you to have extra motivation. To no, show I voted. Up. I voted no. <clears throat> You voted no, yeah. as in you're not going to do. No, I voted. You were one of the 14 yes. percent of the almost 600 people yeah. that voted on this. That voted no. Wait, and no, then you no, it still was, didn't no, show no, no, up. No, 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 no. It was. Am I showing up? Right. No. It says, "Will River Brown duck the stream tonight?" Oh no! Wait, no. Yes. What were yeah. the options? Are you? It was yes or no. Okay. Yes, I put yes. I put yes. I, yeah. 86 percent of people. I was a part of 86. I was a part of them. 86? Listen, I, I, that the, is that the reputation you want? Riv, I, I want to believe you. I really do. But I just have a hard time believing that the, the loss gutted you that bad. That's just my opinion. Listen, I didn't I didn't text anybody till about when I... Uh, you didn't text any of us till the next day. All you did was emphasize the emphasize, text that you yeah. and your family were okay. Yeah, because you said... Hit this I was ready for... I said, either Riv's going to generationally lie or he's going to be honest that he was ducking like a game of limbo. I was ducking like a game of fucking limbo. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. So, Joel, why do you think he ducked then if he wasn't that gutted? Mm. He just didn't feel like doing it. It was a Monday. Because yeah, based, on, based on the context clues, he tweeted that the Eagles have me in pain or something. I'm drinking. So I was oh, thinking was I was thinking maybe, you know. He was on the influence. You, you just didn't want to show up to the stream. You yeah, might have marks. drank a little bit too much and you just didn't want to show up. That's that's what I thought based uh-huh. on the context. There's of the been tweet. times where I've been lit on stream. It's kind of fun. Nah. Because I think me being drunk would have maybe probably come in a little bit more. Because when I'm drunk, I don't think the same. You would have started screaming. Yeah. So. Goodness. Yeah. Coming more. That's well, I would, ju- I would just say that I hope that moving forward, if you take an L, that you come. You know, just n- because on a Saturday. Hey, I was here when Dallas wait, beat on a uh, Sunday. the Eagles. Yeah, that's the th- when Dallas beat the Eagles, I guess. Yeah. On a Sunday when the Cowboys lost, the live stream, crazy. you know, it's like the Wait, live stream, the, the worst immediate part. reaction. You were talking yes. so crazy the day before about yes. Did that so crazy? I feel like I was you, talking You were it. expecting me. Hold, hold on, hold on. Rib, you came on talking yes, crazy. Yes. You were expecting oh, yes. me. Because I was to, in Dallas lost. Right? You weren't even talking about the game. You were just telling Joel basically how stupid he was for, for saying all, all season right, long. Here that we was go. Year. Oh, out. yes, because that was that was the yes, that was the Dallas screen. You're correct, correct, correct. Shout out to the greatest of all time, Santos Lopez. He put together a, a nice compilation for us. Fucking back. Damn, my fault. I don't know what's going on. It's first time on playback for me. First time, first time. Um no, Joel, I will be here tomorrow. Uh, hold up. Wait a minute. <laughs> Something ain't right. I will be here tomorrow. Um, Winner, you sure about that? You sure about that? Win or lose? Win or lose, I promise. I asked you specifically. Lose. But, stop it. I lose. Get some help. But, I promise we're going to be here. It's funny that you say I'm lying because of... Uh, the next day. Welcome back to a brand new episode <laughs> of the podcast, Instant Reaction. We are here after Monday Night Football. The Buccaneers beat the Eagles. The Bills beat the Steelers. Riv is not here, though. <laughs> what hurt me is that you promised me. That's what hurt me. I'm sorry. Bro. And listen, I understand you ducking and you wanted to not talk to anybody out when the Eagles lost. But moving forward, I would just hope that you got the respect to at least text us that you're not going to show up. If you're not going to show up. that That's my thing. Because I want to start at a certain time. And if you're not going to show up, you, you don't show up. It's See, fine. That's a little debatable. Cause there's times we get here at a certain time and we're still bullshitting, but you should have just said, Hey bro, it's not happening today. I knew that text was never coming. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. I, we're, I'm so aware of just <laughs> River Brown. Never it's just like, I know. Rip's when I didn't, <laughs> Cause I texted y'all with like a few minutes left in the fourth. Once he didn't even answer that, I was like, yeah, there's no way we knew what the vibe was. That's the thing. And it, that's why I think like, Joel was a little hopeful. And you let him down. Mm. You, you let him down the most. Mm. I had no faith. You know who actually <laughs> had the most faith in you? Who? Your boy Nick. What he did? He, he did. came up on the yeah. playback. He says, "I guarantee it. Just trust." 
as an idiot. Give him a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Call him an idiot's crazy. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Nah, yeah. Um, definitely a, a back-breaking character, you know, <laughs> moment right there. Uh, definitely one of those ones that hit your integrity, hit your character for sure. And I just got to make it up for sure. So, you know. I'm nah, Nick up. left the stage on playback. He was like, damn. Damn. He was hurt. Damn. He was hurt. He was like, damn, give him five more minutes. He's like, just, just wait till 11.55. He's like, wait till 11.45. <laughs> I promise he going to be here. He going to be here. I know Riv not going to duck, man. Not oh. Riv. Not Riv. <laughs> there were so many people that were out of me. He's like, nah, that's not Riv. <laughs> That's, that's not that's Riv. not him. He gonna be here. He gonna stand on business. Because yeah, I don't, I don't duck. That's why I'm. I don't He's know why I think I, I do this. He's the just you duck a lot. No, I'm saying before that. I'm saying before that. I don't, I don't duck. But Riv, why did 86 percent of people know that you were gonna duck? Though there has to be a history. That ass whooping was bad. There had to be a history though for people to for 86 percent of people to say yeah you're gonna. I don't duck. think there's no history of me there's ducking. There's been bad ass whoopings for all of our teams. We pulled up. This guy showed up after the Jets went on five. That's what I was just thinking. He's a bold dude, man. I've, I've lost. I've lost. This guy showed up after game. Dallas got smoked. Facts. Sure. Jordan Love also had a good game, so he had a little bit of a little leeway there. But you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he shows up after multiple. Lord knows. Classes. Lord, I got three in a row. Yeah. Three disasters in a row. I was here. I, f- I fumbled one time. This is the last thing I'll say about it. I was just really looking forward. To having a great show because I know if you would have pulled up, it would have been even better than it was. So the fact that we wasn't able to put out the highest quality of shows because you wasn't there, that's what disappointed me the most. There wasn't a lot of shit talking. That's why. It wasn't like there. there wasn't. It was really just us talking about the game. There was no shit talking because you weren't there. Like yeah. I feel like you would have shit talked Jalen Hurts more than we actually did. For sure. What'd you guys say? Nothing. Because I saw your last tweet before you signed off was some, I don't remember something about Hurts that was. Yeah, he was on bullshit. Low yeah, I don't, he didn't have a good game, no. Yeah, he was he on bullshit, though. Someone just said this is a pick-a-side intervention. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the Eagles, though. We're not going to move past this topic without at least bringing up the Eagles. But before we do that, Drew, I, I believe course, that you won something this past weekend. Oh, oh talk to me. Nice. Because, you know, you know we're partnered with Prize Picks. And shout-out to the guys that we're partnered with. And it's the NFL season. It's the playoff time. And... I had to take advantage of some of the matchups that I knew. That Rams-Lions game, we knew it was going to be a battle of the offenses. So I went Matthew Stafford on his demon to throw for over 325 yards. To go Throw for more than 325 yards. Of course he hit that. Aaron Jones going up against one of the worst rush defenses in the, the playoffs remaining in the Dallas Cowboys. Thought the Cowboys would win, but I felt like Aaron Jones, hey, three games in a row of going for more than 100 rushing yards. Why not a fourth? He gashed Dallas. That was easy every day. I took his demon 99 and a half. You get a little bit more money Them when you take the demon. Cooking. The demons do. do be cooking. Now I just need I needed something extra. Just one little one little extra play that I could go ahead and really just make the perfect slip. So I said, you know what? Let me take the let me take it easy on this one. CD Lamb, 69 and a half. And this was on the green one, the goblin. That's mm-hmm. supposed to be the light one. <laughs> that was a sweat. That's the one that had me sweating the most. But then he ended up hitting that with Dak, hit him over the top for that nice bomber. We was talking about it in the group chat, too. Like We thought CD had eight receptions with a little too high. Yeah. Dude ended up getting both of them. The receptions was calm. It was the yards that he didn't get into. Like the, he had the, the big 50-yarder. The big that was, facts. Mm-hmm. That's what really put him, put him over the top there. He did that shit there. quick. I was stressing. I was stressing, yeah. but we cashed out. We cashed out. That was, I think, I don't want to know how many. Let me see how many X's it was. Does it tell you that? Now, I put, prospects it, I put is, in 30, and I got 330. Prospects but. is... Very easy to use. All you got to do is download it on the App Store. It's available in 30-plus states. So the odds are that it's available in your state as well. You use code PAS, and you will get a 100% deposit match up to $100. This weekend, we will be giving out our plays. Each of us will create an entry, and you guys can ride whichever one you like the most. And we'll do it for the Saturday and Sunday game, so one for each. And an update on the merch the hoodies have come in. We have five big boxes of just straight hoodies in there. Uh, we're about Literally to go colored. get them screen printed, you know, get the pick aside logo on it. So this isn't a print on demand type of thing that we're doing here. We're actually, you know, doing these hoodies by scratch, making sure you guys get the highest quality. We're going to ship it out ourselves just to have that one-on-one connection with you guys, that personal connection. So hopefully you guys show off for the merch. Right now, the date for the merch is going to be February 5th. That's where my mind is at. February 5th, they will be up for sale. You guys can go buy them at pickasidepodcast.com. We'll be promoting it before we do the drop, of course, but that's just to update you guys on that. We have a couple of super chats. Smitty who goes, yo, do not let Riv off the hook. Drew took his like a man. Mm. Now make sure you give Riv that same energy 
two times for not showing up. Mm. You just had a whole like ten minutes of yeah. it was an intervention. It was it's a great yes. comp, yeah. I was hoping that Riv was going to send me the twenty dollars on sure. air because he told me to send him the twenty dollars on, on the stream mm-hmm. if the Bucks had lost. But you know, my boy Baker Mayfield not going out like no, no, no punk. He's not going out <laughs> like no punk. You know what the Jalen Hurts? Jalen Hurts was selling. That's what you believe. That's what you think. Jalen Hurts was selling. I definitely think he had a shitty game for okay. sure. You yeah. know, selling is strong because they were all selling. So I guess as a team, you could say yeah, but uh, he didn't play well. Not everybody can be Baker Mayfield, man. Two, Not everyone could be Baker. No two way. and one in the playoffs now. Two and one in the playoffs. Pick a side meme goes River Brown. New, new, new nickname is Part Timer. Damn, damn Part, part time, time Riv. Got a lot of jobs. PTR said you're an intern. <laughs> Santos. You know one loss was two actually. Who? Baker Mayfield's. It, Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. Backup. No. In the playoffs. Chad Henney. Wait, what are you talking about? That was yeah. the game. Richard. Wait, who? Mahomes got injured with the concussion. Chad Henney came in, Save iced the, the game. But that was a drive that he was there for. No, he played a good amount. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mahomes was there for like the entire first half, though, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Still, one half of Mahomes is, is better than, you know, a full game of Tua. The Glaze. <laughs> <laughs> Santos no goes, way. River Brown sucks at his job with Damn. a hashtag. I'll be honest, um, Santos, we got fucking beef, man. <laughs> See, now you know how it feels. Now you know how it he's, feels because it was me. all targeted at me. He betrayed me. This man. is what I needed. He betrayed. <laughs> Thank you. He betrayed me, man. Brandon Rapone goes. Riv, come on back. But Philly fan, I showed face after the game in my Eagles gear, but that Drexel sweater is fire. Still okay in my book. Tough. Lol. No, that's that's be right. You know that's what I've noticed with not just Riv fans that win too much. When they lose, they they aren't used to it. You don't got no character. It's true. We're used you know to it. Jets like, I'm a Je- I Rose remember when we lost the AFC Championship game. Loser. I wore my Jets jacket and pride in fucking fifth grade, whenever that was. <laughs> you guys get too comfortable. After Aaron Rodgers. fan, Warriors fan, Eagles fan. Win too much. To be After fair, uh, Astros is big, big front running. Yeah, we know. Yeah. After Aaron Rodgers tore his Achilles, I made a video the very next day. We went live that night. And that talked was about but Aaron Rodgers. The Jets had won. There was a little bit of game was happiness yeah. on top of sadness. You were on cloud, on cloud yeah, nine cloud, because yeah, of fucking facts. punt return. I was going <laughs> to show up regardless. I was gonna it, show, it was getting sure. talked about you that. Gotta, you had to. to. It was getting talked about that night. Jake Kings goes, Sir, River Brown broke my heart Monday. I couldn't believe what he did. He ain't staying on business. For real, it's okay, though. It, it won't happen heart, again. <laughs> Hashtag like. Riv Academy. <laughs> broke their damn heart. <sighs> Let the fans down. That's that's crazy. I didn't realize that. When I seen favorite. y'all drop the episode, and I seen the comments going crazy. I was just like, damn. I screenshotted it all and sent it to my dad. Like, it didn't have anything to do with what we actually spoke they, they, about. They, they it was did. solely how you <laughs> let everyone down. Yeah, was, the first crazy. 10 minutes of the show, I was like, fuck, can't believe this shit. <laughs> <laughs> they had a comment. Now, the first topic we're going to talk about is a trade that just happened in the NBA. Pascal Siakam got traded to the Indiana Pacers. Crazy. Now, Rev, what do you think about this trade? Yeah, um, what you say? Start working. Yeah, get back to work. <laughs> that, was, that was funny as shit. Um, well, to start off, win win on both sides. I feel like you know, I, I really? really, yeah, I do, I do. I don't think for Indiana this is a long term win because I do think you know they don't know if Siakam's going to resign in Indiana. Mm-hmm. Indiana's never really known to attain free agents like that. But I understand, you know, Halley's down with an injury right now. You want to win. You want to win fast. Now, this could be a situation where, you know, they end up like the Cleveland deal with Donovan might leave. You know, they're trying to w- win too fast when they got a star. Or this could work out. But for right now, they want to win in this playoffs. They feel like, you know, Milwaukee's vulnerable. And there is the Celtics in their own race. But outside of that, Milwaukee's vulnerable. The Knicks, they feel like they have a chance to beat Miami and so forth and so forth. So they want to bring in Siakam to an offense that's one of the best in the league, you know, and – they didn't have to give up none of their young players. You know, they didn't have to give up uh, Matherin, Walker, who doesn't even play for them right now. Uh, Obi is still on the team. You know, so they were able to keep this young core, which is really good. They were able to get off Bruce Brown, who honestly, they were probably going to let him walk this offseason anyways. You bring in Siakam. So even if he does leave, you still leave yourself with enough cap to go do something else. So for, for the most part, that's good for them. And in Toronto... They got three first-round picks out of Siakam, you know. They managed to get Bruce Brown, who they can let walk and get some cap filler. They didn't really bring in any uh, young talent, but 
I believe it was a two two uh, first round picks in 2024 and a 2026 pick or something like that. Mm-hmm. So they're going to get two picks this year, possibly three, and then they're going to have another pick. They do have their other pick as top five protected with the Spurs, I believe. So they're going to be able to have a lot of capital for, unfortunately, not the greatest draft <coughs> in terms of stars, but a lot of role players in this draft. And maybe you pop off and you grab one because we said that about other drafts before, but they're going to be able to bring in young talent to kind of rival or, you know, come behind Scotty and then IQ and now RJ who's a part of their plan. So for me it was a win win on both sides. This could be a hot take, but I think I would prefer the package that the Raptors got for OG than Siakam. And if Siakam signs long term with the Pacers, I think that this is a fleecing. I say that with the idea that who is Indiana gonna get in the open market realistically? Nobody. No one. So they had to be aggressive to make a move like this. They traded three first-round picks. They traded a Bruce Brown. Solid role player, one of the better role players. That's fine. But the three first rounds that they traded, two this year, one that was their own, and then the worst of Houston, Utah, the Clippers, and OKC. So realistically, it's going to be between OKC and the Clippers. So they're going to be giving picks let's say from from range 23 to potentially 30, if you think one of those two teams can win the whole thing, and then their their first round in 2026 for Pascal Siakam, who now gets a chance to see what it's like in Indiana, see if he wants to sign long-term with the Indiana Pacers to play alongside a Tyrese Halliburton. You see the Indiana Pacers are playing some great basketball. Right now, historically, are are the best offense we've ever seen in terms of offensive rating. We know that'll come back down to earth, but regardless, they still play with the highest pace in the NBA. And then you add on top of it Pascal Siakam, who plays with some of the most pace in the NBA on the Toronto Raptors himself. This is a perfect fit for for the Indiana Pacers getting a Pascal Siakam, getting a player before he were to hit the open market. Because again, like I already said, there's not many people that are going to be intrigued to go and sign with Indiana in the offseason that's of the caliber of a Pascal Siakam. Also, by saying it's a win-win for the Toronto Raptors, we're now virtually saying they're going to hit on these two late-round, first-round picks in 2024. They're uh, going to hit. That's how it has to be because think, you traded yeah, Pascal. Because you, 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 you got to think, you don't always you don't have to hit at the right moment. It could be a win now. It could be a win-win for you at the moment because now you have the flexibility. You have the draft capital. They don't have a shit ton of young talent, so they got to bring in young talent. And for Indiana, you're hoping... Siakam stays because like you mentioned they're not going to get guys in free agency you're going to have to kind of sway them through the year you know when you have them so they're mm-hmm. they're going to do the best they can this year to you know um basically try to sway him to stay in Indiana of course if they go for further in the playoffs that's going to help his case but at the end of the day for Toronto they had like there wasn't many deals out there that were giving up three first round picks you know like we can hear all the smoke screen we want but Siakam was making it very clear that he did not, he wasn't gonna want to resign with the team when he got traded. So mm-hmm. it was making it hard for them. There were two things working against the Raptors in this trade. One of them is that Pascal Siakam is on an expiring deal. The second is that he was not going to make any commitment to whatever team that traded for him. So those two things were working against the Raptors in the negotiations. I don't think the market for Pascal was that hot. I don't think OKC wanted to trade for him. I think they're going to let their young core do what they do. They already complement each other so well. I agree. I think it'd be short-sighted. So then it really just leaves Dallas. And I don't think Dallas was going to offer three first-round picks. And I also don't think Dallas has intriguing young players that you really want. Because Mm -hmm. Jaden Hardy is solid, but he has... Times where he's in a game really just depends on if Luka or Kyrie is hurt. That's when he really plays a lot of minutes. And even then, he's been very hit or miss. But they already have Emmanuel quickly, so there's probably no point in getting Jaden Hardy. And then you have someone like Josh Green, who he's solid, but he's going to be a free agent, so you're going to have to pay him as well. They paid him That's right. why... Oh, you're right. They did pay him. But I don't even know if Josh Green will fit on this current Ra- Raptors yeah. team. I think getting Bruce Brown was fine. And it's funny how in the offseason we said that this was an overpay for Bruce Brown. But when you're a small market, you have to overpay for players. And this is what got the deal done, that contract that they signed him on. And that was probably the plan all along. The Raptors can now trade Bruce Brown. I think he's a good enough role player to fetch two first-round picks for a contender that's desperate to add one final rotational player at the minimum you're getting a first round pick for Bruce Brown I agree. so they're going to get four first round picks total 
from trading Pascal Siakam. I think the Raptors did what they needed to do. They needed to move off Pascal Siakam. Now give the full reins to Scotty Barnes and see what he can be. I think Pascal resigns with the Indiana Pacers. I think he's going to fit perfectly with their offense. He's going to have the most spacing he's ever had in his career. He's going to drive to the basket. He's going to play make for them at a high level. I think he's going to be in a a bought in defender and that's going to help their team defense out. And when you play him off ball, if you play him in a corner, that's where he's most effective and he's shooting above 40% from three from there. So they get a knockdown corner, three point shooter. I feel like I'm looking in the mirror when I look at the Sacramento Kings and the Indiana Pacers, because when the Kings traded Tyrese Halliburton for DeMontis Sabonis, Everybody thought, well, DeMontis Sabonis is not moving the needle for this team. This was a bad trade for them. But they were able to get the third seed in the Western Conference the very next year by trading for Sabonis. The Pacers made a trade of their own, getting an all-star power forward and Pascal Siakam, who they will re-sign. And a lot of people are kind of underrating how much better this makes the Pacers. When Tyrese is out there, it's going to make them a borderline they're already borderline to stop what's going to make them that much better their defense improves but now Halliburton who's had some history with injury when he's not out there you have a legit all-star who can keep you in games and at least not tank your season because he can hold the fort while someone like Halliburton is dealing with an injury and coming back I think they made this move because they don't want their season to go in the gutter. You know, a three, a bad three week stretch can put this team out of the top six contention. Yep. And I think they made this move so they could stay in the race. And that's why I think it was a smart deal. Love this move. Love this move for the Pacers. Uh, just one point on your Kings uh, Sabonis. Right? I think the biggest difference there is just who you're giving up. Of course. People mm-hmm. giving up Bruce Brown and picks. We're like, okay, this is a big move. Giving up Tyrese Halliburton uh, at such a young age. That's what people kind of looking at sideways. But I love this for Indy. Uh, you know, We'll see what those picks end up becoming because, as you guys mentioned, they're going to be late first rounders. And uh, from what everyone is saying, is this just this draft class isn't filled with you know top echelon guys that are going to be superstars, especially not in the twenties wherever these picks will be. But for the Pacers, they really need Siakam. You know, they needed someone um, to come in number one who has some size, right? You know, they they have a lot of guys that. Um, aren't as physical, I think, as needed, especially in a playoff setting. When you think about some of the other teams you're going to go up against, possibly the Knicks, the Cavaliers, like those are some guys that want to have playoff experience and, and are, you know, bigger teams that have some physicality to them, especially when Mitchell Robinson is back with the New York Knicks. Um, and I think the fit, it works, right? I think the, the biggest issue or complaint people have with Siakam is his three-point shooting. Yep. Um, but the fact that you have Miles Turner there, you you have enough shooters around him. And as Joel mentioned, when in the corner, he's shooting 47% from three this season. So if in certain spots, he's able to knock down the shot. Everywhere else, it's like 30 31%. So there's specific areas, of course, where he's going to be hotter than others. But as long as you put him in position to succeed, um, I think that's going to be great. And they need another ball handler, too, and creator outside of Tyrese because you have guys that can do it, that can create for themselves and create for others, but Pascal's just doing it at an upper echelon level than those guys. And then you just have more looks in the playoffs, more options to throw at defenders. Like, he's one of the more efficient post players this season as well, so that's another option that we don't see as much from this Indiana team. True. Um, and the half court, too, is like one of the bigger areas of concern, especially in, in the playoff setting for a lot of teams. And the Pacers this year have been so up and down, so fast-paced. Number one offense, like Drew mentioned. When the time comes that they have to slow it down offensively, especially late in the fourth quarters, having someone like Siakam to run pick and roll with Tyrese or just create by himself or just being someone that's 6'8", 6'9", 245, there's not a lot of dudes in the NBA that could that's at that size and could keep up with Siakam's skill set. Um, so this is... It's not the last move the Pacers have to make to become a championship team, Mm -hmm. right? This isn't the move that they go from a first-round exit-type team to an NBA Finals appearance. But this is a move in the right direction. Like, I'm looking at this team. I put a poll out earlier. Who would you take between the Pacers and Knicks? And it was like 60-40 Pacers. And before this trade, I don't think it would have been that. Probably would have been 80-20 Knicks before they make this move for for Siakam. True. So I, I do think getting him... Puts you in contention to hmm. at least winning a playoff series, and where you look I still at voted Knicks, though, where you look personally. at this team was last yeah, season compared to where they are now, or last season they weren't even or close to this position, didn't make the playoffs. Now they have a real chance to make the second round of of the uh, of the Eastern Conference or of the playoffs, and from there, you know, like Riv mentioned, there's vulnerable teams in the East. What's Philly going to look like in the playoffs? Will Joel Embiid's shooting be just as efficient as it's been in the regular season? Because we've seen it drop off in the playoffs, 
And then for the Bucks, defensively, the issues have, have been a problem all season long. So if you could take advantage of that, they've gone back and forth this season, the regular season. Um, but overall, I love this move for the Pacers. I think it definitely makes the, the team better. Um, and I'm happy the Raptors made a decision. You know, the OG was the first step to go towards this rebuild. Now you trade off Siakam. It's clear from top down, you hire a new coach. Um, now you have basically all draft picks, a uh, clean slate more or less with some young players there. Um, so it's a rebuild, you know, and uh, Mujiri was under like a little microscope with what he was going to do with this team. The fact that he got all of these picks plus an extra first probably for Bruce Brown, I think he did a pretty good job at. I think it's interesting because, Drew, you mentioned that, well, no, Dells, you mentioned they have to hit on these picks. But if you look at Indiana, you look at Toronto, right? Like Joel mentioned, it was a great point. Um, they're not going to get guys in free agency. Like, they'll get role players. They'll get good players. But in terms of that star guy, that star player, rarely does it happen where they get guys, or if even ever, where they get guys in free agency. So, you know, they got two picks in this. For, and, of course, this trade helps them lose. Like, this trade helps them become closer Raptors to getting out. their uh-huh. top five pick for the Raptors because, like I mentioned, it's protected. <laughs> it's with San Antonio. You kind of have to land in that area to get that pick back. But also, these are picks that you can trade, you know, to get up, to move up in the draft or the 2026 six pick you can use in a trade they get a star at that time if they need one so it wasn't necessarily about getting a young player because like you mentioned Dallas doesn't have too many like you don't want to uh, owe Max too much you know and then Golden State wasn't willing to give up Kaminga so you couldn't get him you know the Kings they weren't giving up Keegan Murray like a lot of teams wasn't trying to give up their young player for an expiring guy so it, like with Indiana they needed to do it it was pretty simple they had to get something and three first round picks is cool in this time where you're gonna need them what do you think? Did the Raptors get a better deal for OG than Siakam? I feel yes. <laughs> it's, it's depending on how you feel about RJ. Well, you got RJ and is, Quickly, who Quickly but really if is you the feel, If you piece. feel RJ, if you feel Quickly is worth, worth three first-round picks. I'm not saying he's worth three first-round picks. I'm just the, saying he's something that actually intrigues me as opposed to picks 23 through 30. I, I like, you can I, find I, I like quickly, RJ and IQ more. You can find a Quickly you in 23 to 30. Can you? Yeah. I mean, you got to hit. You got to hit. The chances of getting quickly at 23 to 30 are slim. The chance. Respect. That's where they got him. Though. That's where they got him. Max, know, him, Maxi, and those players. They, if, they if tend to go through every next draft, late round draft 30, picks. How many though, IQs solid. compared to how many busts? They have been. You could, you could Kyrie's find. Maxi was a late round let draft. Me know, okay, let me know. Okay. That's 76ers. We're well, not talking about the Raptors. This is like picks 20 yeah. through 40. But let me, let me not say quickly because that's maybe why you can get a player. You can get a player like that, a small scoring guard that is quick. Yeah, like a man the year caliber. Yeah, you can get a player like that in 20 to 30 maybe Jordan not IQ, but okay. you can that, get that Jordan you know Parks was a second rounder you look I know at you're, you have to rounder. look at maybe because I said you're looking quickly at, you're just, talking about the hits but there are infinitely so many more misses, misses than course, there are hits. of course but you trust Toronto to hit on those late picks are you gonna look at last year's draft pick I'm gonna look at NBA draft history no, what, what is Toronto I mean, there, known for more bust than, than yeah but what is Toronto count. known for developing late first mm-hmm. round picks yeah, late second round true. picks mm-hmm. so that if anything that's their calling card we know we can pick 20 because grady dick stinks right now yeah. but we know 20, 20 to 30 late second toronto we'll hit on at this. the time scotty over over jalen suggs was questionable but yep. that ended up being a good draft pick mm-hmm. grady dick over jordan hawkins we'll see how that one ages but uh I don't know if I love the lay around draft picks because the idea is also in 2026 that the Indiana Pacers, they're going to be a team that's contending for for something higher than, of course, uh, a pick in the teens. That's what you're hoping for. I went all the way back to 2015, and let's just see if we can find that type of archetype player. Uh, okay. In 2015, DeLon Wright was the 20th pick in the draft. Um, He's a good role player. Tyus now. Jones was the 24th pick in the draft. Tyus is solid. And those are the two guards. I'm just going to name the archetypes of those players. Mm. Right. Tyus Jones, I like. They're both solid. Yeah. In, 20, in 2016, La- these, were, these were misses. Oh, DeJounte Murray, 29. That's an all-star. We're here. Pascal Siakam, 27. Mm-hmm. Pascal He's not the same type of uh-huh. uh, player. No, yeah, but Karis Avert was 20th see, in this that, draft. That's a... That's a Spark, no, yes, kind of six man, better, spark, but, you know. yes, yes. So that was 2016. Let's go five to five for six at this point. <laughs> yeah, let's go to 2017. Yeah, but there were, we're talking about two hits over ten picks in these drafts. So I know, but we're just saying you guards. can. You, we're just oh, saying oh, that oh, you oh, can yeah. find the type of archetype in the 20s, though. But maybe IQ can be much better than this. Yeah. That's the, yes. that's the you know, archetype verse. That's what I meant to say. That's why IQ. I probably said we're IQ, just saying that. Know? In the 20s, a player of that archetype will most likely than not be available. 
And with the history of the draft, it's showing that I like they the, are the available. Raptors did both though. They got the young players with the OG trade, and then they got more picks with yep, the Siakam yep, yep. trade. So typically, it's hard to do both unless you have like a superstar KD type. You get Mikhail, mm-hmm. Cam, and picks. So they did both just with two separate trades. So in 2017, Derek White was a 29th pick in the draft. Ah. So so far, two two of these great players that you've named have been drafted by the Spurs. Yes. Yes. And also the twentieth pick, uh, well, no, the twenty third pick was OG Ananobi from the Raptors. Oh, Raptors. So they have, I mean, Masai Ujiri. Masai Ujiri, he he's drafted Pascal and OG in the in the late round of the first. So you know he knows how to draft. Twenty eighteen, looking at twenty two thirty, see if we could find an archetype. Grayson Allen, twenty first pick. He's a cool role player. Anthony he's... Simons, twenty fourth oh, pick. Oh shit! Shout out to Portland. For and that. Landry Sham at twenty six pick. Who at, at, at a while he was like yeah, decent, right? Yeah, so that, that's why I mentioned. You could have left that one. Yeah, that's that one that's why I mentioned him. Uh, the twenty nineteen NBA draft. Okay. Also, I'm just gonna go. I'm now. I'm just looking at Raptors draft picks. Twenty twenty. They had the twenty ninth pick, Malachi Flynn. It's been a lot. It's been a lot of Raptors and, and Spurs, Spurs cooking in these drafts. It has been. Golden State 2019, Jordan Poole. And Keldon Johnson was the pick after. And okay. Kevin Porter Jordan Jr. Poole. was pick number 30. Who, Jordan Poole. Are we giving that? What do you mean? He contributed to an NBA championship. But what is he That's more than Amanda quickly can say. He, he's, he's better now, though. <laughs> holy moly. <laughs> he said holy moly. I mean, yeah, he, yeah Jordan he, he, Poole that, that sucks hate, now. But that like, came out of him. That hate came out yeah, of him. Yeah, Jordan Poole sucks now. He's not the good now. I mean, he's done more than quickly he's done. Yeah. By far. Are they the same age? I'm wondering. I don't know. They might be. They might be. Yeah. yeah. In the 2020 be. draft, you have Tyrese Maxey, Emmanuel Quickly, yeah, they Pan Pritchard, Jaden McDaniels, Desmond Bain at pick 30. That one is nuts. That, that draft, one is that insane, draft was insane, actually. Yeah, they had a lot of great Pritchard. late round picks. Yeah, 2021, looking at it, um, Quentin Grimes was drafted, Bones Highland, Cam Thomas. So kind of like, you know. The six man kind of spark plug. Yep, yep, yep. I think Bones Holland could have success. Couple somewhere good, really else. good role yeah. players. Twenty twenty two. This one uh, is not that not good. Yeah, this uh, this is the first miss. It's Malachi Brandon, Christian Brown, not bad. Walker Malachi Kessler was here. Blake Wesley. I'm just gonna name the guards. Uh, Ty Ty Washington Jr. They should have easily took Jordan over Grady. Jordan Hawkins. Yes. <sighs> the pick right after was Jordan. Yeah. And then in this draft, I think a player who has a chance to be that type of archetype is a Marcus Sasser. Ah, yes, yes. yes. If they, if you know, Monty gets fired and shit. I say Monty <laughs> needs to yeah. get far, far away from Detroit for that to happen. Yeah, Marcus Sasser's cool. Is, is IQ ceiling? Would it be wrong if it's um, All Star Dejounte Murray with a better jumper? Say it again. Would uh, IQ, IQ ceiling? ceiling? Yeah, that'd be tough. I don't would, think would IQ's three point be an All Star. Well, no, no, I'm not saying like he's going to be. I'm saying like. IQ's been playing was. pretty solid for Toronto. Because yeah, DeJounte got as a sub. Though. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, but saying all star caliber. That, that one then wrote that. It's averaging almost 20. Yeah, but it's the East off. is loaded with guards. It is. Yeah, yes. he's, no yeah, shot he gets yeah. into yeah. the East. It's, not, it's, not, it's not a knock on, on no, no, Emmanuel no, no, to say that either. OD. So I understand. And Terry Rozier is not all star, and he's playing better than. It's just a weird infatuation with Terry. Once he started talking about Terry, he really started hooping his ass off. Yeah. Terry like he was Sears playing well, really good. right? right when no, you first good. brought him up, he was playing well for a little stretch. Yeah, like a forty ball, been, probably a day before crazy. you brought him up. The Heat want to go out and make a trade for him. I, I saw didn't that. See that. Kyle Lowry's gone for them. Maybe who that knows? Brother needs to go. Bloyer goes. Hey boys, will the merch drop have international shipping or is it only in the U.S.? It will be shipping internationally. Mm. Junior so Nando goes. Have to pay a little back. Safe, safe to say, answer. Packers won trade with Jets. LMFAO. Damn. Um, yeah. How are they fucking coaching? Well, no, it's not a first. It's a second. Yeah. Still, that's a W. Rather have they got Love off Aaron Rodgers and played Jordan Love. <laughs> you got you oh, traded for the wrong quarterback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> traded for the wrong quarterback. <laughs> we really did. Well, you guys would have found a way to Jordan fuck Love. Up no. Jordan would have been ass with us. No. Yeah. Undoubtedly. No. That's really yeah. bad, yo. Like, yeah, you would have. You would have found a way to fuck him up. There's not a doubt in my mind. He would, have been, he would have sucked. No. He wouldn't have. With Nathaniel Hackett, he would have succeeded? Nathaniel if, Hackett, if we're that not offensive so, If we're not so hell-bent on getting Aaron Rodgers, Nathaniel Hackett's not the OC. Mm. With all due respect. Yeah, that's a great That's a great point. Okay, so we're going to hire a bright offensive mind. That'd be a first. <laughs> <laughs> he also cooked. We can. We want Sirianni? Robert Sala has connections, Should've man. LaFleur. What could have been? Mike LaFleur, his brother, could have stayed. That's what I'm saying. You want him gone. Listen, he was Bastard. terrible. He was terrible. We have was Matt great. Patricia. He was terrible. I was on my Drew coping for Zach Wilson. Uh, no. You are the the originator of coping. Yes. The Zach Wilson cope was generational. It was. But it didn't you last re- that you, long. you should have been on his PR team. 
<laughs> no, I should have. Like, he was. 100%. No, no, no he I was because if you typed in Zach Wilson into Twitter, Joel Moran's account would pop up. <laughs> <laughs> Every single big time tweet. We're going to preview the NFL divisional round of the NFL playoffs. The first game up is on Saturday, Texans at Ravens. In the first matchup, the Ravens beat the Texans week one, 25 to 9. I think the score is very misleading. This was a very was, close game was, when well, you watch it back. I don't know, close, it but was, they played better than what the score let off. Going into halftime, the score was 7-6. to six. In the second That's half... That's embarrassing in how it ended. That's correct. What it did. But yeah, the but Texans were an inferior team. No, it's not wrong. It was C.J. Stroud fumble, led to yeah, you know Ravens touchdown. I, I thought this game was much closer than it was, and I thought the Texans' defense played amazing in this game as well. Their offense hadn't clicked yet. C.J. was still a rookie. They didn't give him the full keys to the offense like they have now. I, I think this game is going to be an ugly matchup. I really do. Um, I don't think it's going to be easy for the Ravens. I do think that they will win somewhat convincingly, like kind of how what we felt with the Bills and Steelers, but just kind of with the Texans having a little bit more you know, points on the board. But I do think the Ravens will win, but the Texans got, they got an outside chance, man. I think this team is built for what the Ravens do well. I will say the one thing that kind of stands out to me is that the line on this game is eight and a half. And I feel that that's a little bit disrespectful for the Houston Texans and the way that their offense just performed against the second best defense in the National Football League and the Cleveland Browns. The secondary was supposed to be the bet, one of the best units in football, and CJ gashed them. Nico Collins gashed them. Dalton Schultz got his. Uh, Brevin Jordan was able to break a long touchdown, too. A lot of that is a credit to Bobby Slowick and the great game plan that he drew up. But of course, execution. CJ executed at a near flawless level. And then Nico Collins, especially when the ball's in his hands. Don't want to cut you off. Mike McCarthy's returning to be the Cowboys head coach. You hate to hear that if you're a Cowboys fan. And I apologize to all Cowboys listening. Um, but if you look at it from that lens where We've seen this Texans offense play special against an elite-level defense in the playoffs. It should be similar where you can at least respect that they could put up points against the Ravens, who, in their own right, are a better defense slightly than the Cleveland Browns. I, I do think that the Ravens will win this game. I think it will be a close game like you did mention. If I had to, to, to be a betting man in this situation... I would take the the Texans points eight and a half. I seem like it, it's a bit much. I think that it could be within a, a three to four point game. But the, the Ravens are a better team. Lamar Jackson has been playing at an elite level MVP season. He just had in twenty twenty three. To me, I think the Ravens are just the t more talented team. I would like to see the the Texans come away with it because it would be one hell of a story. But right now, the the Baltimore Ravens still are the best team in the AFC and are the team to beat. Diana Rossini is also reporting that Howie Roseman and Nick Sirianni are reaching out to available coaches and coordinators for the 2024 season. Okay, so oh. so that means Sirianni will be back, but that coordinators right. will be different, which make, makes sense. It, it makes sense. He, he he'll get an he'll get another year. If I'm an Eagles fan, I want Sirianni gone this year. No. I say that because the coaching options don't get better than this season. I get, what you, I, get, I, get, I, get I guess I get that part. But um, Howie and Sirianni got this weird love connection. You know. I mean, y'all went to a Super Bowl. I yeah, get that's it. why he won he earned himself another year. So I just want better coordinators. I agree. If we get better coordinators, I think Sirianni's fine. I agree. Talk to me, Riv Twin. Is he pulling this one out? <laughs> You know, <laughs> I would love to see it. It'd be awesome. No, I think it's. I think he has. He has nothing to lose in this. I think the Texans have nothing to lose in this game. You know, I think all the pressure is indeed on Baltimore. You know, I think especially after coming off a number one seed in the uh, AFC. I think in the league, if I'm not mistaken, but definitely in the AFC. You know, Lamar coming off probably his second MVP season. The defense being elite, Roquan and all them boys. I do think this is the year where they should go to the Super Bowl, you know, so a lot of expectations, you know, he just had a buy. But at the same time, you know, the Texans, they don't have nothing to lose, so they're definitely going to be able to go out there and play. And you saw them against the Browns. I know the Browns' defense got lit up. You know, two of them were uh, two pick sixes, which they played great defense, you know, plus Flacco was just looking. He looked old, you know, and that pass rush was able to, you know, force some pressure. CJ, I, I thought he played good. You know, but I thought he didn't have to do too much. Like, I know his numbers looked flashy, but I really thought, like, a lot of the players, a lot of receivers were open. It you worked. know, he didn't have to make too many difficult throws. You know, he's able to push the pace. I guess so, it speaks more about the fraudulent 
Cleveland Browns. Possible. You know, you know they lost Damn. in the same round as the Dolphins. But you know, at the same, <laughs> but you know, and they had no quarterback. So well, yeah, I didn't either. But uh, at the at the Zing. same at, at the same time, I think the Texans don't pull this one out. Unfortunately, you know, this one I love to see it. I definitely do. But I think this is definitely Baltimore's year to not maybe not come out, but get to the AFC Championship game. I got the Ravens in this one. I uh, don't think there's much surprise yes, there. The jinx. I need it. Um, I would not be mad. I had uh, what was your record this past week? Um. Only game I got wrong, I got I, two wrong. Dolphins and the the one, the Eagles. Mm, okay, me too. I got two wrong. And the Cowboys. And the Cowboys. Oh fuck! So maybe I got three. So okay. I went three. So for we all six. got. So I went four for two, four and two. How did you go three for six? Three out of the six correct. So, so okay. three and three. Fifty percent. You're four and two. That makes sense. We're all close. Because I took Miami. I took. I only the, got two wrong too. Yeah, you're four got, too. Yeah, I got Cowboys. We wrong got the same record. Oh yeah, yeah I do, so we oh yeah. So record. watch out with really that. Really in hindsight, I should have taken the Chiefs. Oh wait, no. I, for, I think we got four losses. The Rams. Um, I picked the Rams. That was my one of my loss also. That's what I'm saying. Rams. Mm-hmm. Oh no, I picked the Texans. Ah, so Rams, Dolphins. I picked the Texans. Eagles. Yes, yes. More of the story is um, I don't know why you're saying I'm jinxing them when I have better record than you are. Oh my. Wait, I said to pick a side jinx. Oh, my apologies. My apologies. Yeah. Um, he, got, he took that person. I, th- I did, did take it Because he thought I said something. No, I'm saying we all picked the, the Ravens. Ravens. I knew okay. what he meant. I, I didn't, I didn't he get it. He could have just asked that. me what I said, but he didn't. He um, crazy I took person. it personal. I, I Because you're usually you're taking shots. It's okay. Um, I'm the third. I'm the only guy who takes shots in this. It's him. He fell <laughs> off. Uh, this is going to be a big test for CJ I could easily be four and two. I could easily be. You can easily be not the fourth place, but you are. <laughs> Retire. Well, I'm still one game. So, yeah, for that, if he was going to talk shit, I should have took the fucking cheese. You knew he was going to talk <laughs> it shit. It is what it is. You knew he was going to talk shit. Um, another test for TJ, CJ Stroud. Does feel like a bit of a different environment going into Baltimore outside. It's going to be 20 degrees, not inside yeah. in the dome against Cleveland. And regardless of the home road splits with Cleveland, because it is ugly, you know, the best defense at home, worst defense on the road, damn near. Uh, it's still a talented defense. They got a lot of dudes out there. Of course, you got Miles Garrett, Ward, um, and it's well coached with Jim Schwartz. So I don't want to take that for granted just because their bat on the road doesn't give, you know, the leeway to be like, well, we should have expected this. No, CJ Stroud went out there and balled. Um, did get a little bit of help from his receivers, a lot of yak, a lot of missed tackles from Cleveland too, but he played great. We know CJ Stroud. He's a tremendous quarterback. Um, but this just feels like the Ravens year to me. You know, Lamar Jackson at home this season completed nearly 70% of his passes, 14 to four touchdown interception ratio and a pass rating over 112. Um, he's been so great situationally. This team has been great. They're ninth best team on third down, seventh best in the red zone, um, seventh best third down defense, second best red zone defense. And over the last month of the season, it's been even better. Third in uh, drop back EPA, um, excuse me, defensively, they're third in drop back EPA. Um, and defense overall fifth in EPA per play. So this team has been great on both sides of the ball. Lamar Jackson's been spectacular MVP type level. Situationally, they've been great. And this defense um, with McDonald has been one of the best defenses all season long. It would be very impressive. CJ Stroud has done impressive shit all season long, and you can't count them out because when you have an elite quarterback, you're always going to have a chance to win a game. But the Ravens have an elite quarterback on the other side. And overall, they're just a more experienced team, um, more talented team defensively as well. So... I'll be going with the Ravens here. But I think the Texans match up well because in the first matchup, Gus Edwards averaged four yards per carry. J.K. Dobbins averaged 2.8 yards per carry before he got hurt for the season, unfortunately. The shut down the run. They did. And they shut down the run. This year, they're second in run-stop win rate, their first in rush success rate on defense. Quietly. So yeah. this, this is an elite rush defense unit. And a lot of what I saw in the first matchup, which is a very long time ago, but I think it'll be a similar game plan, is that they're going to blitz Lamar Jackson a lot. I don't trust the Ravens' tackles all that much. I think that their pass block win rate is inflated because of Lamar Jackson kind of just uh, Being abiding pre- pressure. Yeah. Yes. Ronnie Stanley, Morgan Moses are very beatable. Will Anderson Jr. is one of the best edge rushers right now. He has one of the best pass rush win rates. Jonathan Grenard on the other side is very high on that list as well. So I think they can cause pressure on Lamar Jackson. And their secondary... I think can match up very well against the Ravens receivers and it can man up. I think the Ravens still have some question marks on that receiving core. Mark and Andrews looking he's like he's trending to yep. play in this game. That, that would be big news for the Ravens. I trust the corners on the Texans. Derek Stingley, Steven Nelson, they have been really stout. They have. I just think on the other side, it's going to be very hard for the Texans to move the ball. 
the, the Ravens aren't the best run stopping unit. Their defense doesn't stop the run at an elite level. So they can find some success on the ground. The Texans can, but I don't think that they'll overplay the play action. Like the Cleveland Browns did the Browns overplayed it. And they had a bunch of lapses in coverage. I don't think that's the Ravens. They're going to be much more disciplined. And I also think that we're going to see a, a more man to man approach from Baltimore. One of the weak points of the Texans offense is that their receivers are not great against man-to-man outside of Nico because if you could take him out the game, then everybody else is a struggle to get open. So I think this is one of those games where they really key in on Nico, and with the amount of pressure they bring, C.J. Stroud this year, one of his weak points has been under pressure. So I think if, if they can get a lot of pressure on C.J., it can cause mistakes for the offense. I, I have the final score being 24-13. to 13. I think it's a real grinded-out, muddy, ugly game, but the Ravens will make just a few spat, splash plays to kind of – you know, get the lead on them. 13 points well. to the Texans. I just, after what I saw last week, I don't know if 13 points is in the cards for them. I understand this Ravens defense is better too. than the Browns. The road, and being yeah. on the if road they were is in the, If they were tough. in the Dome in Texas, it would be different. 13 points. Mm, it's cold as shit. 14, excuse I mean, me. It could be 20 degrees. Also, a minor narrative in this. You mentioned Ryan, uh, Ronnie Stanley. On the opposite side, Laramie Tunsil. Did you know Ronnie Stanley was drafted over Laramie Tunsil because of the, of the gas mask yeah. <laughs> situation on draft day. Laramie Tunsil is definitely better than Ronnie Stanley. And I say that with the idea that Laramie Tunsil is going to be on the other side. He is one of the best left tackles in the game. History could be completely An different if he stays over. It's going to be the first That's time I've ever heard a left like tackle narrative yeah. going into the no, it's game. Not, it's, no, it's, not it's, no it's cool that you know that. Yeah, honest. it's just a quarterback it's just a, matchups. No, left tackle. It's just a random, random tidbit. Facts. Uh, I do think if I was the Texans, I wish that the Ravens struggled against the pass and not the run. Because if I'm yeah. the Ravens, if you want to run the ball with Devin Singletary and uh, and Damian Respect Pierce him. all game, he's, Respect he's Devin. solid. Devin, he's, he's good. Solid. But if I wish Tank was, if uh, you're gonna healthy. win, if that's oh, how you're dude. gonna win, I'll take my chances. If Tank I can't was have I can't have CJ Stroud out there throwing the ball for 350 yards and three touchdowns. Like if they're gonna just run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, I trust Baltimore to be able to put up points. That eventually, they're gonna have to pass. One of the game of the weeks I'm really looking forward to is the Packers at the 49ers. I'm really looking forward to this game. It's a, I really am. That's the next game after? Yes, it's yes, Saturday man. night. It's going to be prime time television. <laughs> Last week, I had a hunch that the Packers might upset the Cowboys. I thought they matched up with them really well. Your Super Bowl pick, you had a hunch they were going to lose in round one? It's all yes, because right? it's all about matchups. <laughs> and the oh, Packers, I had a feeling about it. That's why on the podcast I said, the Packers got a legit chance. I think it's going to be a shootout. The difference is that the Packers were in the shootout and the Cowboys could not keep up Mm-mm. with the shootout. But if the Cowboys offense played to the level that they were playing all year, it would have been a, a very high scoring game. But I was too afraid to pick the Packers. I said, you know what? No way the Cowboys lose round one. But you know what that means. If my Super Bowl pick goes down to the team right. and the, the team that beat the Super Bowl pick, I think the Packers are upset in the 49ers. And I think that they're being disrespected. I've seen the line on Vegas. It's nine it and a half. High. It's a nine and a half so point spread. Be- the Packers are winning this game. I would definitely take the points with the Packers. I'm oh, taking so. the points with the Packers. The Packers are an elite level football team. And yes, they've had some the bad Packers losses. They, they've had some bad losses to the Buccaneers, to the Panthers, right? But good you look at their highlight wins. They're good, Riv. Wait, we're talking no, about... No, Riv's over here. Like they're no, not good? No, that's not what you said. You was like, they're yep. an elite level. They're an elite level like, team. I, I, I wasn't... All I was doing was actually like, I think, elite? I think, they're, I think their offense is playing at elite yeah. level. That's, all I, that's what we talking about. I think they're an elite, elite level team right now. They do so many things well. Dallas did a lot of their work against second and third string guys. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't give a fuck what yeah. Dallas numbers were. <laughs> Shits were all fake. No, it was irrelevant. It was Here, so here's the thing. Since the Buccaneers and Panthers games, when the defense was terrible... Matt LaFleur has, ta- has been taking control of the defensive meetings. Mm-hmm. So he's been in there. Oh, and also, Joe Barry. LaFleur, <laughs> I'm going to have to start issuing apologies because Jesus. Joe Barry also is very familiar with West Coast schemes. So I think the game plan against the Cowboys was much easier. Kyle Shanahan is a different animal. And all respect to Kyle Shanahan because I have so much respect for him as a what he does on offense. But Pioneer. you look at who the Packers have beat this year. They've beaten the Chiefs on the road. They beat the Lions on the road Thanksgiving. Week 18, they go and they beat the Bears. I know they were in a, a great team, but they were a great defense at the time. 
And then in round one, they go on the road and they beat the Cowboys. Right, we We're talking about beating the Chiefs, Lions, Cowboys all on the road. I don't think being on the road affects this team all that much. And the Makes confidence level that this team is playing with, Jordan Love, what, how he's playing right now, he's playing like a top two quarterback in football. You cannot name me three quarterbacks definitively playing better than him right now. He's playing at an MVP level. He's playing elite caliber football. And not only that, but I'm looking I'm looking at the weaknesses that the 49ers have. It's not top three. It's Lamar. It's Josh. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's I Mahomes. forgot. Yeah, Lamar. <laughs> Jordan Love's playing better than Patrick Mahomes right now. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying Jordan Love is a top three quarterback in football. Damn. He's playing better than you him. Have no and if you to. think I'm going to say anything against that, you must not and know And I me. think Jordan Love is playing just as good as Josh Allen. Like there, you cannot say anybody is playing head and shoulders above Jordan. I wouldn't Love. say head and shoulders. No, every right how Jordan Love is playing right now. Twenty one touchdowns, to one though. interception. I'm looking at Dallas. Dallas Jordan Love is playing better. He's gonna have to do oh. this for more than just this one game against Dallas before I'm. Well, saying he did. He's, he's, he's been doing it since week eleven, and, and all these guys. Jordan Love's been doing it since week eleven. That's he's when this hot well? streak yes. started. Josh did it all year. Josh didn't do it all year. There were some stretches where he wasn't all that great. Like two. Yeah, but since week eleven, Jordan Love has been. Perfect, borderline perfect. That's, I, that's how he's. Been. I will one hundred percent agree with him. He has been great. He's been great. I don't, I don't really care about the Forty ers Have some weaknesses that can be exploited. Here we go. If you look at that's name the weaknesses. The two games that they were susceptible to the run. Cincinnati Bengals. They ran the ball well, and Joe Burrow, of course, played his ass off. The Minnesota Vikings, Kirk Cousins with no Justin Jefferson, they were able to beat the 49ers. The 49ers this year against zone runs are 31st at defending it. The Packers run zone runs 68% of the time, and they're ninth in EPA at it. So this is a 49ers team that they don't defend the run particularly well. And you look at their offensive line, 20th in pass block win rate, 23rd in run block win rate, win rate. The other side of it, their 12th and pass rush win rate, 10th and run stop win rate. So we know they have an elite defensive mm -hmm. front. But then you get into late in downs when they have to play from behind. They're 20th in EPA per play and 24th in success rate. Been saying this for a while. This offensive line collapses. I went back and I was looking at the games that I felt like were the 49ers' toughest games. We have the Rams, the Cowboys, the Browns, the Bengals, Rams the Vikings, the Ravens. Yes, week Rams week two. Mm -hmm. In those games, the 49ers went two and four. Brock Purdy, seven touchdowns to 10 interceptions. And Brock Purdy has thrown 14 touchdowns. The 10 interceptions were four were against the Ravens. I'm not. I'm, I'm listening. I know, I'm, also I'm, listening. I'm listening. I'm just also even, throwing context. Even if you I, didn't think, say, I didn't think Rams were one of the toughest in comparison to other ones. And it, two, no, it, it was. was a tough it game. Because honestly, mm -hmm. I think. Purdy did not play well in that game. He didn't play well. Nah, he, he played all right. He didn't play well. Because he, he had some, like he had three, throws, four yeah. overthrows. Even if you don't want to count the Ravens game, it's seven touchdowns to six interceptions. Ravens versus those teams. Ravens game counts. You I'm just saying count. a lot. Of I'm that. just saying even if even game. if you take the awful game from Purdy, yeah. it's still seven touchdowns to six interceptions against the toughest games that I feel like Agreed. they played. Agreed. Brock Purdy this year, 14 touchdowns, eight interceptions versus teams with a top 15 DVOA. I think the Packers are playing defense at a high level because they're finally playing free. They are playing more physical at the line, man-to-man, -man, and I think that can disrupt the timing of the offense. And this is why I say the Packers are an elite team. They're first in EPA per play versus zone coverage. Third under pressure. 19th versus man coverage, so that's the weakness, but the 49ers don't play man. They play zone. And Jordan Love this year has been the best zone quarterback in the NFL. He's been a top three quarterback under pressure in the NFL versus the Cowboys. He was under duress and making throws that very few quarterbacks can make. Like I said, they're fourth in EPA per play when they play man coverage on defense. And I think their defensive line is a slept on unit. A lot of the players the Packers have on their roster are players that lost in the divisional round two years ago in 2021. And in that game, I thought Joe Barry had a solid defensive game plan against the 49ers. He was well, the star. Well, won the Niners the game was the special, special teams, teams touchdown. Was that a snow game? It was it was a cold game. I don't think it was snowing. And it was also just cold. The Packers' inability to move the ball down the field. On the defensive line, Rashawn Gary is a superstar. Kenny Clark, Devontae White, TJ Slam, Preston Smith, Lucas Van Ness. The only guy that I trust to hold up on the 49ers offensive line is Trent Williams. Everybody else is pretty much a liability. But 
the Packers can protect Jordan Love. This year, Rasheed Walker, their left tackle, is second in pass block win rate. Zach Tom is 16th in pass block win rate, both above 90%. Josh Myers and Elton Jenkins, both top 20 in pass block win rate. This is the second best pass blocking offensive line in the NFL. So they'll be able to give Jordan Love time in a pocket to either play, make, and extend plays or win within the pocket. So we're talking about a team that can protect the quarterback better. They're elite versus zone defenses, which is what the Niners play. They're elite versus pressure. They're a great zone running team, which the 49ers are not great at defending. And the Packers are better at defending zone runs, which is the 49ers staple. They're 17, so they're middle in the pack. That's a bigger upgrade than what the 49ers are defending it. Like I said, the 49ers are 2-4 and four against better comp, and I think their offensive line can get exposed if they fall behind. In the beginning of the Packers game versus the Cowboys, Matt LaFleur, when they won a toss, they received it immediately, and they went down and they scored a touchdown. If they win the toss on the road against San Fran, I expect a similar mindset of aggressiveness. They will go down. They will score. And if you have the Niners playing to where they cannot use a bunch of tricks and motions and you don't have to worry about the run that much, that is a recipe to beat the 49ers, and that's not been a position that Brock Purdy has been in and all that much this season. I think the Packers will take a lead in this game, and I think Jordan Love is going to have another amazing performance. How he's playing right now, he's playing like one of those superstar tier quarterbacks that you need in the playoffs. He can make every single throw, and there's something about how he's playing that makes me believe that he's going to keep playing like this. And, and I feel like Aaron Rodgers might have been holding Matt LaFleur back because Aaron Rodgers would switch play calls at the line routinely. He wouldn't trust the offense. With Jordan Love, you are getting somebody that is trusting the offense, but that can also make the playmaking plays that Aaron Rodgers makes. So you're getting both, but you're not getting stubbornness. And I think a lot of the times Aaron Rodgers was stubborn, and the last time he played in the playoffs versus the 49ers, he played bad. And I don't think Jordan Love's going to play that way. I think Jordan Love has a great game, and the Packers win. Final score, I got 23 to 17. Packers are winning on the road. How the mighty have fallen, man? It goes from the Niners coming out the NFC to the pretty much going to be seven, 17. 17 points. That would be like probably a bottom three or four game of the year for the Niners, I'm assuming. The Browns game, which they missed a lot of players. Uh, I think the Vikings game was similar. Yeah, wasn't those it? were the back to back weeks where she was a little wacky. Oh, <laughs> with the injuries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Joel, I'll say, unless I just missed this part of your, your conversation, um, you talked a lot about the run defense for both teams and how, yes, the Packers are slightly better when it comes to success rate. But when it comes to, to drop back EPA and success rate, when it comes to drop back, Niners are better in both of those regards. Uh, when it comes down to that, I do anticipate that Jordan Love still can have a solid game, even regardless of that fact. But I mean that more so in the sense of, the Niners pass offense. I think Brock Purdy will still be able to have an efficient ball game, especially Ayuk. You still have Debo Samuel, George Kittle. They had a little bit of rest. CMC gets an extra rest with the calf injury that he did pick up late in the season. Trent Williams will be healthy. You're not wrong at all about the offensive line. I do, I do think that it is a pedestrian offensive line being masked by two things. Trent Williams being the best left tackle in the game and of course Shanahan's scheme with with their ability to to get the ball out uh, get the ball out efficiently. But when it comes down to evaluating the run stop and the rush success and the rush EP on the defensive side of the ball, I feel like that could be a little bit case in point with the idea that yes Aaron Jones has been on an insane tear four games in a row of over 100 yards, but it is CMC so they're going to still have success on the ground regardless. And then also, if he needs to check it down, we know that Brock Purdy has no problem seeing CMC in that regard. When it comes to the defensive side of the ball, I think what it needs to be, the, the point of emphasis for San Francisco is to get pressure on Jordan Love against the Cowboys. The Cowboys were able to get pressure, but weren't able to get home enough. I look at the, the Niners. You have Bosa. You have Chase Young. You, you, you Hargrave. have Hargrave or, or Eric Armstead. You need to be able to put pressure on Jordan Love. And a credit to this, Green Bay offensive line's been playing solid. But 
you made this move for Chase Young to to have the, that type of pressure to release some some pressure off of the secondary. I feel like that needs to be a point of emphasis on the San Francisco side if they want to limit this offense. I think 17 points is a little bit rude for the San Francisco 49ers. All you're doing is case in point trying to to say that Brock Purdy's not meant for a game like this and he's not going to be able to put points. At least that's how I I take you're it. You're taking it the wrong way. I think the Packers defense has turned a tide because they're playing more man coverage. They're playing more free. Should you play man coverage against Debo and Brandon Ayuk? When you have the corners to do it, you can. But can I ask you a question? And it's it's I'm not, interested to finish. Uh-huh. And it's not particularly just man coverage. There's different variations. For so sure. there are some like man to man, you know, I have you across the line. Yep. But then there are match zone man coverage principles where depending on the zone you're in, if a receiver gets into your zone, you, pick up. you match and you man yep. coverage. Mm-hmm. So I think there's going to be a lot of those concepts in- implemented in. And from their first playoff matchup in 2021, when Joe Barry was defense coordinator, uh, the defensive game plan was wet, was good. I know that was against Jimmy Garoppolo, but that was still a high powered offense that was, a, was effective offensively. I understand the 49ers being an elite offense. You're not going to find a chink in their armor mm-hmm. with just the regular EPA drop back plays. But on late down, so third and fourth down, they're a bottom 10 offense. In EPA per play, they're 24th in success rate, which means if the Packers can get the Niners into third and six, third and seven, third and eight, third and nine situations, now that's the advantage. And that's a situation that Brock Purdy doesn't play particularly well in. I think that there is a turnover or two in Brock Purdy in this game. I do think that there's going to be pressure in his face. The Packers have a great interior defensive line. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I understand getting pressure on Jordan Love, but Jordan Love is elite under pressure. You know, we've seen the Cowboys. Cowboys, I mean, he's been that all year, though. No, agreed. I'm just going off what we saw last, of course. Jordan Love is poised. And the way he's playing, the confidence he has, the command he has at the line to switch plays, I feel like the way he's quarterback and he's matured so much. And this feels like someone, a quarterback that has just caught fire at the right time, a team that has caught fire at the right time. And they have nothing to lose. If it wasn't obvious, because I didn't say it flat out, I am going to go with the Niners in this one. I do anticipate that Jordan love, he should have a solid game. No doubt about it, because he's been playing some unbelievable football these last few weeks. I anticipate Aaron Jones have himself a solid ball game. But end of the day, the Niners do have the better offense. With the Packers playing as elite as they've been these last few weeks, I still anticipate that it should be a light show on San Francisco's side, and they should definitely come away with the W here. Where are you going, Dallas? But I would take Packers points. I think that's disrespectful. disrespectful. Guy, bro. Who was they? <laughs> he picked. No, he picked the Niners, right? Yes. Oh, and I said seventeen <laughs> points is why. rude to Brock. Yeah. Um. My my question why? is not rude to Brock. It's rude to the offense. Why we got to make Brock? Brock's not the centerpiece no, of offense. Good to know. No, he's not. Noted. My question has a, has this Packers second. You think this Packers secondary is really great enough to hold up an offense with Debo? With that? like they haven't so, seen nothing like this. And I know you bring up Dallas, and I know that, was, like Drew mentioned, that was the last um, memory we have. But outside of CeeDee Lamb, you're not too worried about anybody on Dallas on that offense. You know, and, I, and the thing is, now I don't, don't want to get disrespectful on Jake Ferguson. He's well, really well, in good comparison to oh, now no, you're playing sure. the Niners, Fair. and now you worry about Kittle. Now you worry about Ayuk, Debo, and then you cannot forget about CMC nope. when he Possible. gets in the pass Possible. game. So it's, it's definitely a challenge because you mentioned, because Packers secondary, when they do play man, they're a great unit. You know, they have a, a collection of – Good vets and Jair Alexander, and then the young rookies and the young studs. So they're they're a good secondary, but like it's it's this is a different like this is Niners in San Fran, fresh off a bye. From my understanding, they're actually the, one of the best teams in the league off a bye. You know, and I, 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 two two weeks off essentially. They didn't play week eighteen. No, they, they had the week off for the bye. It's and and their 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 losses this year. I get it. They they've been um behind. You know, against the Ravens, tough team. They just Brock Purdy played terrible against the Bengals. Towards the late end of the third quarter into the fourth, Brock Purdy threw some back breaking interceptions in the red zone, just cost them the game. Vikings Browns games. They were both they were hurt. They pretty depleted in their offense. But this is a team that is uh, it's really dangerous offensively. 
Like you mentioned, though, the Packers don't have shit to lose. You know, I don't think Jordan Love plays bad. I really do think he plays a good game. You know, I think if it's going to come down to anything, it would be the fact that the Niners are just going up and down the field. You know, I think the Packers offense will be able to score some points. But I do got the Niners. You know, I don't think Purdy or Brock, uh, excuse my language, I don't think the Niners or Brock get really too behind in this game. I think even if they're down seven, they'll still be able to, to move up the field. I think they've been waiting for this moment to get back in the playoffs. Like you mentioned, the the, the Packers on the mission, where this is a team that walked into the NFC Championship game and had to play with their third-string quarterback. So this is another team that feels like they're on a mission. They missed out on the Super Bowl last year. They're on a mission to conquer the NFC. And with Dallas and the Eagles out, there was no chance before, we thought. But now there's really no chance for a team to come in there, they feel like I'm saying, for them to come in there and beat them in San Fran because they got a home field advantage throughout the play, uh, up until the Super Bowl. So I got the Niners here. I, I think they win this game. They should win this game. I do think out of all of the underdogs this week, I have a feeling that the, the Packers could be the one team that gets the upset here. Uh, my other three picks I feel pretty confident about. But the Packers, the writing's on the wall for an upset. Just disrespect the twin. Well, because the Ravens smoked the Niners. So yeah. the Ra- I, yeah, I mean, the Ravens are also... They beat every yeah, good team. I can't even hate um, on that. But it, it's more so just because how well this offense is playing. The Texans offense is playing great, too. Don't get me wrong. Um, but the way this Packers offense is playing, the way Jordan Love, his confidence, his command of this offense, and now you have Aaron Jones to pair with that, who looked as good as Aaron Jones has looked in a Green Bay Packers uniform, even Absolutely. at 29 years old. He's looked explosive and... Oddly enough, those early season injuries probably were for the best Bless because him. he's not getting that wear and tear on his body. Right now, probably feels like week six to him, where he has plenty left in the tank and he could go and you know for sure um, be the the focal point of, of this run game. Um, you just have so much going right for the Packers, quarterback, running back, and then the play calling and just the amount of weapons this team has. You have there's not many teams, and I don't even think you could say the Niners, who have seven guys you could legitimately go to and feel comfortable about. Christian Watson went healthy. Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed, Guy Wicks. Uh, Romeo Kraft, Dobbs. Yeah, Kraft, Musgrave, and Aaron Jones. So there's seven dudes who, if they have the ball in their hand, I feel fine about it. They're all playmakers. They're all guys that could break tackles or have speed or bring something to the table that when you go seven deep on a lot of rosters, you're not finding that. You're lucky if you go three, four deep. So they have a plethora of options. Um, and then Matt LaFleur, how great he's been. I know you mentioned a similar stat, Joel. I don't remember if it's exact one. But this is from Keegan Abdu on Twitter, um, which talked about the first drive of the of the game of this Cowboys-Packers game where Matt LaFleur basically took advantage of... What's the option? What's the, what's San the option? Fran kind of has the same amount. Seven? Kind of. Brandon, Debo, Jawan, Ronnie, George. Ronnie, Ronnie who? Ronnie Bell. Are you kidding me? You're he's fucking a, he's caught some balls. We're talking about good. I mean, just mentioned Kraft. I mean, you mentioned like <laughs> what do you mean Tucker Kraft? He has like 400 plus yards this season receiving. Ronnie he's, Bell has touchdowns Tucker this Kraft. year. You, did you mention Bo Melton? He's kind of good too. Bo, Bo Melton came out of here and didn't mention him. Oh, All I'm easy. saying he's is, I'm just too. naming guys. Yeah, Ronnie Bro, Bell's nuts. Really, he scored really touchdowns. You reached <laughs> hard, but I am you reaching. You reached crazy. Oh, dear. Bo Melton is probably who are the guys you named? Because you said seven. Obviously, I'm respecting Romeo. Wicks. Respecting Wicks. Going to respect Reed. Watching has been inconsistent, but we know he's solid when Reed. he's on the Bro, field. Reed. Can, Musgrave. Can, can you guess Ronnie Bell's statistics? He has like 100. He has like 200 and yards. a touchdown. Six catches for 68 yards. Bro. Oh, he scored a touchdown, though. His, his three touchdowns. Here. Three touchdowns. That's I'm not what I'm gonna saying. Lie, that was okay, casual as fuck. All I said, he scored touchdowns. touchdowns. That was casual as fuck. I, he's not using the offense. No, I, he scored three like, touchdowns. They got seven dudes that are using the How am I calling him a touchdown? I know that he scored multiple times. Casual Ronnie alert. Bell, bro. I yeah. understand that he's not a um, great option, but I'm can, saying he's someone move, that they've allowed. Rel- he's, he's not even a good option. <laughs> no. All I'm saying Bell, is that though. they've used him and they scored well, touchdowns. Ronnie Bell's got a touchdown on Sunday now. Wow. Yeah, Saturday, that'd be fucking hilarious. I mean, honestly, I... It would be a shock, but uh, still, he's used Ronnie Bell is comfortably the eighth best player on no, this. No, uh, Bo Melton right. is better. Bo, I'll take Bo Melton. Yeah. All right, so again, Malik let's, Keith might be better. Huh? Who? Malik Keith might be better. All right, so let's, let's take away yeah, Bell, who, who, again, I only use because I know he has touchdowns on this team. It's Debo, it's Brandon, it's Jawan, it's George, and... Of course, Christian McCaffrey. And Juszczyk also gets used very minimally, of course, but that's an option that Juszczyk? they go to. the fullback. Um, what? Regardless, can we move on from this, uh, okay. this discussion? Jawan Jennings is probably like the seventh best on the Packers. Jawan, ja- Jawan, Jawan Jennings, Jennings is, is really good. He's, he's no, a solid number. I mean, he's solid. I'll he's go solid back to three. solid. He's average. He's average. Um, he's average. You but used to really like Jawan <laughs> Jennings. You did love Jawan, Jawan Jennings. Jawan Jennings <laughs> is the perfect third yeah, receiver. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like, he's I agree. the perfect... Like, 
Dontavian Wicks and all these guys, they are legitimately number twos on like a lot of teams in the NFL. They could be two. They don't have true a true number one, but they have a plethora of just like number two guys <sighs> that can Jane, win. I like Jaden Reed a lot. Jaden Reed's a dog. He's I mean, Dontavian Wicks is he's going to be Jane a star. Reed didn't do shit in this game. No, he didn't. He did Romeo Dobbs really. He really um, went crazy. Let's get back to the floor uh, because yeah, let's get back. back. <laughs> this is uh, call this me what, casual. I know he has multiple he touchdowns. Is crazy. Ronnie, Ronnie Bell, Bell had nuts. 68 yards again. Three, up, three touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> now the 60 yard yards killed Straight me. Straight up, I under, understand yeah, the yards, me. but he has three touchdowns. Those touchdowns are probably like the most gadgety way. Just like on the two yard line touchdowns shit. ever. But that's my whole point that they still have that that type of bag that a guy like Ronnie Bell can, Ronnie Bell can still score yeah, he's, a touchdown. He's, he's no, if, I'm not trying to reach, honestly. Just three touchdowns no, is all I was going dudes off are legitimately used Agreed. in the offense. Agreed. Ronnie Bell's not used in the I, offense. I, I, not at all. He scored three times. He scored three times in 17 games. That's like... He's scoring like ten percent of the well, uh, games. Targets. I understand. He's not even targets. Thirteen targets on the year, but how? A but, game. but again, thirteen targets in the grand scheme of things, and three of them were touched. You know, Malik Heath has more yards than Ronnie. Bell. You know, Debo year. missed time. He still only got thirteen targets. I understand, <laughs> bro. Ronnie Bell yeah. was crazy. All I was that saying was, was they have bro. guys that they go so, to. Um, that yeah, they that go was back to what you were saying. Back to the floor. Just don't treat me like I'm some idiot. When again, he has three touchdowns. That was an idiotic statement, Robbie. But he has three touchdowns. Is all I wasn't saying he's elite. No, there's three touchdowns. He's an Austin Eckler fan. Touchdown. He's gonna die. <laughs> but he's he's an awesome. All Eckler I was saying, he awesome. loves touchdowns. Okay, that's a good one. I will say, but at the same time, through all I was saying was that an option that they've gone to. Yo, Jawan Jennings. Said, I didn't mean it in comparison Ronnie, to these. Like he was fucking he started I was like, with like, That was funny. All I was saying is, and you were mentioning guys. Yes, are they better than Ronnie Bell? But no, sure. no, he wasn't just mentioning guys. He was mentioning like good players. You just mentioned a guy. Well, I just mean named six to seven guys similarly like he did. Obviously, no, he, Ronnie Bell is not on the level of some of these guys. You were just naming names. You weren't naming guys that were legitimately good. What do you mean? I named Debo, Ayuk, yes, Jawan. but Ronnie Bell. J- bro, Jawan, everyone, yes. Jawan has 265 yards on the season. But Jawan has been a serviceable option. Oh, bro, he has 265 yards on the season. We understand that he is there a serviceable option. There are like option, five though, Packers that have more Elijah receiving Mitchell. yards. But I, Elijah Mitchell. <laughs> I would say Elijah He's about to name Jordan Ronnie Mason Bell. next. <laughs> I wouldn't do Somebody that. also said name Jordan Mason. <laughs> well, it's also because when they sub in, they play well. I just feel like that you was naming a lot of names, bro. I, well, I named Debo. Ronnie I Bell was the only That was it. Well, was the only Debo, Ayuk, Kittle, after that, it CMC. gets rough. Well, Juwan, CMC, obviously. Yeah, you're right. And Juwan, obviously. To be fair, Debo Juwan and Ayuk are like five Juwan, Packers Ju- Juwan is, is whatever. He's like below average, bro. He's. He's well, again, no, no, no. with their offense, there's so many more mouths to feed in terms of your, you would rather the ball in Debo. 14 well, times. Can you stop? I just wanted okay. to just to highlight just, the depth uh, that the yes. Packers have. Yep, 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 yep. And and it's it's pretty clear the depth on the Packers is better. Yes. The, the star power the, is better yes. on the it, that, that, that wasn't even teams, yeah. That wasn't even supposed to be a comparison. I understand. That but you guys saying, made me He sound, started thinking. I saw him over there doing this. I was counting. I was seven deep on a lot of rosters at playmakers, receiver, running back, tight end. You can't do it. We just did it with the Niners. just like five of them. If Tyquan Thorne was on the same, you would have mentioned him too. Undoubtedly. If he had touchdowns, probably. Oh my God. <laughs> he has 68 <laughs> yards receiving, bro. Yeah, Tyquan's not, not doing good. shit. I understand. No, I'm talking about Bronny oh, Bell. I had 68 yards yeah, but receiving. They still One catch, seven them. yards, touchdown. Hall of Famer. Three to, uh, okay, go. Jesus uh, Christ. You're, again, you guys made it sound like I'm talking about him like he's some bro, star. Bro, you mentioned somebody that had less than 68 yards on his But team. three touchdowns. If he had zero touchdowns, then I'm with you. All I'm saying is this guy that I know that he Three touchdowns scored. if you have 68 yards, bro, just not move one bit. Okay, I'm not move moved by it either. I'm just saying he scored. Um, Get back to the floor. Because he has been fantastic this season, and this Cowboys game really showed he's getting to his back, right? You look at Mike McCarthy and Dan Quinn, they were not adjusting. And Mike LaFleur, or excuse me, Matt LaFleur, keep on getting that confused. Matt LaFleur went into this game with a plan. Um, the first drive, the Packers came out using 12 personnel, which is two tight ends, on eight of 12 plays, which is season high for them. Usually, if you're coming out with two tight ends, you wouldn't play dime, which means you have six DBs on the field. Mm-hmm. You're typically going in a heavier defensive set, anticipating run, play action. Overall, just not as many receivers on the field or pass catching options to to uh, validate having six defensive backs on the field. Regardless, though, the Cowboys went and dime packages on 11 of 12 plays, um, which was, excuse me, on they matched 12 with dime personnel on 63% of those plays. The NFL average is 5%. When a team plays 12 on offense, 5% of the time, defenses match with dime. The Cowboys did 63% of the time. Yeah. That's the floor getting his bag and saying, I know what they're going to do, and I know they're not going to adjust, so I'm going to keep doing that. So when you saw the Packers march down the field, 
that's kind of how it's been all season for Dallas. And the reason why they've been so terrible against the run is also because of this, because they're they're protecting against the pass so much that they're going out there in dime, even when offenses are kind of teasing or saying, we have more big dudes up front than you. Regardless, though, um, the floor is playing or coaching phenomenal, the whole offense. That's why I feel like there is a chance that they could come um, and, and win this game. But the other chance they have is Brock Purdy playing from behind because the numbers are real. If the Packers are able to move the ball, if they're able to get the run game incorporated and Jordan Love continues what he's doing, Brock Purdy is going to have to play from behind. And this season hasn't been great. When Purdy is ahead, his numbers are 71% completion percentage, 20 touchdowns, two picks, and 128 pass rating. Um, when the, the game is tied, the numbers are similar. But when trailing, that drops to a 64% completion percentage, an 82 pass rating, five touchdowns to seven interceptions. The offense changes, Brock Purdy changes, um, and this team as a whole is just not nearly as good. You know, I don't think that's a shock to anyone. Those numbers have been pointed out in the past, and the Packers have the offensive talent to score on the Niners. Um, it's just a matter of can they score enough that the defense on the other side is able to keep up with them? Because I know the Niners going to be able to move the ball on this Green Bay offense. So I anticipate the way the Packers are able to win this game. I think it's going to have to be a bit of a shootout. They're going to have to put points on the board consistently. They can't be going three and out. They can't be settling for field goals in the red zone because eventually Kyle Shanahan is going to have answers for the defense, regardless if it's going to be adjustments on the sideline or at halftime. I trust Kyle Shanahan to be able to figure out whatever Joe Barry or now the floor is involved in these uh, defensive meetings. Whatever they want to do, I think Shanahan is going to be able to figure it out. And then the, the bye week uh, kind of narrative I think it's a good thing for the Niners because there's a lot of vets on this team and a lot of players have been banged up. Where you're looking at Trent, Debo, Kittle has been having a back injury on the on the injury report for a couple of weeks. Brock Purdy has had his own injuries. So a lot of their players are number one vets and number two been dealing with injuries just like everyone across the league has. Um, some of them sat in week 18, like Purdy, um, like Kittle too, I believe. Um, so they're getting two weeks of rest now and I trust them as veterans, some of the top players at the position, they're going to be prepared for this game. For I, sure. I don't they really have uh, too much of a worry that they're going to come out flat um, or just get boat, boat raced early in this game. So I do think the the 49ers are going to come out on top here. They just have too much talent. The, these teams mirror each other a lot where you have two exceptional head coaches. You have a great play, or excuse me, you have um, great offensive pieces. The Niners, of course, being a little bit better, more developed. Um, veterans where the Packers are more first and second year guys, still raw but showing flashes. Um, but overall, this, this this Niners team are the veterans. Their home, number one seed, been probably the second most impressive team in the NFL all season long. So I'm going to be trusting the Niners here. When I said my score, it was more so predicated on the difference in points I think it's going to be. Mm-hmm. So 23 to 17, 34 to 29. Six points. I, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking the Packers are going to win by more than a field goal pretty much. I think they're going to win this game. And – um. I still don't trust Brock Purdy playing from behind. You know, that's one thing that when he's been in that situation, the numbers just have not been the same. You can argue that Kyle Shanahan's offense is not built from behind, but then you can also argue that, you know, he hasn't ever had a quarterback that can really play from behind. So it kind of goes together, really. So you're pretty much just hoping they score in the first drive because if they don't, it's Brock possible. Purdy though, is, is, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, but I'm saying if they, it's possible that they don't either. I also think the Packers will match it regardless. So if the 49ers get the ball first and they score. It's going to be an awesome game. I think the Packers uh, will match it. Bring on it. The, the two offenses that gave the 49ers defense the most trouble, and I know they lost these games and they had injuries on them, but on the defense they were particularly healthy. The Vikings and the Bengals. The Vikings only scored like 19 points though. No, the Vikings scored a good amount. Or yeah. It was 19 or it was 22? It, it, it might have been 22. I think it was just that he had a lot of yards. Yeah, they had a shit ton of yards that game. I'm not mistaken. I think also, you could did. be thinking about the Browns game. The Browns was a low scoring game. Oh, yeah, okay. So the final score was 22 to 17. Mm-hmm. The Browns so, game, I know, was low scoring. Yeah. That one, I felt like it was low scoring, but I remember like throwing for a lot of yards, yeah. correct? Kirk, yeah. yeah, Kirk had 378 yards, mm-hmm. two touchdowns, so. one interception. But that game didn't feel like a high sc- Like, it felt like a defense. But it game. definitely felt like the 49ers defense was getting moved yeah. on. And <laughs> Mom just texted me. She says, I'm never listening again for Joel picking Green Bay over the Niners because <laughs> she's a San Francisco <laughs> player. She loves Purdy. say something about Ronnie Bell. thought that was her favorite mm-hmm. player, maybe. You should Someone just tweeted that. me. And said he tried to give them real ball knowledge <laughs> about Ronnie Bell. I was like, I probably mean, a diehard. I'm not here fan. riding for Ronnie Bell like he's. Some you know superstar. who has the same amount of touchdowns as him this year? Do you know who doesn't combined? Right. Who? 
both the tight ends, Musgrave and, well, obviously he's been injured in Kraft. Okay, so I'm guessing uh, Ronnie Bell must be better than both those guys. Huh? I'm not saying that. Cedric Wilson has options. the same amount of touchdowns as uh, Ronnie Bell. Shout out to him. So he's a good option for two of them. I wouldn't say he's a good option. There we go. I didn't say Ronnie the Bell was a good post. option. Dude, Ronnie Bell, he just doesn't get used in the offense. That's he got all three I'm touchdowns. Saying. Well, it's a reason he doesn't get used. Um, he's a rookie. They have so many other options. Is there a way, to, is there a way to look how many routes you ran in uh, the season? I saw Ronnie Bell played 17 or 13% of snaps this year. Let me check. Okay. He played the 17% two, of offensive snaps. Okay. The two coaches that had the most success offensively against the Niners were Kevin O'Connell and Zach Taylor. They come from the same coaching tree as Matt LaFleur. So Matt LaFleur runs a similar scheme where it's a zone running scheme, it's under center, it's motion, and the Niners are one of the worst teams at defending those type of running schemes. So I think Aaron Jones has another great day. Agreed. And Jordan Love's going to play great again. You know, this can be an offensive shootout, but I just think if it is an offensive shootout and the Packers are up at some point, then now things start to get Brock's a little, never, a little bit tense. Brock's never lost a, a shootout. He's never really been in one either. Well, the Bengals one was kind of a shootout. He lost. He well, threw interceptions at the end. Yeah, well, the Bengals said this is going to be a shootout. The Niners said we're not going to keep up. You're cooking. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess you could use those Browns in those Viking games. People, the Niners were hurt though. So and they, and they didn't have Chase Young. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so they, that's why they didn't score a lot of you, points. We could definitely cherry pick. Say that the Niners were losing to the Eagles. Could say that. What? Niners were losing to the Eagles. And then. Three, was it 3 nothing. It was 6 nothing, I believe. 6 nothing. Brother, it was the first two drives. Oh, yeah, and after that's... the hell had. That's what I'm saying. Plans, you could say he was trailing. Came he, back and he, they kind of kicked their ass. It was CMC that just, started uh, up. He just laid out the stats like in total that's when he's gross. trailing. Yeah. No, no, I know. It's not good. Yeah. yeah. I know. Isaiah Hodgins, three touchdowns <laughs> on the season two. Isaiah Hodgins was really good last year. Little Jordan Humphrey as well, three touchdowns. On little, Juwan, little Juwan, is funny. Jawan Jennings last year had more receiving yards than Christian Watson, Kraft, Musgrave. Cook. I don't think Kraft is in the league, was he? No, he wasn't. I'm just saying, <laughs> last year, who's obviously. He, he, he didn't know that off the top of his head. <laughs> was like he was not cooking. It was, they not, it was in the league. I know. <laughs> and this year, obviously, with Brandon and Debo both being healthy. Let's see who had three. Thank God. So if um they're they're gonna get the ball more. If the Niners win and like the Bucks or the Lions win, are you gonna pick them over the Niners? Are you just gonna keep doing it? The thing is if the Packers beat the No Niners if they win, they'll go to the Super Bowl. Whoever wins this game is gonna be a good thing. Kevontae Turpin had three touchdowns. Just I'm just great options. I love that I love that. You know, you know wait, Ronnie Bell had sixty eight receiving yards. That was that (laughs) what I heard? Sixty three. Okay, these are the amount of Packer players that had more. Samori Tor, Malik Heath, Bo Melton, A.J. Dillon, Aaron Jones, Luke Musgrave, Tucker Craft, Christian Watson, Dante Avian Wicks, Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed. Again, you that's guys, 11 players. Bro. All I'm saying is that's 11 players. I wasn't saying this like he's better than these guys. All I was saying is that they, he he gets used. You, con- you confidently. 17% of snaps in the grand scheme of things when you have Debo, sure, when you have Ayu, 13 targets. He scored three times. He's not even going to target a game. He scored three times is all I was saying. I'm not calling him a star. I'm not calling him even good. All I was saying you is an option. Named him. I did. I you still feel the, confident about you, you it. You named him like you would name LeBron. First name only. Ronnie Bell. They got Ronnie. Sorry. I, they got Ronnie. I, that's they the, got Ronnie. Yeah, that's where you can. Week I, one, I can. One catch, five yards, touchdown. Week three, one catch, get, 12 yards, uh-huh, touchdown. Uh-huh. And the other touchdown. Oh, excuse me. That's not week one. This is the previous week. Uh, oh, the, one of the touchdowns was week 18 when they didn't play anybody. Okay. Um, so then the other one was on Christmas against Baltimore, which was a blowout. Um, and then the other one was the Giants game, which was also a blowout. Wait, you said he had 62 yards receiving? 63. How many times are you going to repeat it? Excuse me, 68. Okay. It went from 68, 63 68. back to 68. So 11 players definitively had more receiving yards than Ronnie Bell on the Packers. Josiah DeGuara was three yards off. And he has only one less touchdown than your GOAT, Dontavian. Uh, who okay, cares? Don Taven's way better. Yeah, no, he's so much better. Yeah. You know who um, he had the same amount of touchdowns as? Who? Uh, Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk's great. Ronnie Bell does. Garrett Wilson has the same amount of touchdowns too. Tell him again the end zone. That's why touchdowns, it, it doesn't matter if you're not producing anywhere else. It's just All like I was saying was, I'm not, why do you keep thinking like I'm calling him like this good, great player? You mentioned like a, de- he's not a depth Holy piece, shit, bro. can we move yeah, on to Ronnie Bell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, line, Here we go. Here we <laughs> go. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> I regret saying it in honesty. Uh, you should. You I don't. I don't. don't you should. I still feel confident in what I'm saying. We that he's, a, ha- he's a good depth piece. We all hated a, no, when you said that it. he's a depth piece. That's all depth? I said. Depth. Yes. We all hated when you said it. You don't even know who he is. I, uh, I don't give a fuck. All right. Then why are you involved in the conversation? You should have brought him up. 
We're what at the round mean? table. You set him at a round table. But you, if you don't know who he you is. Barely you barely know who he was. I do know who he is. What the fuck are we doing here? You barely know. What are you know. talking about? I know that he scored t- touchdowns this season. So only you reason watch I that, you watch them plays like, yo, he, he moves That's pretty good. He, he did make some catches. <laughs> That's like me mentioning like Nico Mannion for the Warriors years ago. Yeah. You got Nico Mannion. He's, yeah. Shit he's, like that gets yeah. laughed at. I don't know if it's the same. Yeah. Nico scored some points throughout the year. Maybe 40. Points and touchdowns are different. I guess. All remains the same. Both of them stink and they don't get much playing time. I don't disagree. Junior I'm Nando say, goes, we'll see. <laughs> trade a second and got four play out of Aaron Rodgers. Fair trade. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you did get four play because you got teased. Oh. And okay. L- Lokren goes, CJ Stroud, would you rather? And it's his first super chat, so shout out to, to Ant Lokren. Is it just me or a four play when you're an adult is more like you're kissing, making out, and yeah, it, four finger like in the yeah. Okay, why is he getting so crafty? Finger in the <laughs> like four just, four plays essentially everything but, but penetration. Yeah, so I'm saying so I don't think that's teasing. That's really getting into it. Or maybe I mean we got we got bit to it. Even you can even say enter to it. Played the first think you, you think I were eating them out like at, at that point like you think you got that far? Well, he got on the field week one. That's basically like I mean he got hurt, but you he know didn't you didn't finish. You, you didn't. Yeah. It's like it's like you you got to the to the to the vagina and then you kind of just was like ah yeah. need to go hop in the shower. Or and, put it put your pants back. Yeah, put on up, like we, I, I, I panic. You I'm know, like, yeah, year. that's all. You know, I get what he's saying. Asif Iqbal goes being if you're watching draft Rome or Dunze go Bills. Mm. You think I get him at one five? No way. Uh, and our one QB, uh, you could. Here we go. Harrison, neighbors. Uh, it's over. <laughs> Trayvon needed to. You guys to had declare. a Mo Ali Cox and Austin Hooper bit. Not us. I didn't have that. No. Oh. I was player's choice, bro. Oh, oh I have seen that clip. I have seen that clip. <laughs> That's so funny. No, That's no. That's basically what this shit just was. <laughs> Santos, Santos just sent us a super chat. Just decline it, please. For our sake, just decline it. He says, Dells, next month I'm getting you a Jalen Brown jersey. And Riv, don't forget, you owe me for not completing the challenge. Uh, d- decline the jersey, bro. Give me the JV jersey. I don't give a shit. Oh, my God. We're, so he's cursed. They're gonna, well, they were going to win the finals anyway. That just was stamp it. That's over. Who? The, the Dells curse. So is going to win the finals? No, not anymore not. if he gets this jersey. Oh, shit. Damn. That was- I ain't fucking worried. We currently have 107 <laughs> likes on the stream. We have 372 people watching. Make sure you guys are clicking a like on the stream right now. It helps us out a lot. I have another super chat here from Nestor Soto. I had my son in a Tua jersey, and he let his <laughs> Dolphin fans down. Love the show. Riv and Drew are goaded. Appreciate you, Ken. Still got a few of them left out you there. You do have man. a few. Ricky, <laughs> Ricky goes, whenever Drew has a Luca monologue on an episode, I will take the Luca hater tag away. By the way, Mavs are the number five seed. Honestly, it might be worth it. Who's going to tell us every episode what seed they are? I know. No, the, he's not the only Super Chat that said that also. Uh, I might have to get that out the way just so people understand. I'm not a Luka hater. I'm just trying to be a truthful individual about the Dallas Mavericks is all. Yeah, so but they, they've been playing some great basketball so without Paul him. George last night? Did I? Oh, oh my God. You got to start telling the truth about your Lakers. That's what You got to worry about you your just Lakers. Beat Dallas, man. It gave me flashbacks, man. I'd say. You just lost to the Suns too. You ain't missing that. That was like uh, Jordan four Walsh's days NBA ago. You got right. embarrassed. Bro, well, uh, we we're up first time being first healthy, big three, embarrassed. Yeah. Was, there we go. And then big three yesterday there. came clutch there. against the Kings. He hasn't played much. On he, hasn't, he hasn't played I'll a sleep minute. On him. Oh, thought he would He's play been in the G League. Okay. Sam Trill goes. Riv finally posted on Instagram for all the dogs. Before he showed up, I posted at twelve. You know, I almost made a terrible joke, but I was like, eh, "Let me not. Let me just keep it to myself." Was it like but, a racist joke? Uh, no, uh, it's it was definitely in your cards. Uh, <laughs> if you want to say so. Uh, now I actually have no remorse for what I'm going to say. So he posted uh, a, like sad quotes about it, and I was just like, "Damn, the Eagles lost really got to him." Damn, <laughs> those weren't sad uh, quotes, man. It was just real shit. Keeping it real. Keeping it real. Respect when Jalen Hurts does an issue. I'm sick of him fucking doing it. He does it. At, uh, you know what? Thank you. Can you stop? We'll get there. We'll get there soon. We'll get there soon. Ricky, it's another super chat. He goes, Luke and Kyra are going to put a combined 78 points on the Lake Show tonight. Yeah, yeah, I'm 40 playing. the other day. We play right now. I hated that long sleeve shit. I don't think Luca is playing. I don't think so. Either. He's not playing. It's Lakers. He might. Brandon, I was going to say, you see the Lakers. <laughs> Brandon Rapone goes. <laughs> Coming back two weeks early. <laughs> With the Siakam trade today, any other interesting trades you like to see? Drew, watch out. The Mavs are the fifth seed. Hate to see you lose that bet to Joel. LOL. See what I'm saying? It's Looks not like the Lucas playing. 
Is he playing? Of I course he is. Just I, of course. I know it wouldn't happen, but I would love to see Mikael Bridges on a good team. That's pretty much it. What team? The Rockets? Um, They're like, uh, no, probably like a team that like, maybe Indiana. I'll no, be honest. Cool. Get traded to Spurs. Trey Young? Get right. Trey to the Spurs. That'd be cool. That would be sexy. But Jalen Johnson and Trey are untouchable. I know. That is pretty unfortunate. Gavin goes reaching so incredibly hard on that Packers pick. Well, it'll be here Saturday night when they when the Packers win and 49ers get routed in the first game of the playoffs. They Jazzy beat, Juice. He beat his Super Bowl pick, and now he's picking him to go. I was going to pick the Packers last week, but I just I couldn't they do didn't. it. I couldn't do it. I was looking at the bracket, and I said, am I really going to have the Cowboys in the first round? I was like, damn it, fuck. That's I'm just going to pick them. Yeah, it happens. But the Packers, they matched up really well. I, I didn't feel comfortable about the, Packers, mm-hmm. the, the Cowboys winning, to be honest. Jazzy Juice goes, how's JC doing? JC's doing good. I think uh, like a month ago, he was on a BR stream with us. He was. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, when he's available, he comes and pulls up and legend. helps us out. Buccaneers at Lions preview. Um, I have a feeling. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Why did I just notice that on our pick a side sign, that Riv's name got taken off? Yo, I'm crying. No, it didn't get taken off. It just fell off. Oh. Yeah, you should have wh- said it got taken off. Yeah. I was at the top, right? Cause yeah, cause I'm looking at it, cause I know JC's name used to be there, and it's gone. Now they all fell. Yeah, or they are right there in the corner, right there. Now that I'm was seeing that at them. the bottom. No, you were at the yeah, top. Thank God. And you know, now they go just the fell. I'm not a under you. Yep. Andrew, you like being under us. You do. Put me under you is fake crazy. We can't. We can't. What? We're, for for reasons. No, you're on probation for a month. He's right. Well, I'm gone anyways. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm. Yeah. I'm like, Yo, wait, <laughs> where the hell is Riv? I'll be back, man. Back like I got, like I never left. I have a feeling you guys are going to all pick the Lions. I don't know if you're giving the Bucks any form of chance. In they this get game. a chance. How much of a chance? I give them percent. That is very well, like 45, 55. So I you mean, think this is a Detroit. this is fifty fifty split? This can be. I'm, I think I'm I pretty damn confident in the Lions. I think the Lions will win this game, but that's also a respect. I wouldn't factor be surprised the if the Bucks win. I would be pretty surprised. Oh, sleep and talk to him. I'd be pretty surprised. I think the Bucks have a real. The chance vibes over there in Detroit right now are crazy. Riff. But you're back. I know. I'm just speaking objectively. Thank fucking God. Well, I am kind of back, but I I'm speaking it. objectively. Uh, that was you letting him in. What? You're the honorary, he is the honorary. Lions guy. You this let him fair. in. No fucking. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either. But I'm saying, speaking objectively, the vibes. Oh, the vibes okay. are crazy over there right now. I feel like there's a lot of things working in the Bucks' favor in this game. I think that um, they have Levante David who can lock down. Sam Laporta, Levante still playing at an elite level. They have an interior defensive line, and Vita Vea is like two guys in one. He he really gets after it. Vita Vea is pretty. He's two like, guys in one just seems. I mean, he's massive. <laughs> no, he's no, he's it's just massive. a crazy wording. To be honest, I'm I'm here for it. He has two guys in one. And I'm looking at how Todd Bowles just schemes up his blitzes and pressure packages. Two guys in one man sound better to you? No. Okay, I didn't think so. It so, like, how else would you want him to say it? Uh, I would just say he's a big dude, maybe. You just have a dirty mind, Dallas. That's what Honestly, means. I'm with you. Like, can you please get your mind right. together? I, I need that. This this uh, will be the, the sign. All right, fine. Uh, if, if you were to say that, like, Vita Vea, you know he's a big-ass dude. Yeah, I really but, jo- two, but Joel said he's two like guys two, in one two guys in one. Yeah, I ignored it because it was fine. See, he's a freak oh, over there. Yeah, yeah no, I heard you. him, and I, that was cool. Like, it went off we my We should shoulder. send you to classes. You got me. You really you need, need some fucking help. <laughs> Rich comments. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like with how you kind of look like Vita Vea. <laughs> I forget. Yeah, now I'm looking at you. You kind of look like me. Like if you had more hair. Yeah. All right. You cut the conversation. Like That's my dog. What the fuck were you doing? Putting that picture up of me in slow mo. <laughs> <laughs> what picture? Yeah, was mad, I seen it on um, Discord. <laughs> Saved it and posted on Twitter. Like it was going to get the if, same if reaction his, if they did. If his know? hairline was fixed up, maybe I. No, I looked it. at the pic like five minutes later after I post. I was like, I didn't have to do this. No, yeah, you didn't. You don't look like. You, like you didn't even text me about it or nothing. You I usually do shit just Twitter. randomly and just. Yeah, you, know. you got one coming for you. <laughs> I don't think that uh, the Bucks are outmatched. Like I, I think Todd Bull sends a lot of pressure, and I don't know how the Lions can handle it. And. They're the Buccaneers and the Lions are a similar team to me. They both have a similar identity. They're both great at stopping the run. They're a liability in pass coverage. Um, offensively, they both can really pass it. The Bucks have been running it better as of recently, but they're not a prolific rushing offense. That's where the Lions have the advantage. But I, I'm split on this matchup. I still don't know where I'm going to go yet. I, I really am kind of leaning towards the Bucks. 
I don't know why, but something is telling me that there's going to be at least one upset in the NFC, whether it's the Packers or the Bucks. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's both. You're going to go with the Bucks. <laughs> I, I'm feeling it. Yeah. Okay. I, I was watching their la- their first matchup this year. The final score is 20 to 6, and the Lions were kicking a lot of field goals. They weren't getting into the end that was zone. In Tampa Bay, right? Yeah. The Buccaneers Detroit had some dome. turnovers. And I felt like, you know, Baker wasn't playing well. I just think the Buccaneers are playing really well right now, and they can stop the run at an elite level, and they can get after golf. You have somebody that can take away Sam Laporta, at least somewhat, or neutralize them. The Amon Ra matchup is going to be hard no matter who you are. But then on the other side, I think the Buccaneers can move the ball down the field on the Lions with relative ease, with either targeting Godwin or Mike Evans, or they have other guys step up like Trey Palmer and Kate Auten. This is going to be that red zone. Because we saw yeah. the Rams be able to drive down the field. They got into the red they zone. Shout much. out to Detroit. Yeah. They did a great job in that regard. Couldn't hold the, some touchdowns. The Bucs are one of the worst red zone teams in the league. That's why I say that. I, I'm just, I just have a feeling about the Buccaneers right now. I just have it's a feeling, feeling about the them. vibes are up over I there. I get it. I the understand. Vi- the vibes are pretty good over there in Tampa Bay. Yes. But the vibes in Detroit. Going into Detroit. In a dome. I understand the vibes are up in Detroit, but something tells this me. This isn't a vibes pick for Detroit. I just think that no, they're, no, no. they're they, a better they, team. I think yeah. they are a better team, but I think the Buccaneers are capable of this having a, vibes a pick for better you? game. No, I think they match up very well against them. The Lions, I just feel like after coming off that first win at home, there's just a lot of emotions, and sometimes you ride those emotions into the next game, and right. you don't you don't execute at the same level. I think they were really anticipating and facing Dallas. That's who they were really amped up for. I feel like Tampa Bay, they might overlook them a little bit. I don't think Wait, you overlook you anyone in the playoffs. You don't think it's the same way because so. Tampa just won a home game. So they're coming in with that same type of generally. They just won. You know, they felt like. They were underdogs. They were underdogs. Uh-huh. Like you can say the same thing about Tampa. But I feel like the Lions were expected to win. They had pressure. And then it was the Matthew Stafford return too. There was just more storyline and build up for that game. And we all knew that was the biggest game of the week where the Buccaneers and the Eagles was an afterthought. There was no good game. Yeah, even, even except, with except for the Lions around. Even with AJ yeah. Brown being hurt, the Eagles were favored. You know, yeah. nobody was respecting or you know thinking the Bucks were going to win when it was clear they were a better team. Like, they were. The Buccaneers were a better team, and I, I think they match up really well with the Lions. I do. Um, I'm going to go with the Bucks here. I'm okay. going to go with the Bucks. I understand. Go with the upset pick. Now, when it came to the Rams versus Lions, I thought that their offense. So we're going to get a fucking Tampa Bay and Green Bay NFC Championship game. Green Bay to the Bulls. Is bro. that what you're telling me? Jordan loves. That sounds football. so terrible. With it all does. due respect. With all due it respect. Does. Like exciting for the Packers. Exciting. And it's going to be Tampa in Tampa Bay. Bay. Baker Mayfield versus Jordan Love. That is where it's going to be. That uh-huh. would be crazy. Now, when it came to that Rams versus Lions game, I thought that the Rams offense would be better and just out outperformed the lines in that regard, and that's why they pull away with the W. But when it came to Detroit's offense, the Rams tried their hardest. Apparently, according to PFF, they were able to get 15 pressures. I don't know if it looked like that when you were watching the game, but when he was not pressured, 22 of 22, Jared Goff was picking the Rams apart. Now, we understand that the the pressure for for... For the Buccaneers against Philadelphia was a lot. Even when they were just sending three, sometimes that was enough to get home. We saw that on that safety over there uh, late in the game. But I still believe that the Lions still should be able to match up even against this Buccaneers defense and still be able to put enough points up. Uh, when it comes to the Lions defense, their rush defense was solid up against the Rams. Also, it was for the idea that Matthew Stafford was just torching them with the pass. Why would you really run that much? But you you do like to miss a mix and match. Rashad White will get his opportunity. That's the I'm going to keep that same conversation from last week into this week where I felt Kyron was the X factor. Them not getting him involved enough in the game. Also, of course, he did go out in the, in the matchup with a, with a few injuries. Broke his hand. It was broken. Official yeah. came out. He broke it. Wow. Oh, that sucks to hear. Uh, but Rashad White, obviously, we understand how much he means to this offense, whether it's in the pass or in the run. He's been super effective for them on the ground. If the Lions can limit him in that regard, I still anticipate that Baker will be able to throw in this game. Mike Evans had a couple drops. He could have had a little bit bigger of a game than he did. And I say a little bit. I'm being kind. He had a bomb that he dropped. And then Chris Godwin, you see Trey Palmer getting involved as well. Moore getting involved into the offense. Kate Otten getting involved in the offense. This is going to be a shootout, I do believe, similarly to the Lions versus Rams. But I think the energy that the Lions are playing with right now, I think the Lions are a slightly more talented squad as well. I'm going to go with Detroit here, uh, and I feel pretty confident in that. C.J. Gardner-Johnson had a quote about Baker that... uh, This was funny. 
Yeah, that the that the receivers would be better if they had a better quarterback. That's what CJ Garner said. But then, say. did you see what Baker said? He he just said he's a hell of a player. No, Baker said. Well, he mentioned Russell Gage, who's yes. not even on the team anymore, so he's <laughs> yeah. gonna have to turn on the film. Yeah, I hope that's not a fake quote, but that's just when it when it read with. Uh, no, that's what Baker Mayfield said. And I just feel like giving a team bullets and bullets and board material like yeah. that, they don't have the secondary to cover Mike Evans or Chris Godwin. That is going to be an issue when. The Buccaneers are one of the best pass protecting teams in the NFL. They're top five in pass pro. You know, uh, I was thinking about it, and I know Riv, you have to give your analysis real quick, but you mentioned that there is going to be an underdog pick that wins, and I don't disagree. It's going to be messed up when that underdog pick is Kansas City. They shouldn't be underdogs, but I just have a feeling they are. Well, we're not at that game yet, so Riv, do you want to give shouldn't your analysis? Shouldn't be underdogs. <laughs> um. Anyways, um, you know, Tamp- the Tampa Bay Buccaneers probably played. The easiest game of the week, um, in terms of just what the Eagles' defense was showing them, what, what what defense they were able to show the Eagles' offense. I mean, they ran the same play and virtually showed them what they were doing every single drive. And the Eagles just said, "Nah, fuck it, we're gonna keep doing these out routes. Hopefully, it works." You know, as opposed to their uh, offense, you know, they, the only thing they didn't do right, I guess, was they dropped a couple good looks, like Drew mentioned. Like they was just dropping a couple good ones that they had. Score yeah, probably could have been even better if they were able to catch those and bring those in. Uh, Detroit's defense played well in that Rams game, as opposed to what we thought it would be. You know, we thought it'd be Second a yeah, we thought it'd be a shootout in the 30s. Second half in the red zone, that Lions defense played really, really well, and it gave me a little bit of confidence. This offense is able to move up and down the field. You know, like Dells loves to mention, Jared Goff is really good in the dome, and if he's not getting if if they're able to hold up and protect, Goff is able to just completely wreck your whole defense, you know. Um, Amara played well. Reynolds played well. You're looking at the offense with Jameer Gibbs, with David Montgomery, that two-man that two, that two man attack. Offense that can really light shit up. So I got Detroit, home team, you know, coming off the better win, you know, able to show me a little bit more on the defensive side against a, a better offense in the Rams. And then offensively, they just got a lot of power to them. So I go Detroit here. Yeah, I don't think uh – I do think this Bucks win over the Eagles is getting a little overrated. Uh, the Eagles are so bad, bro. Getting um, overrated. They smoked them. They did. The Eagles suck. They like, do, but it was Eagles a smoking. Not a good team. And what the Bucks have showed us really all season long, where they're just an average team. Uh, you know, the end of the season they won five of six. But when you look at those games, I want to say the most convincing of important opponents beat the Panthers, Falcons, Green Bay is a solid win. Jacksonville, Trevor got hurt uh, in the second half of that game. Lost yeah, they're not Saints convincing at all. It was smoking. Panthers. Smoked Green Bay. Though. It was smoking oh, the Jags they, before they were, Trevor went they, out. Though. They Fox, were up Fox, on the Fox, Jags. Fox. Jags, another team that's Jags pretty good. mid. Um, the Lions are clearly the best team out of all this bunch. This is going to be the best team they have played probably since that Packers game um, in week 15. And even so, I think the Lions are probably better than the Packers at this point. Um I just love what I'm seeing from the Detroit Lions. You know, going into that game against the Rams, there was a lot of pressure on Detroit. You know, you you are the home team. You haven't won a playoff game in God knows how long. Your first playoff game in 30 years. Um, you have, of course, all the rumors about what's going to happen at the end of the season with Ben Johnson. And they took care of business. You know, of course, it was a very close game. Went down to the wire. They didn't go out there and handle the Rams by any means. But they made enough plays both offensively and defensively. Uh, excuse me, as my voice cracks, to, uh, to get the win there. Um... I am curious to see how Jared Goff handles the blitz against Todd Bowles. We know he loves the blitz. It happened a thousand million times against the Eagles. I don't know if he's going to do it that much no. just because what he did is a bit unprecedented that the Eagles just couldn't pick up a blitz. I think the Lions can pick up a blitz um, because during the season, Jared Goff wasn't great against blitzes. He threw the second most interceptions with six, but did have 13 touchdowns. But against the Rams, he was phenomenal. He was eight of 10 for 110 yards and seven first downs against the blitz. Um, but it also didn't get... It didn't pressure him as much as I think you would anticipate. His time to throw when blitz and with not blitz were virtually the same. It's like 2.5 and 2.4 seconds. So didn't have a major impact there. Um, but I'm just looking at this Lions team. I think they're they're more talented. I trust the coaching staff more, although, although Canales does a phenomenal job. He should be getting head coaching interviews. Um, I trust Ben Johnson, Dan Campbell to have these guys up because you're right. When you have such an emotional win, your first playoff game in 30 years, it's easy to go into that next game, maybe kind of walking into it instead of sprinting into it, you know, kind of dragging through practice because you're like, we kind of got that monkey off our back. Um, and now we have an opponent who the Rams was kind of 50, 50, but you probably feel pretty good because it's Baker Mayfield now instead of Matt Stafford. No respect to Baker. That's just how it goes. You know, uh, Stafford's been a better quarterback this season, but I think Dan Campbell has proven to this point at, 
as a head coach that in big games, this Lions team has showed up. Last year, you could look at it. This year, down the stretch, um, of course, when and securing the division, when Green Bay was making a little push, you had the Minnesota midseason making a little push. Um, but I like this Lions team. I trust their offense, their play calling, um, their offensive system. And defensively, I think they'll be able to make enough plays to, to keep the Bucks in check. Chiefs and Bills, last game of the, the, the divisional round, got a tongue twister right there. They faced already in the regular season. So in, in this wild card weekend, I mean, divisional round weekend, three of the matchups these teams have played in the regular season before. The first matchup with the Bills and Chiefs, they beat the Chiefs 20 to 17 in week 14. So that matchup was somewhat recent. Not a doubt. I'm going with the Chiefs. I mean, it's not a doubt. Uh, <laughs> are you um you are you're kind of because you're you're also a Josh Allen guy. So would you, you wouldn't be upset if Buffalo moves on? No. What's I mean, your what's percentage? Wait, if they move on, what do you mean if they beat the Chiefs? Yeah. That's good football. You know, Josh Allen deserves it. He's a great quarterback. You know, I, I like watching great quarterbacks succeed. You know, I do. Political answer, but okay. I mean, Josh Allen is good. He deserves it. He it wasn't his fault they lost two years ago. You he said, played uh, perfect. You said no doubt Chiefs. What's the percentage here? What percentage do the Bills have to win? Well, I think it's a 50-50. Oh, okay. But, but I'm you going, no doubt in your mind. That's no fine. doubt in my mind is the Chiefs. Yep, yep. I got the Chiefs winning this game. Um, But it's 50-50. I mean, this game can go either way. I don't think it's going to be high scoring like we saw two years ago. I think both these defenses are elite. I think both these offenses have some struggles, too, at times. And they've been inconsistent this year. So I think this is a defensive matchup. What concerns me is that the Bills got a lot of injuries. You know, Christian Benford, Terrell Bernard, Gabe Davis, Leonard Floyd, all DNPs for practice. They might play. You know, they might not. Gabe Davis is basically running belt this game. I'll be honest. We don't. They don't give a fuck if Gabe Davis plays or not. Razua Douglas dealing with a knee injury, but he's probably going to play. They got a lot of injuries. Uh, I think that the Bills have changed their offensive approach since Joe Brady has come in. They've run the ball more. They're 8-1 and one when James Cook rushes for 65-plus yards. Stephon Diggs hasn't had 100 yards receiving since October. They're feeding everybody else, whether it's Khalil Shakir, Dalton Kincaid, James Cook, Gabe Davis. People are getting involved. But the Chiefs' defense is just too good. They have the best cornerback group in the playoffs left with LeJarrius Sneed and Trent McDuffie. Those are two legitimate shutdown corners who you can – shadow on receivers and they could take those guys away Stefan Diggs hasn't been getting doubled in this recent stretch it's one-on-one -on -one coverage and it's not that he's not great it's that there are just more options on the bills now that they don't have to force feed them like they did before he's also been dropping some easy ones too yeah I, I and I also look at the bills and the interior of their offensive line is the weakest part of their offensive line the tackles are awesome with Spencer Brown and Deion Dawkins but the interior is kind of weak and that's the Chiefs' strengths. I just think the Chiefs have found who they're going to be. They got to win ugly. They got to run the ball. They, they got to make timely plays. They needed a receiver to step up. That's Rasheed Rice. And Patrick Mahomes, when he gets into the playoffs, is an all-time great playoff performer. He is, you can argue, the best playoff performer statistically in the history of the NFL. He's 5-0 in divisional matchups in his career, and he's going to Jordan it and go 6-0 in the divisional round. Jordan it in divisional yeah. round is so nuts. 6-0. 6-6-0. Six, six divisional six round, brother. Jordan, Jordan didn't lose in the divisional hold on, hold on, round, brother. Hold on, hold on. But Jordan lost in the first round. Yeah, yeah but don't. Don't please. I'd rather yeah, I'd rather yeah. get six and zero in the yeah, finals. Yeah, yeah. All I'm saying is that Jordan. All I'm saying is that Mahomes is lost five and zero and in the AFC Championship already. All I know, so like, oh, so Jordan he's having it, the losses in a, in the championship games like LeBron. True. Yes, go there. Don't, don't, don't come here. But I'm saying Jordan went six and zero in the finals. Mahomes gonna go six and zero in the divisional round. Yeah, and he's gonna go to the, the AFC Championship. <laughs> You're sick. And we're gonna get a Super Bowl of Patrick Mahomes and Jordan Love. That's gonna be the Super Bowl. Okay. Um. You know. I think these two teams kind of give me the same vibe as opposed to both elite defenses. I think the Buffalo Bills, they may not be elite, but they've been playing really great fucking football in that end, you know. And you mentioned the injuries, but I'll be honest, they don't give a shit about them. They've been injured all year. They've been dealing with guys leaving mid-game, and they've always been able to just plug in a player, play your toughest. You know, they did lose uh, Bernard for the rest of the year. That, that does suck. So he's yeah. not playing. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he – but D Douglas said he's playing – so that's a fact. Um, Benford is playing, so that's huge, you know. And if Douglas is playing, I trust Douglas on Rasheed Rice with all due to respect to Rasheed Rice. Rasheed Rice has been um, hooping, and even then, you know, they've just they don't have the, they don't have a, a the corner group of the Chiefs. But Douglas, 
Johnson, Benford is pretty damn good with Poyer and Micah High back there. So they've been pretty solid themselves. And then there's unsung heroes like AJ Espenza, you know, Tyler Dotson. You know, they've, they've got guys who just step up at any waking moment and make a play for them. So this Bills defense has been hooping. It's really the offenses of both teams, you know, which offense can get it going. You know, the Bills have been doing a balanced attack, and we've seen Cook get involved. We've seen Josh Allen get back to his running ways, and that's a situation where now you got Josh running, Josh being able to hit the open guys. you got Shakir that's woken up. You know, you've got Don, Don, Dalton Kincaid who's woken up. you got Knox still there, and you still got Diggs. So for me personally, I'm going the Bills. I just I think both t- defenses are great. I don't think this is going to be a high-scoring game, but if I had to choose – you know, an offense to rely on. I know, I, I believe Mahomes is better than Josh Allen. I know he's great in the playoffs. But if there's one guy that can go toe to toe with him, it's Josh Allen. Yeah, and not to mention he has the better weapon room in guys like Kincaid, Knox, Diggs, Shakir. Like he, if Gabe Davis plays, he's still a body. So he has those type of guys. I'll go with Buffalo. Where are you going, Drew? Uh, a day that I never thought would come in pick a side history, but here we are. Uh, if I'm if I'm anything, I'm a man that learns from previous mistakes. Mm. I stood on business last week. I was wrong. It is what it is. But this week, I'm starting to turn a new leaf. Take proper, concise thoughts over no bias. The bias selections. This would be bias. Oh right, because you can't. I mean, this would be the definition. Yeah, yeah. But this of is bias. actually good team versus good team. It is. It is, and I think Buffalo does have a chance in this one. However, there's just been too many moments where. You look at Kansas City, you look at Patrick Mahomes, and in games where you could even think about, hey, it's a close one, you just should go with the Kansas City Chiefs for the idea that in these situations, like Joel already mentioned, I won't go into any more detail because it's painful enough to speak <laughs> it is as, as is. Yes, you take Patrick Mahomes in these situations. You saw the way that Rasheed Rice performed in the in the wild card round versus the Miami Dolphins. Travis Kelsey had a couple bad drops in this game, still went for, for seven for 78, if I'm not mistaken, against the, the Miami Dolphins. I understand that this Bills defense is better than the, the Miami Dolphins defense right now, and I understand that Chiefs offense definitely has not been playing at that level. But there is a path for them to win. Isaiah Pacheco ran the ball 21 times against the Miami Dolphins. I anticipate maybe not 21 carries, but he's going to have to, to shoulder a significant load on that that aspect of the game. And Pacheco obviously shown that he can be effective in doing so. I think he'll have himself a solid ball game. But what it comes down to is it's Patrick Mahomes that just gets the slight edge over a Josh Allen but this Chiefs defense is definitely the better of the two. And that's not knocking the Bills. It's more so an acknowledgement of what the Chiefs have been throughout the entirety of the season. He already mentioned the cornerback room. They've been amazing. Bolton's been getting back. He's obviously a huge part. Chris Jones being great. Karloftis can obviously get to the quarterback. No Derek and Nandi, if I'm pronouncing his name uh, incorrectly. He's, it's looking like he's not going to be playing in this mm-hmm. one, which obviously uh, is not not an ideal situation for the Chiefs, but they have so many difference makers on that defense. I think as is that it'll be enough for them to get past the the Buffalo Bills. It'll be a good game. I hope the Buffalo Bills pull it out. I really fucking do. For the do. first time. They yeah. are home. But I, I just feel like it doesn't. An AFC Championship appearance. But that doesn't have to do with anything. A true love story. I said it. On, on the stream, if you guys were watching, I still feel co- consistent on this. Called said, yeah, he called them fraudulent. No, I said that they're not contenders. I think he said they're like a second round. First round. He did say they were like around that. Well, I did pick them to lose. Well, to during the fair. regular season every week, it was their fraudulent. Their, their fraudulent. offense is not. Right I said they're not contenders because they don't have a good offense. I do still firmly believe the Ravens are the team to beat in the AFC. That's okay, the team. They're in the AFC championship I, game, though. They're kind of contenders. You could say that, which I guess I would make me oh, wrong. Yeah, I would say if you're Ravens championship game, yeah. top four. Mm-hmm. I agree. Damn. Um, it's going to be tougher for the let Chiefs. Let me ask you a question, us. though. Uh, just complete aside. Uh, the year that the Giants both went to the to the Super Bowl, would you say they were contenders? They had to be. Entering the playoffs, probably not. They won, though. They ended up being. They won. Yeah. But they ended up becoming that, correct? Yeah, would you I mean, call the Chiefs contenders before they I just, started? I just don't know if I'm comparing those no, Giants no, teams not. to of course Holmes not. And that. There's history with the Chiefs this being nuts. great. Just <laughs> I, there I just I think there's history with the Giants. I thought they was the Eagles. They wasn't. Ooh. I didn't say that. Oh. Now just in terms of just being frauds. Mm. I'm not I'm saying just, I'm the just always saying frauds too. I have no problem. No, you believe they was frauds. No, I wasn't just saying that. No, they're still in good. Yeah, we got this whole table. Everyone's frauds. Eagles. You're not frauds, you're just Eagles, Dolphins, Cowboys. 
Well, I was I was just saying with Jets. Is their offense the good? To be honest, not the Jets. Jets are the Chiefs. I don't know the Real, like in the grand scheme of things, would you call it a good offense? Yes, it's not elite. Yeah. It's a good offense. Though uh, I don't think this offense is that great. Um, we that's do what this, I would say. We do this with the Dolphins. Said good, good. Yeah, that's what I said. We do this, yeah, with, we do this with the Dolphins, so it's only fair we do it with the Chiefs. When the Chiefs went and played playoff teams this season. There week we one, go, they Dallas. scored 20 points. Week 9, 21 points. Uh, excuse me. Uh, let me start over with the opponent. Week 1, 20 against the Lions. Week 9, 21 against the Dolphins. Week 11, 17 against the Eagles. Week 13, 19 against the Packers. Week 14, 17 against the Bills. If you want to throw in this previous matchup against the Dolphins, scoring 26, I think you that should would take be their season week high. one off because Kelsey didn't play. Um, okay, we're, that's we're fair. Respect. But regardless, if that was one of their better games. So we're talking about less oh, than 20 points per game um, when they're playing opposing playoff teams. Of course, it's different because it's Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. At any moment, they can turn it on. Mahomes could get a broken play and turn it into a touchdown. A lot of other teams that we are calling frauds or, or have called frauds don't have that ability to do. Um, but similar to how I feel about maybe the Bucks getting a little overrated, I feel like the Chiefs might be getting a little overrated now because that Dolphins win. Dolphins team never had a chance. I mean, this Dolphins team, I was very confident that they were gonna they were gonna lose a warm weather team. Going into hmm. negative thirty wind That's chill, That's quarterback couldn't. All throw. of the injuries on the def- a cold sport. All of the injuries yes. on defense. They had Melvin Ingram and Emmanuel Abba as though. their edge rushers instead of Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips. I uh, didn't have Xavier Howard. Didn't have Jerome Baker. The injuries were there was a plethora of them defensively and then offensively. They couldn't fucking move the ball. They were one for twelve on third down. The one time they scored was Tyree Kill just being elite and catching an underthrown ball and and make, taking it to the house. This was a game that the Chiefs had to win. They won convincingly, but I'm not taking this game and saying this is what the Chiefs are now. This is a team that could could score when they need to. I trust their defense because all season long they've been great. There's only two or three. Was it two or three? Um, three game. Excuse me. Two games all season they allowed more than 21 points. One of those was to the Broncos. Funny enough, in Week Eight, and the <laughs> other one was to the Packers. Uh, Mr. Jordan Love in Week 13. So we know this defense is tremendous. We know how great it is. Um, but I just trust the Buffalo Bills offense a little bit more right now. Josh Allen, I know Mahomes can do this too, but Josh Allen just has been finding a way down the stretch to will his way to victory. I feel like over the second half of the year, the Bills were the better team basically every single week in playoff mode, and they were getting those wins every single week. Of course, that Week 18 game um, over the Dolphins was huge, beating the Pittsburgh Steelers and now going up against the Kansas City Chiefs. I got the Buffalo Bills here. Uh, I think it'll be a close game. I'll, mafia, say, weird, I'll say like... 23-17, um, but I think Buffalo, for the first time, beats Kansas City in the playoffs. Bills, do you want to be in Bills Mafia? I'm a Jets fan. I can't. All right. Sorry. So just to let you guys know, I just bought a subscription to FTS, FTN Shout Fantasy. To uh, so I, I'll, you show you guys, I'll show you guys guy the login. Yeah, I'll show you guys. I'll show the login later. In terms of defensive DVOA, the defensive schedule for the Chiefs this year ranked 19th. The Bills ranked 28th. So the Bills haven't been facing high-level offenses all that much this entire season. I do agree with most of what you're saying, Dells. I don't think the Dolphins game was the game that I'm saying, okay, the Chiefs are legit. They're Super Bowl contenders. They're going to make it. The Bills game is, though. If they can score on the Bills I agree. Oh, I agree. and they can stop the Bills defensively, that point now, I go, in, now I go into next week. You're picking them against Baltimore. I'll pick them against Baltimore. There you go. That is. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a shootout, though. Nah, it'll be a nasty, yeah. ugly ass game. My final score for the game is twenty-seven, twenty-four Chiefs. I think it's close. I think it comes down to the hey, final man, possession. If, if, if Buffalo can get past their one lingering hunch, it'll be similar to how it looked last time. I, I think 20, 21, 17. 27, 20, mm-hmm. No, nineteen, sixteen. I could, I could see that too. That'll happen. But Buffalo wins this game. We're here. Super I'll be Bowl. Ecstatic. Super Bowl. I'll be through the moon. Super Bowl. It's crazy, man. We are gonna get a. It's our year, bro. Patrick Mahomes, you're in love Super Bowl. It's not happening, bro. It'll be Josh Allen versus Brock. LeBron James played against 35% of all no. players in NBA history. Where's the Super Bowl at this year? It's fucking insane. <laughs> it's in uh, Las Vegas. Sweet, 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 yes. sweet, sweet. Okay, okay. Yes. Las Vegas. So, yeah, Josh Allen be popping some casinos. You know, Brock Pretty being there with his cheap money, you know, because he don't got all too much. And it'll be Niners in the in the Bills, man. Hey, it wouldn't be a bad game. It'd be great. Chiefs and Packers. You think the be Bills are though. beating the Ravens? They can. Ah. I don't see why they can't. They can. Yeah, they can. Josh Allen, anything's possible. Yeah, they can do it. Uh, you know what? Who am I? I think the Texans and Ravens will be a good game, so it should be a good game between the Bills and the Ravens. Yeah, if I, think, I think Buffalo. Buffalo, realistically, honestly, Buffalo can probably beat any team in the world. They can also lose to every single team in the world, and that's how they're built. They just. Lucky not playing the Jets, man. You'd be screwed. Where, where would he be at? 
It would be in Buffalo. I won't be screwed. If it was in the, uh, it would New be Jersey. It would in the regular yeah. season. Huh? It would be in the regular season. It's like the Broncos. Well, if it's home, though. Super Bowl champions, 2016. Oh, fuck. Mm-hmm. Got it. If the Bills were at, at Jersey in the playoffs, they lose to the Jets. We want a Super 100%. Bowl before you want a playoff game. Ouch. No, we want a playoff game in 2010. Uh-huh. We want a Super Bowl 2016. We've won a pl- we've won a Super Bowl. Oh, we've won a Super Bowl sooner than you oh, guys have won a playoff. We've game. also won a Super Bowl sooner than you guys have won a playoff. You said before. You're comparing no, it I to said the Jets. Said he did it. I, said I know what I said. In, you know? know what I said. I know what you said. No, I know what I said. Like mm, God, I mean, I'm I'm kind of right though. No. Oh, is that you're an idiot? Sure. Uh, that's what you said. <laughs> and I'm right. Mm, that's your prerogative. That's <sighs> a fact. Spell prerogative. Nope. If you ask me, I'd probably be cooked. P e r o g. A-T-I-V-E. Damn, bro. I was about to say that. Well, I had to make sure I wasn't an idiot myself. Oh, all right. Well, I cooked the first half. You did? So let's do it. That was, why didn't you spell it? I wasn't going to write. <laughs> nah, you could have spelled that. I'm a fraudulent speller. <laughs> I respect that. Oh, so that. you've been testing me. I should have been oh, testing man. this guy. I've, Noted. I've been Noted. Noted. We're here. Noted. Flip it over there. Done. Because I've been, I've been doing all right, bro. You have? No, more than all right. You have 100% success rate right now. Ah, <laughs> There we go. <laughs> this week in the NFL... The one thing I want to mention is what you mentioned earlier, Dells. The Cowboys keeping Mike McCarthy as head coach. I think this is a mistake. Mike McCarthy, 12 straight wins. It sounds nice, but they've been bounced out the playoffs in each year. Three years ago, they lose at home against the Niners. The very next year, they go on the road and face the Niners, and Dak plays bad. Now you get upset by the seventh seed in the very first round in the wild card when you're at home and your defense comes out and plays horribly, and your offense comes out flat. I just don't know what the plan is here for the Cowboys. I will say not all the blame is on Mike McCarthy because Dak Prescott had a bad game himself and could have played way better, but you need a new culture in here, and I don't know if Mike McCarthy is a coach that you got to stick with for the Cowboys. He's already shown his true colors, and I don't think it takes long for a team to move off of somebody that – is not bringing you playoff success. My This Week in the NFL is going to be about the Atlanta Falcons, who brought in both Jim Harborough and Bill Belichick in for an interview for their head coaching vacancy. Now, it only reinforces my belief that they're going to be doing something with this number eight overall draft pick, whether it is drafting a quarterback or using it to trade up in this draft for one of those upper echelon guys, whether that number eight would be a J.J. McCarthy, a Penix, or using it to trade up to get a Jaden Daniels or a, a Drake May. I don't believe that Caleb Williams is a realistic option. I think he will be going number one overall. I don't believe that the the Bears will be trading that pick either. So with that being said, I say that with Atlanta is a hot destination where they're getting the two best coaching options available right now in their building to want to coach them. I'm not sure if it's going to be a Jim Harbo, which obviously would be intriguing. He brings some offensive ju- uh, juice to this team. Sign, uh, they do need a quarterback. Uh, and that's where also, if they stay at eight, it looks like it would be a J.J. McCarthy, which I I don't know if that's the right idea. As a Michigan fan myself, I don't know if J.J. McCarthy would be my, that selection for me. I would be trying to trade up if possible just to get a safer option. This week in the NFL, uh, Howie and Nick Sirianni, they did meet up, and they were talking about getting a couple OCs and a couple DCs, pretty much revamping the whole coaching staff. And it's understood. I think Sirianni earned himself one more year to try to get back and figure it out. you know. But he has not met with Jeffrey Lurie yet, so it's not a foregone conclusion. You know, unless Jeffrey's like, nah, fuck it, I want him going on with somebody else. But as of right now, he is definitely here. And I've just seen some funny shit, so I'm going to tell you guys. Uh, the Heat have made Dun- Duncan Robinson untouchable. I did see that. Yeah, That's and nice. I have to pee. So. Uh, the, That's the so Eagles, crazy. I've had the to Eagles pee did do that. Um, <laughs> they did I'm with Doug I don't know how you do it, too, Where they had to interview, and Howard Roseman said, come with your list of coordinator options, and we'll talk about it. And he came, and they fired him still. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's – it seems likely that he comes back, but regardless – my this week in the NFL, um, Pat Leonard of the Daily News wrote a, a very interesting article about Brian Dable and the New York Giants. I'll do my best to summarize it, um, but it's a long article, so it if is. you want to go read it, uh, go read it for yourself. Um, as we know, the Giants in Week Martindale uh, they parted ways. There was uh, a lot of a lot of friction in the locker room, in the coaching trees, and the coaching staff in the last month or two of the season. This article basically laid it all out. Um, it starts by saying how week 11 against Washington, um, in this game, the Giants are up two touchdowns, but Washington is driving down the field. On the headset, Brian Dable is already blaming Wink Martindale 
um, because the commanders were just moving the ball down the field. Still a two-touchdown lead. And he said that you're trying to blow this game just like you blew the game against the New York Jets. If I have to remind you against that about that New York Jets game, uh, that was a 13-10 to 10 loss for the Giants where Tommy DeVito had to come in and complete one pass, zero passes. I think they uh, threw it once or one, twice, one, one, one or two. At the end of the day, it was not the defense's fault they lost that game. No, no, Tommy no, no, Brian no. Dable had no confidence in Tommy DeVito. And what DeVito showed us over the next month was he's not great, but he could throw the ball more than one time. So I would say that's on um, Brian Dable. Zach did drive down the field on them, though. He, uh, You're saying the last? Uh, the last the, drive. Yeah, but you yeah. let up what, 10 points up to that point or 7 yeah. points because it was 10-10 then went to overtime. Against the Jets, 7 attempts minus 1 yard. Okay, yeah. Uh, regardless, the offense was terrible. Um, it was apparently, a miracle we won that game. It was a miracle, but he shouldn't be blaming Wink. Apparently, it got so bad um, that Joe Shane, who's their GM, had to be listening on the headset on game day. There's a couple GMs that do this, but for the most part, GMs usually don't. But it got to that point that Dable, Dable was so unpredictable and his temper was so bad that Joe Shane basically had to go firsthand and figure out what was going on. Dable's attitude has been described as destructive, always reactionary, and never proactive, and overall lacked composure. And offense coordinator Mike Kafka gets the worst of it. He's constantly second-guessed by Brian Dable. He would make Kafka run the ball. Then if he called a run, Dable wouldn't like it, and he would curse him out. Um, Dable has taken play calling away from Kafka and gave it back to him multiple times. Dable also took over Kafka's offensive means in Week 7 against a home game against Washington. Um, He didn't give control back to Kafka until Week 11. In that stretch, the Giants scored 11.7 points per game and were 1-3. in When Kafka got back the offensive play calling, the Giants scored 24 more points in five of their final seven games. Um, Last thing here, in a Week 10 blowout against Dallas, the Giants had 27 yards and one first down in the first half. The defense allowed over 600 yards, but Dable was only screaming at the defense. Um, It got so bad that Wink Martindale couldn't call plays on the headset because Brian Dable was yelling too much. We've said Brian Dable is a great coach. We gave him credit for what he did with Daniel Jones. Um, but it's obvious that this is a huge issue, and it got so bad that one of the top defensive coordinators and Wing Martindale, Wing Martindale was doing a pretty good job with a pretty limited defense. He had to step away. We've seen him get pissed off at other coordinators, special teams coordinators. We've seen him get pissed off with Daniel Jones. He's a great offensive mind, but you have to be a head coach. You have to be a leader. You have to take accountability. Brian Dable, as the New York Times or the Daily News reports, was not doing that. You saw he already had to be assigned to anger management classes. Is that true? Yes. Not a good look. That's crazy. New York media is going to find everything about you, bro. That's nuts. I wonder who's leaking it because somebody's definitely leaking it from the inside. Fucking my Kafka. Sound of it. I'm (laughs) dead. Who knows? This next topic we're going to talk about. We've touched on it a little bit in the previous uh, live streams that we've done. There is a looming decision with the Dolphins coming up. It's if they should pay Tua. Oh, shit. If he's holding back the Dolphins. And I want to hear from you first, Drew. Okay. Before Drew goes, Drew and I rib sometimes. We come to the podcast together. Today I picked up Drew. When he gets in the car, I'm like, Drew, how you doing? How was your day? Would you have some lunch <laughs> or some shit? <laughs> Drew got in the car. I didn't say a word to him. He's like, what's up? He's like, the, the Miami Dolphins don't throw the ball five times more than 10 yards down the field. The first thing he comes in the car, he's rolling up all this stat drive after drive, play after play. I'm like, can we relax here? Can we just like talk about our day real quick? We're about to get into a three-hour <laughs> podcast. Bro came ready specifically for this topic. Nice. So I'm very curious to see what you have to say. You think he's holding the Dolphins so back? So should we go first or? I'll be honest. I don't know if I'm going to say a word during the, this topic. I'm, I love I that. Don't, I feel like these I'm new, here for the podcast. I I'll, know where this is going. I'll say this first. I don't want to talk about this personally. You've said that multiple times. We've already spoken about him three episodes in a row. On three consecutive live streams. If you want to go listen to the initial reaction, go back and watch those. I'm asked to do a job today. If you want to hear this, have some fun. So, I got into the car very staticky. <laughs> because I was watching back this performance and it wasn't good. On multiple parts. It wasn't good by the Miami Dolphins. And it ruined my day. I'm watching this game back two times over. So for an hour, an hour and change, I'm miserable because it wasn't fun. So I went through it drive by drive until we got to the fourth quarter 
where of course I did watch it, but I only wrote down up until the the first drive of the fourth quarter for the Miami Dolphins because at that point the game was done. So I say this with the idea where you're asking me is the question is Tua holding back the Miami Dolphins? If you are one of those guys that solely believes a quarterback needs to have both dual threat abilities of being a pocket passer and having the attributes to be mobile as well, then yes, he's holding them back. But if you believe that it is possible for a team to have success with a pocket passing quarterback, which we've seen in the modern day of football, then the answer is obviously no. We've seen Tua have success this season within the pocket. We've seen Tua lead the league in yards, be top five in touchdowns, number one in completion percentage. You're going to tell me in the biggest game of Miami season, it took the Dolphins two drives. It took Mike McDaniel two drives to see from Tua to say, nope, we're not throwing the ball down the field. When all season long, your bread and butter, what got you even anywhere near close to a position to have the number two seed to win the AFC East was to uh, airing the ball out. On top of, of course, let me not let me not forget to mention Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, because I've been accused of only talking about Tua, even though this is a Tua conversation. Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, who's been in and out of the lineup, but awesome. Raheem Mostert, franchise-setting uh, record for, for touchdown in the season for Miami Dolphin running back. Awesome job. Yards per carry. Devon Achan, he was awesome this season when he was on the field for sure. And Mike McDaniel, who is, I still believe, a great play caller. Now, you look at the last two weeks for the Miami Dolphins football. I would still say that Tua Tungavailoa needed to be better. I would also say Mike McDaniel needed to be better. Specifically in that Bills game where in the first half they dominated on the ground, the second half they completely went away from it. In this game versus the Chiefs, they had a clear game plan. And when we have conversations, I agree with you wholeheartedly. The game plan coming into this one was one that we anticipated for the Dolphins if they wanted a chance to win. Run the football. Get it going with Mostert, get it going with HN, because the first time they met up against the Chiefs, that was obviously something that led to success. In the first drive, two runs, a penalty on third down, they move the ball back, they run a screen to Wilson, they kick, they kick a punt. On the second drive, this was, in my opinion, by far Tua's worst drive of the game. Two screens, a check down, two runs, a penalty on third and inches for illegal formation, but then on third, Tua sails it, for an interception that should have been a completed pass. He simply overthrew Jalen Waddle. On the third drive, this was after the interception. Two plays. A boot to Tyree Kill for a completion and a bomb touchdown to Tyree Kill. That was an underthrow. That was primarily a great play by Tyree Kill. In the entire first half, they only threw the ball past 10 yards five times. Three of them coming within the last 10 seconds of the second quarter. One a completion to Waddle, one a throwaway to the left side of the field, and the other a heave as the clock expires. In the first half, you only threw it five times past the sticks. On the fourth drive, you run the ball four times, 21 yards. On third down, Mostert drops the ball. On fourth down, Tua gets pressured. He has to go and make something out of nothing. Yes, the ball was on Tyreek's chest. If you want to say that you wanted it in front, I agree. It should have been in front. You're nuts. It should have been in front. But I understand trying to, to get through this conversation. Joe's giving us a summary of the game. <laughs> Shit. My whole oh, point being God, is... <laughs> Uh, you guys want to have this conversation, whether you want to hear it or not. It's, it's a, a podcast. simple question, Drew. It's is he holding him back or no? The reason why the answer is no is because there was no chance for Tua to really have success in this game versus the Chiefs. One, Chiefs got great pressure on Tua. Whether you want to say that he had the longest time to throw, they still were getting in his praise in his face when he was dropping back. A lot of these plays that we saw, primarily in the first half, because a lot of this is skewed by the fourth quarter when the game was out of reach, 
when the the chance they got in the fourth quarter to take over the game was 26 to 7 with 11 minutes left in the game. In the first half, he had five throws past the six, like I mentioned, three at the last 10 seconds of the half. Six of the six to seven throws were either screens or checks down. I say seven uh, because the the one to Tyreek Hill, uh, the boot pass, if you want to call that a check down or not, but obviously it's play action pass, so it's just a quick pass there, not a check down. And then eight runs and two penalties on third and one, which ultimately killed drives. I say this because a lot of this conversation is being primarily centered around Tua. I feel personally it's due to, one, he had a bad game. That's number one. Number two, people's agendas against Tua Tungavailoa and their prior belief about Tua. And they're primarily coming at him now because they couldn't come at him for a majority of this regular season where, like I mentioned, number one in yards, number one in completion percentage, top five in touchdowns, top five in EPA, top five in passer rating. But because he didn't perform in this game, now it's their time to go full-blown against Tua Tungavailoa when I agree he wasn't good. But if you don't mention Mike McDaniel, I can't take you seriously. Because at what point do you realize this isn't working? Let's do something new. And ironically enough, to me, the cleanest drive of the game that Miami had that, uh, that didn't result in points because they had the bomb touchdown to Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill made an amazing play was finally the drive in the fourth quarter where they actually had multiple passes beyond the first down marker. So, no, I don't think Tua Tungavailo is holding them back. It was a difficult matchup for the Miami Dolphins. I do think they need to come into this offseason, have a little bit more creativity involving a Jalen Waddle, and they, knew, they do need to address the offensive line where Tua is a pocket passer. Give him an offensive line that he can do so. Okay, so what I'm hearing is, first of all, I think you could be a Amazing lawyer for Tua. If you ever need somebody to defend him, I was told in my youth I should have been a lawyer. I said, "Hey, I'll choose argumentative podcasting." Let, let me ask choose you guys something. First, then argumentative. No, you, yeah. you, you guys can all answer. Even you can answer, Drew. I'm good, bro. If a quarterback, well, I want you to answer it, Riff. I want you to be a part of the job, conversation. Bro. Um, if you're if you're a quarterback, if you're a team building around a quarterback, and in order oh. for this quarterback to have ultimate success against winning teams, he has to have a great offensive line, great receivers. Great running game. How much is that quarterback actually elevating you or holding you back? Probably not elevating a ton if you need all that. Hmm. If you need everything around him to be uber successful, is he not holding you back? In order for back? him to do what? In order for him to win. And he, the quarterback would eventually hold you back. Now, listen. You, you were summarizing the drives. I just want to ask you a simple question. I don't want a long monologue. Did two a play <laughs> awful? I have to think about it. He's going to give him my lock. Played bad. He didn't, <laughs> he did play, play, he bad. didn't play bad. Awful strong. Awful strong. I think the Miami Dolphins did play pretty pretty bad. Uh, I don't know if awful. I'd go as far as awful now. Okay, well, you're in the minority, my friend, because uh, according to everybody that watched the game, he played awful. <laughs> according, to A- according to PFF, who they grade this stuff, he had the worst grade amongst every quarterback. Mm, and CJ had like a 70-something grade. What does PFF really know? What was well, CJ's grade was that it was like because... A 50-something. He had an interception dropped that he threw in a double coverage, and the degree of difficulty of what he was doing. But we're all universally all saying CJ Stroud had an awesome game. Of course, he had an awesome game. I think he had an awesome game, but PFF, they grade this stuff, and it's a formula that goes into a number. So with Tua, there were a ton of negative grades, there were. and that's why he had that score. So he played awful, he objectively, play Agreed. Uh, by PFF standards. Um, even according to true media, when you look at the EPA per play and the success rate of Tua's performance, it was the 29th worst all time since Damn. Uh, like the last 1,000 playoff matchups. You know, so 29, bro. 29th all time. It, it, it's a thousand games. That's not good. <laughs> so this was objectively an awful performance. It was also the fourth coldest game in NFL history. Prepare that in there, please. But what I don't understand is. How can you, with a straight face, come here and say, we are holding a narrative over Tua because of this game when you are doing the opposite after every good game? After he would beat up on a garbage team, you would come here with the EPA stats, with the stats comparing him to Dan Marino. You came in here week two last season with a black notebook. I mean, it was just week two of the season, and he ended up collapsing. I mean, you came in with a black notebook and was like, yo, these are all the people that doubted too. It was one of the best performances of the season. Okay, yes, it was a great performance. It was a great episode. But 
after after every small accomplishment Tua did, you was front and center bragging to everybody about it. You're so wrong about Tua. You're wrong about Tua. You're wrong about right. Tua. I was right. You wasn't right. I was because because you guys said he wouldn't be a starter. He's not a starting level quarterback. He's not one that can can play winning football. That's obviously wrong. And he's one in six against playoff teams this year. He this year, for sure. Not, but be, well, not your football. Super Bowl champion pick, not winning football. to go there, I should say, the Dallas Cowboys in that Okay, but also. he was one in six. So let, let me Game ask. Game-winning drive also. He was one in six against playoff teams. That was his one win. Against the Cowboys. Okay, Maybe sure. it should have been more indi- one, indicting one in, on the Cowboys. One in wasn't six, a yes. Good team. Exactly. That probably is more of an indictment the on the Cowboys. Dolphins on the road aren't that good either. I don't care. The Cowboys yeah. solid win. They got one. I got to get one. It was a one. solid and win. It was a game winning drive. But they're one in six against playoff and teams. Got hurt this year. Now, Bro got hurt in every game. Connor Williams didn't play. This he did. <laughs> this revisionist history is driving me crazy. Dells, yes. We did the football episode with Drew. It was the three of us before Riv joined us full time on the football pods. Mm-hmm. When Mike oh, McDaniel joined Tua, what did we both say? We loved it. We said, "What? Do, what was Tua going to have? It's great statistical, season. great stats, but." Yeah. We're not going to be sold so much on the stats. We knew he was going to have great stats. So this thing that we thought he was going to get benched, that's not true. We thought Tua was going to play I, well with Mike McDaniel. Can I add a little, um, a little, uh, you know. Fuel to the fire? Yeah, a little uh-huh. wrench to this toolbox here. Okay. Um, Jalen Hurts, J- Jared Goff. Uh, I guess I'll just use those two guys for example. <laughs> Excuse me. They, Jared, Jared Goff got paid a little bit of money. Jalen Hurts got paid a bag, yes. too. Not saying, I, th- I I do believe Jalen Hurts can, you know, he doesn't need the situation to be. Jalen Hurts, Jared Goff, by the way. No, 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 no. I'm using those two guys because they're just as examples because mm-hmm. their teams are built, or the, at the time, the l- golf team is built pretty perfectly. Pretty great, for I would say. And the Hurts team last year was built pretty perfectly, right? Everything around them was perfect. They played well. They did their thing. They was good. Now, you posed for Hurts this year, you know, it, cr- the situation around him crumbled a little bit. He didn't play to the best of his ability, of course, but a lot of shit around him wasn't good. Now, I think Drew's point in, is saying, you know, and I'm using them as examples, is to a situation, although it probably looks great, probably looks perfect, is not the best that it can be. You know, it, there is some hinges, there is some stuff here that could be a little better, and he's saying, you know, the whole blame isn't on Tua. Is, is, that not on get, is that what I'm getting the whole, from what you're saying? The whole blame is not on Tua, but we talk about if he's holding him back or not. That's the conversation. Jalen Hurts has shown that he can elevate against great high-level teams. He's shown that before. Tua, can Tua, Tua does not have a game against a high-level playoff team where he's elevated and he's risen up to the occasion. Yeah. So the fact that when he has his first That's awful right. game, you are defending him when throughout the – NFL season, mistake me if I'm wrong, but after great Tua games, Drew would come here and say, Josh Allen and Tua's an argument. All right, easy, <laughs> he would, easy. Th- there was two guys that were untouchable from the rest. It was Mahomes and it was Allen. You might Burrow, have a tweet saying Tua. Burrow, Burrow. Burrow definitely, other than, uh, jokingly, jokingly. Lamar, you might have said. Yeah, Lamar, I might have said as a passer, but I still stand Tua on that. Did you call Tua an elite quarterback? Yeah. And now it's pretty false. That That's still actually stand on like, Tua really being a better passer than Lamar. Better passer, I still will stand on that. Yeah, that's crazy. He's not even close to the passer Lamar Jackson is. Lamar, Lamar Jackson has the, dr- drastically The issue I have with Tua no, in this Lamar conversation. Jackson is just finally in the first NFL pro-style offense. The, that's what it is. The issue I have with Tua and Miami Dolphins is, are they going to get to a Super Bowl with Tua at quarterback? No. Oh, Let me ask that? you a question. I'll, I'll rebuttal with this. I have a, I have a the, follow-up to this, all right, too. If the Lions go to the Super Bowl, is there any excuse that the Dolphins can't? Uh, in a different conference, if the Lions go this year, if the Lions go this year to the Super Bowl, and they play is there, the, I mean, is sure, there they, an excuse they play the Rams for the, first the Dolphins round, not and the to. Bucks, then a young Packers team, and they get to a Super Bowl? Okay, let's say they they let's say you know this world they beat the Niners, okay. which I don't see happening. What if they beat the Niners? What's the excuse for the Dolphins then? There is none. Correct. The excuse is that, the fuck out. but do you understand why I ask? I that? guess yeah. I, the I'm excuse is that in the, in the AFC there are just more. But even Jared Goff has it's shown not, more in big Joel, games. It's not, it's not even talented quarterbacks. Where do those quarterbacks play? In, in Baltimore, cold weather, in Kansas City, places. in Buffalo, yes. in Cincinnati. Jared Goff plays in a dome. All they have to do is get home field advantage. They fucking blew it. Okay, and why? they Tua can't play playoff teams in the regular season. The Dolph- against the Bills. 
Trash against the Titans, Tua played trash. Agreed. But also Tyreek And Hill that was out. the game that ultimately blew it. If you and won that. And also Connor Williams got injured. Yeah, okay, anyway. still. The last Connor two Williams plays, is a huge The loss. last two plays of the game, Tua had receivers you get a hit, and he didn't hit them. He doesn't rise up to the moment. And that he game. He rise up it, against the Cowboys. Okay, sure. I don't care. That's I'm why just, I think that. Well, you can't say you don't care when I'm giving you. Because because I don't, I don't like the Goff comparison because the NFC is different. I only say that as a pocket passer. But it's look look at where he has to go to. There's no. It's obvious there is an issue with Tua in this offense playing yes. in the cold, in the snow, in bad weather. And, and when he all the time the that Goff's a dome merchant. He is. But look at the NFC, the, the top dogs you're going through. There, you, there's not really. San Francisco could get bad weather, but it's not Dallas really. is mm-hmm. a dome. Philly could get bad, I guess, but Detroit's oh, a Philly dome. Philly gets nasty. Not yeah. only that, but Bob's listen, listen Dells. For oh, yeah. one, this hypothetical is ridiculous. The Lions are not going to the Super Bowl. Let's just make okay, that clear. Okay, yes, but can't, God forbid we're a podcast and we live. We talk about some hypothetical. Wait, how but because, is that ridiculous? Because they're not going to go to the Super Bowl. The Packers Bowl. can beat the Niners, but the Lions can't go to the Bowl? The Packers would beat the Lions if they played but that's them. Not but a that's a division. Division. No, that's not a division game. No, the Lions can't. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be a good game. That's 50-50. That's a coin dome. Do you think the 49ers are advancing? Yeah, I do. The 49ers, do you think they'd beat? The Lions? Yeah, okay. but you can't say that because you think the Packers. No, because I Niners. think the Packers would beat but the Lions. The, but, I think they're a better. But Joel, team I, I also ah. preface it saying I believe the Niners will go to the Super Bowl. But I also said, Ultimately, let's say theoretically, Jared Goff held back the Rams. I don't think you can. But win they a Super- went to a bowl. I, I don't. Th- they scored three points. They did because against all time great coach. Because all time great coach. Todd like Gurley was their that. their leader on offense. He was the engine on their offense. Jared Goff played great. He was, but. Sean McVay made a decision to move on from Jared Goff because he was holding them back. I think Jared Goff is a better quarterback than Tua. Tua is not going to go through the AFC and beat Mahomes or Allen or Lamar Jackson or these other superstar quarterbacks. Um, upcome, he can be he maybe can just as good. Yeah. I always thought Tua was a Jared Goff, Jimmy Garoppolo type quarterback. He's probably a little Jared. bit above Jimmy Garoppolo, but it's, like, it's so disrespectful. No, it's not disrespectful. And there's you more, see Samoa and Jared Goff, there's more, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm just there's like, more you were just evidence, getting bullshit off that night. There's more evidence of Tua playing bad against playoff teams than there is of him playing well. You mentioned the Cowboys. Okay, but that's the one out of the – they have six losses against playoff teams, and he did not play good. Tua's record against the Ravens, to be fair, is 2-1, and one, one being this season, which is unfortunate. He got smoked. Did beat Dallas. Has beaten the Bills. Although not this season, of course, has beaten the Bills. The Chargers, you it was week one. That was before that we saw what the Chargers They ended were a up bad being. team, bro. They ended up being a, a bad team. No, there was a bad team even but before Herbert went down. But why did you pick the Chargers to win that game? Because of Herbert. That's it. But I, I, their, their defense was not good, bro. The thing is, if but they is, were just a playoff team, if, my the, if the response to this is he's won two games against no, the Ravens no, in his career yes. and the Chargers won, like... You, agreed. Okay. And the Bills. Moving. He has been the Bills. Yeah, divisional opponent. And you know, the first time that he matched up against in, Mahomes, he actually had a really you know, good game. You know who he beat had, the Bills in 7,000 degree weather. And everybody, but he also hurt. had an unbelievable throw after getting a concussion. Everybody was getting hurt. The Bills players were rushing guys to get water on the sideline every play. You know that Tua had the worst pass rate when kept clean in a clean pocket in the playoffs. I did in not this know that. game. Oh, he, oh, in the when, playoffs. When, when, uh, when he was kept clean in a clean pocket, he had the worst pass rate. He wasn't good in the game. He wasn't good. There was lim- I only say I agree he wasn't good, but there was such limited opportunity. There was limited opportunity, which is why when we had conversations about this game, you went to the fourth quarter because it was the only time they actually let him throw so the Drew, ball. No, what about, okay, well, I didn't because he had an interception Drew, early. What about, I could have got in more but, plays but from the beginning. That of the was game. the one of five no. throws I plus show, 10 yards I showed in you the first half. Eight, nine bad plays of two in the fourth. It wasn't good. He wasn't he was good. And I, have I said that he was good once in the conversation? I mean, you no. Was, you was thinking about it if he was awful or not. You thought about yeah, it. Yeah, awful or while. bad. Go ahead. So, um... If you want to use that excuse, fine. Let's wash away the playoff game just for a second. Just just put it. Which you can't. It's his first time. I understand. But put it in a little box here. Mm-hmm. We're going to just push the box to the side. What about the other games outside of the Dallas Cowboy games? The ones that matter. What Which, about those? Twice the against the Bills. The only reason the Chiefs, I mention the, the Cowboys Ravens. as much as I do is, one, the Cowboys were the second seed in the NFC. Two. The Ravens were the was, one seed. It was four weeks ago. The Bills game is more important. That I was agree. for the division. I agree. Both. Both. Yes. Both, both. Those, division games like the, that. The first more, one, Tua did not play bad. The 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 defense did absolutely nothing. Either. Agreed. Played regular. I agree. Uh, he's a regular he did. quarterback. That's I didn't say that. He's regular. He's a regular. But quarterback. the Ravens game mattered. The Bills game mattered. 
We, the Dallas game mattered, yeah, but he played well, okay. But that's you're, you're, you're clinging on to this I can't one cling game, in that one Dallas. Yeah, and it's like so, you have so many, you have two division doesn't games. Doesn't move you really. Now when you have these other games, the only good game that he had against a good team, it's not. What happened you. in Week 18 and then in the playoffs? Agreed, he didn't play well. He what happened in Week 14 what against two the Titans? Before, like against the Ravens. But against what the happened Bills? against the Titans? A team that was not I'm good. not gonna bring that up. The, and they the, blew it. the game versus and the Titans. He, didn't play well. he played well and then didn't in the fourth quarter. Like, like, so he did play well. Have two bad games, one good game, two but more the, bad games, and be like, "Well, is, the one they good blame, game." You, they, should, they, you know, you know what it is. Also, do you know what it is? Also, it's similarly how we have the conversation with Matt Ryan blowing it to the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Obviously, about the fourteen point. They were up double digits. It they one blew it to the Patriots. The record to the Titans. The, it talks Chiefs about game. the defense of the Dolphins what collapsing the as bad as they game? did. The B, the the Chiefs game, which one? The, the week eighteen. Oh, excuse me, the playoffs. Oh, oh no, agreed. I I still say you you said that the defense played well. I think for all the, the injuries, red, the yes. Were moving the ball, they, they scored were the red six zone. on six drives. Half of them were field goals. It was what nineteen. They had two to, touchdowns well, and four field goals. Sixteen seven. They had two touchdowns and four field goals. Listen to this. That's pretty damn good with a beat up defense. L- listen, listen Mahomes. to this. Matt Ryan in Super Bowl one hundred forty four point one pass rate, two hundred eighty four yards, two touchdowns, completed seventy four percent of his passes. He had a good we, game. We're not gonna. We're not going to try to compare to his game against the Titans. Against All I'm saying Matt is Ryan it was, was the doing. defense of that of Atlanta. It that was also the folded. offense. They had a three and out, and then Tua had a chance to get a field goal, and then he choked. He did, but Tyreek Hill also wasn't on the field. Jalen Waddle was not on the field. Connor Williams he had was not an, on the he field. He had open receivers that he didn't throw to. Oh but, he choked. He yeah. choked. And you know, was, all but this, see, the thing is, the conversation shifts to Tua when the defense had an all-time great choke because he didn't play well either. Down I don't the even stretch. care about the Titans game. I'm talking about Week 18 in this Chiefs game, the biggest game versus, versus, they did versus the Week 18. Show up. See, here's the thing. I don't, I don't disagree with you. I agree, but my whole thing comes back to let's have some accountability for the play caller as well. I thought week the Bills game was valid. Was egregious. I thought the Bills game was valid because you were able to run the ball with ease in the first half and you got away from and it. And did the Chiefs nothing. Game, nothing worked. No, because, agreed. Agreed. Bro, at the end of the day, two is not going out there into Kansas City into Baltimore in this weather and winning these games. The weather he hasn't not shown me disagree. all his whole career. Drew, not going to disagree. Not disagree. Drew, I'm not thi- disagreeing the, just for the record. I'm not saying that you're disagreeing. All right. This is what I'm saying. I would respect it if you kept the same energy. But the fact is that when it's other quarterbacks that have these blunders, you don't never mention shit about play calling. Like one. When it's Joe Burrow, you don't mention Zach Taylor. When it's Patrick has Mahomes. His, when right, it's, when, when it's, has his play calling been bad? When I'm wondering. What do you mean? I'm asking. Zach, Zach Taylor example. was definitely questioned in his first couple of years in case in uh, Cincinnati. Okay, the Last first year before they moved to a shock and exclusive offense, the play calling was definitely in question. But he was the one that addressed it, made an adjustment, and then they ended up going on a run. Yeah, but Joe Burrow does the heavy lifting of, of the Joe offense. Joe Burrow's a great quarterback. Yeah, I've he's, never he's called an him anything less. Okay, I've never called him anything less than great. With Patrick Mahomes early in the season, MVS dropped the pass in the bucket. You 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 talked about that Come throw on. for ten minutes. I obviously was joking. You talked about that throw for ten minutes. I was obviously minutes. joking. You talked about that throw for ten you minutes. Were, you went crazy. I know. Of course I did. I'm talking about the greatest of our generation. If you want to count Brady in our generation, you know what I mean. Going forward, the fans, you Dells, you Riv, y'all could y'all could tell me when other quarterbacks play bad and, and you're addressing them. I don't mention. The play callers. Like when we like talk when about Jalen talking. Hurts, we don't talk about the play calling being atrocious. Okay, we talked about it being atrocious. We don't talk about Herbert and his play calling being atrocious. Of course, but those are players but I'm, objectively in bad situations. Two is not in a bad situation. Mike McDaniel's not I'm a bad not, play caller. I'm not saying He's that, not in a bad situation. My point being, Joel, is I've said, and why I kind of get upset about it is, I said multiple times, Tua was not good in these games but at least level with me saying that McDaniel wasn't either. You don't have to say that he was as bad as Tua, which obviously that's the guy has to go out there and perform. I agree. But let's level and just say McDaniel wasn't good either. That's all I'm you, asking, you, please. You tend to do this thing for quarterbacks you like. When Daniel Jones is playing like shit in the beginning of the season, I've never blamed da- you, Dable. You, yes, you. Yes, you what? did. You talked about Dable. What? Before. All I've you talked, talked about, about was their Dable offensive before. line. You talked about See, the offensive I don't line. Like and you when talked you about lie Dable. On my name. You want me to get the clip gets... for you? I'll get the clip for you. Please. Yeah, I'll get the clip please. for you. Please. Where I've talked after, shit after about the pot, Dable after the pot. Yes, you you questioned Dable's play calling. When, when is Russell Wilson did? Do you not when? question Sean Payne? Do you not question Sean Payne no. this year? He hasn't questioned Sean Payne this year. Guess the Texans you did. 
You want him to? What did you want me to? No, I said against the Texans, it was the most comfortable I've seen Russ. It was a game where you want him to be more aggressive. And that was the Texans. He he did want Sean Payne. He wanted Sean Payne to give Russ more responsibility. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. I remember that. I remember you did want that. All I wanted to do, no, well, that's really on Russ. Where I want him to take shots down the field. When your mid quarterbacks (laughs) don't perform, you go to the play call and say, "You're saying Daniel Jones." That's a lie. All I've said was get him a better offensive line. You've also criticized Brian Dable's play call. No, I have not. It was the game after Dallas. I'll go. I'll go fetch out the. The first, the okay, first fine. What it comes down to is, I look back in hindsight. I just don't like when you lie on me to I'm sound not, better I'm not lying on argument. you, Drew. I'm not lying on you, Drew. You've lied in the past. <laughs> no, how is, I, I, if not, I feel like Drew, you're lying I'm to not, me right now, I'm not how am I going to feel you. confident? I'm not lying on you, Drew. I'm not. I'm not, not. You, Drew. So whenever like whenever it comes to the quarterbacks you like, you prop them up. And then when things go bad, you mention the situation and then you don't try to give them the blame they deserve. This is why I have issue. Because when it comes to them having good situations, when when they have good moments, you can even go back to the clip that you're referring to that you like to say, I took my victory lap too soon. What did I do? I acknowledged the offensive line. I acknowledged Mike McDaniel. You had a notebook dedicated to Tua. uh, But that was the segment. Tua's historic game. But I also went out of my way to acknowledge McDaniel, the performance of the offensive line, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, even Mike Kosicki, who caught a pass in that game. I went out of my way to do that. You talk that, about oh, them. For- well, please let me finish. I know I've talked a lot. I have. I, so I apologize. My point being is I give due diligence to the other guys, but when we have topics like it's strictly today about is Tua holding them back, I have to primarily talk about Tua, but I acknowledge other stuff. When Tua plays great, I acknowledge Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle when he's on the field. I've given nothing but praise to Raheem Mostert this season. I give credit to the front office and Mike McDaniel for addressing the run game that when Tua had his season with with Waddle, when Waddle broke the record for receptions by a rookie, I said get him a good run game because it's bottom three. Do better at getting him an offensive line because it's the worst in the game. This season, they drastically addressed that. They still need to be better in the in the pass blocking game, but Mike McDaniel has done a good job, which I say consistently consistently of scheming up an offense to try and mask that deficiency i am consistent on that regard that's why it bothers me when you say that i sound like we're having a couples therapy right now in in the offseason when i was hesitant on the giants being a good team because i thought last year was a fluke and i mentioned all the stats that daniel jones was objectively bad at remember when i said from from outside of the red zone Mm -hmm. he's one of the worst quarterbacks all you did was whine and complain and act like I was saying something. I was saying what? some hearsay. How? That's all you said. You was like, "Oh, come on, Daniel Jones." That's oh, cherry pick stat. All this you was going. You was going to that level. There are there are such things as play callers that elevate quarterbacks because they are not capable of doing what other quarterbacks can do. Daniel Jones last year was one of those guys. He was. Russell Wilson this year with Sean Payne was one he of those was. guys. Tua is one of those guys. The quickest time to throw. Am, am I bugging? Or whenever I mention the quickest time to throw stat, all you credit is, is Tua getting the ball out fast when because that's why he has the quickest time to no, throw. No, I talk about the scheme. Also, he has no choice. You, you have the mentioned line. Tua getting the ball out so fast. Whenever the offensive line gets brought up, well, Tua masked the offensive line because he throws so quick. He has the quickest time to that's throw. That's also true. But it's like, that's the scheme and Mike McDaniel scheming up the perfect Didn't first I just read say that though? each time. Didn't I just that, say that's that? That's the though? first read. I want to go. I want to go back to the history of how we ended up here because Brian Flores was right all along. <laughs> Brian, the guy who doesn't have a, a head coaching job, the guy who just who Bro. just had a top ten defense with a not so talented defensive cast. that on the last game of the season got cooked thirty eight points. If the Vikings had Kirk Cousins and never got hurt, the Vikings could very well have been in There's the playoffs right now. So don't disrespect Brian Flores. Brian I'm the Flores, one that told you that the defense was good. Brian, but Brian Flores, he in Miami, he was elevating them those teams to 500 records. But wasn't a good head coach. He was a good he, head no, coach. No, he was a good defensive coordinator, not a good head coach. Difference. Brian Flores, when he was in Miami, there was rumors that they wanted to move off from him. He never wanted to draft Tua. He wanted to draft Justin Herbert. Stephen Ross met with Tom Brady because he wanted Tom Brady to be on the team, not Tua. It's Tom Brady. They wanted to trade for Deshaun Watson at the time. We didn't know Deshaun Watson was going to fall off like this, but they were making moves to elevate at quarterback because Brian Flores was already telling himself, 
We cannot win December and January football with this guy's at our quarterback. And he saw that firsthand. They went 10 and six in 2020 last game of the season to a place terribly that year. The defense was six in the league in 2021. They went nine and eight. They started out one and seven, but they won seven of their last eight and held opponents to 15 points per game in the week that they it also mattered. Played terrible teams in, in the week that it mattered. Tua versus the Titans choked. That yeah. was to get in the playoffs. He choked. Brian Flores was done. They decided to pick Tua over Brian Flores and get an offensive-minded head coach. Mike McDaniel has come in. The same problem with Tua persists. His stats might be better at the end of the regular season, but at the end of the day, when it comes to December in 2022, with that offensive mind, he folded. This year in 2023, with the sizable lead in the AFC East to clinch the division, the only reason he was in freezing temperature was because he choked down the stretch. He did? He folded. Okay, he lost the to, okay. They lost to the right. Titans. Agreed. They lost to the Bills. The they Titans lost to the Ravens. game was... But again, I he don't didn't like play when good. you single he out didn't play good when there was other things involved. Obviously, it's a That's team sport. I, things are going to happen. You're just loudest about Tua. Because he point. is the quarterback. The quarterback that has that the biggest impact on the game. Crazy. Does the quarterback not have the biggest impact that on the was, game? But, all right, what was the primary goal for the Dolphins this season with Tua as quarterback? Outside of winning the Super Bowl. Win a division. Win a playoff. Stay healthy. The goal for Tua this season was to play all 17. What does that have to do with this conversation? My point being, they succeeded with that mission. They failed their ultimate goal of reaching the championship. That's the obvious what? goal. But four years, that's it. Write them off. Done. Can't, can't get you in a better situation. What? My point being is, in year four, he's gotten better than when he started. In year four, they were a game away from the division. They blew it down the stretch. They could have accomplished that goal a lot quicker. Agreed. But the primary goal for Tua this season outside of winning the championship was to stay healthy. They did that. The primary goal you can say for the team was to win the division. They failed. They were in the lead and two like, yes. Football is a team sport, bro. There's going to be multiple facets in the game. But sometimes you make it as if it's not. No, I don't. Do you think the Dolphins got closer? Do you think they're close? Yeah, I think so. I think it's obvious what needs to be addressed coming into this offseason. You come back, you retool, you get better. The quarterback has the biggest influence on the game. Mr. Dells, when our Jets lose and our defense gives up some points, at the end, we go back to, we couldn't move the fucking ball. Well, that's also because you're playing with Trevor Simeon. Okay, but... When you look at the games that the it's Dolphins... It's not like Tua is Trevor Simeon. When you look at the games that the Dolphins have lost, Tua has an 86.5 pass rate against playoff teams. When he faces what playoff those teams, defense he's do? below what average. Happens, what do those offenses that are playing against the Dolphins' defense do? They don't torch them. The, the average points is like th almost 30-something points. If you're not moving the ball offensively, it's going to lead to more possessions for your defense. And ironically enough, the two games that they that they played well against was against the Bills in Week 18 and the Chiefs uh, that week in Germany. Outside of that, they've given up more than 25 in all of those games. I don't understand what's so difficult. Okay, the first game versus the Bills, was Tua bad or good? I wouldn't say he was bad. He was average. Yes. Versus the Chiefs, was he bad or good? I think he was average in that game also. He was average even though the ball slipped out of his hands in the last drive when yes. Raheem Mostert carried him on that drive, and he was bad in the first half. Regardless, they scored two drives in that second half, and also Tyreek Hill was kind of handed a touchdown over to Kansas City, which ended up being the deciding so touchdown. So let me get this straight. Because Kansas City didn't score in the second so half. So let me get this straight. Two drives in the game labels the performance average or good. Giving, yes. But two drives that were bad in the playoff game, you just kind of cancel those out and you don't really mention no, them. You're, you're just like true. You're just like, listen, he didn't have much of a chance with the play call Joel, again, that was provided to him. What you're doing is just talking nonsense. Versus the Ravens, was he good or bad? Was he awful again, or bad? No, he was, he was, he was bad. bad. He was bad. bad. Versus the Titans, was he good or bad? That's tough. Because they went into cruise control up two touchdowns. I think it was a choke job on the Miami Dolphins part. I'm not going to say he was bad. Was he bad when he needed to be called on? Yes. Week 18, was he good or bad versus the Bills? I don't think he was bad. I think that it was, it was more so on execution. He was average. I think he was average. In all the games that you telling me, you, you was telling me all season two it was elite. And all the games against playoff teams, he played average. What would you say the defenses were against those elite teams? I don't think they were good. Would you even call, call them average? No, I thought they got scored on. Some games that were average versus the Chiefs, they were awesome. They Agreed. were great. Agreed. But can the, the Chiefs agree. the top three offense in the NFL win a shootout? 
But again, when the team got decimated by injuries late in the season, the offensive the line Chiefs lost Connor the Williams. Some injuries. What about uh, the Eagles? What did the Chiefs? Who would they lose? Injuries? Who did the Chiefs lose? Well, I'm saying, why didn't you? It was twenty. It was twenty-one seven or fourteen that game. The the game versus the the first one. Yeah. Agreed. No, you shouldn't have lost that game. At the end of the day, the Dolphins went eleven and six. They went two and four down the stretch. Two was stats down the stretch. I have them right here. 227.6 yards per game, 64% completion percentage, six touchdowns, five interceptions, 83.9. That is a bottom three passer rating in the NFL. So you saying he play average is saving face. He played bad in these performances, bro. Sorry to break the truth to you. He played bad in these performances. What games are these exactly, did you say? The last six games of the season. So we're talking about the Bills, we're talking about the Ravens, we're talking about the Cowboys, we're talking about the Jets are in there, the Titans, and I believe one more. The Jets was cruise control. The the Cowboys game he played well. In totality, the last six games of the season he did not play good. Bro. So is it he averaging out passer so, rating? So why, where the the Ravens completely screw that? If Tua that? is this elite quarterback, then how come you're not holding him to a standard to perform Listen, against? I said it. I I'm gonna hold it in my heart that I still think that he's elite right now in the in the public. Unfortunately, it is not perceived that way. And what I what contract are you giving Tua? I'm, 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 I'm he's gonna get he's gonna get forty five. I'm questioning, bro. I, Daniel I'm, Jones just got forty. That's nuts. That's Do you nuts. Think the Giants regret that's that. That's nuts. <laughs> Two years though. Yo, yo, Dells. If, if Josh Allen had an eighty-three point nine passer rating the last six games of the season, would you say he played bad? Yes. Patrick Mahomes, would you say he played bad? Yes. Joe Burrow, would you say he played bad? Yes. Lamar Jackson, would you say he played bad? Mm-hmm. Jalen Hurts, would you say he played bad? Mm-hmm. You're not willing to admit play a. I did say he didn't play. I said you he said he played, played average. In those average. games that I'm recalling, yes, he played. He played average. Not bad against though. against the Ravens. I said bad in totality at the last six games of the season that he played bad or good. He definitely did not play well. Did he play bad? He didn't play well. Can we not did he play bad? He just semantics, wants to get caught in semantics. No, I'm he just saying because you're not, he did you're, not play you're good at unwilling all. to say he played bad. I have said multiple times he hasn't play, he, that he played bad. I said he hasn't <laughs> played well. Okay, so <laughs> he played bad. Yes or no? It's a yes this or no was, question. This is the first 20 minutes for your guy here, by the way, too. Like, <laughs> I was. Like, I oh, said God. before the show started, we don't need to talk. about I look about at the this. contract situation. Geno Smith is getting 30 million per year. Tua is not that much better of a quarterback than Geno Smith. Jared Goff currently is getting $30 million per year. If the Dolphins Dolphins pay Tua $40 million a year, it will be the worst mistake they they have made. The Dolphins have five important free agents coming. It's Waddle, Holland, Phillip Extensions as well, Christian Wilkins, Van Ginkle, Connor Williams, Robert Hunt. Those, Those are all free agents. When you pay a quarterback a lot of money, the roster gets depleted. And that too. and that's He's why old. and that's why the question becomes, do you pay a quarterback if he can't make up for a less talented roster that he's surrounded by? What's the other and option? with Tua, it's there is no. none. There that's is a none. With a lot of these teams, they don't have many other options. But do you think you could find a quarterback for 10 to 20 million dollars and put him in McDaniel system instead of paying to a yeah, 45 that, and, that's and what's going to happen question of the days what's going to happen he's going to fumble in the big that, moment the same result that might have happened with Tua they're not going to do shit because last then, year when Tua didn't they, play they, they, Tyreek and Jalen had zero touchdowns say for example they, they don't pay Tua right they give a, a bridge or a quarterback 10 to 20 mil and he does do well in the system you're still going to have the same issues that you probably would have with Tua he's not going to be able to perform in the big moment so now you're stuck in a, a position yeah, where least, you're going to be mediocre like you're not going to be able to get a top pick at least with that you have some money to fill up holes. But then it's like I mean, you're fucked. Now you're wasting. No, I, I don't disagree. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, it, like it's pride. Gonna be hard That's to pride. Win. It's gonna be hard to win a Super Bowl with Tua. It's, I mean, I mean, you, you ride your best option. You haven't won up to this point. You haven't won a playoff game, and now you have to pay him it's four years. He's been when he's been in a good situation for two, and one of them he had three concussions in one season. There's a reason why teams move on from quarterbacks after year four because if you can't win under their rookie contract, which is the biggest luxury to team building, then it's unlikely you're going to win after that. We've seen this roller coaster with other quarterbacks before. Jared Goff got paid. The Rams move off from him. The Eagles paid Carson Wentz. The Eagles moved off from him. Dak Prescott is getting paid from the Cowboys. He got a second extension. Those are different, though. And, and we're seeing and we're seeing Dak now. Is not a is not set in stone if he can take you to the promised land. And at this point, the the answer with him is no. Top level quarterback play is about extending plays when nothing is there. Tua doesn't have the ability to extend anything. If if the offense isn't perfect for him, he cannot create out of it. And, of course, Mike McDaniel's not a perfect play caller. Nobody is. Kyle Shanahan is 
has not won a game when he's trailed by 10 plus points going into the fourth quarter. Am I going to say Kyle Shanahan is to blame or the quarterbacks that he's had have not given him the chance to come back in those games because he hasn't had an elite tier quarterback. If you are asking a play caller to be as perfect as he can for the quarterback, for them to have success, then we're not talking about a real high-level quarterback. There's just not many quarterbacks that can lead the league in yards and top yeah. five in touchdowns just scattered around the I league. Think, There's, it just well, does not, not exist. James Winston did it one year. Not and he also threw 30 uh, uh, interceptions. Geno Smith had a 30-touchdown, 10-pick season last year. Um, And then what happened this year? I think. Uh, it was pretty mid. Paying him 30 to 32 isn't nothing insane. You know, I, 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 I think that's pretty just firm. led the league in yards. He's going to get 40. I don't, I don't, I think the wins, <laughs> I think the wins and golf things are unfair. I think golf got traded for Stafford, who's a shit ton better than golf. You know, you make that move. And then ironically, you, Stafford just lost to that if, guy. If Miami was in that Marshall. same position, he did. You no, know, I agree. Yes. So, if Miami was in that same position in two the they would, they would golf trade him versus, also, so. versus think, Stafford. And golf, I mean, uh, and Wentz, he got hurt. And then he just wasn't good anymore. So it's like, I think those are two that, like, if Miami was in the same situation as the Rams and they had Stafford on the board, they would trade two for Stafford, too. It's just Stafford is that fucking What the great. Dolphins need to do is that they need to find the Matthew Stafford for Mike McDaniel. That's what they need to do. Two, it's hard you're, to find you're, you're, you're not going to win with Tua at The thing is, Tua is probably going to have some trade value. You know, like Jared Goff, Damn. you can use Tua. So would you trade Tua for Kirk? Kirk's a free agent. Yeah. I would, I would, I would rather injury. have Kirk than Tua. But I'm saying Matthew Stafford, you know, he was up I there I think in age. Dak Prescott is the closest thing to that on the market right but now. Dak is another dead. guy like, that... Yeah. Dak is better than Tua, though. No, but being better than Tua is not the issue. It's do you shrink up in the moments. So even guys above Tua have shown the shrink in those moments. You know, golf, like you mentioned, is better, but he's shown the shrink in the moments. Dak has shown the shrink in the moments. So I, is, I well, understand and that's the why offense. there was conversations about moving off all these guys. Yeah. That's why we're having the conversation. The offense, I understand having Mike McDaniels, having Reek, having Wild. I get that part. Having a chain, like most of those guys are elite. But is it is jumping up marginally in the quarterback spot really a difference maker, especially in the AFC? You have to believe in the player because – with Matthew Stafford, before he got to the Rams, he was 0-3 in the playoffs. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the, the Lions did not were, were losing, and of course, some people put that on Stafford. Some people knew the situation that he was in. Dak is not in that situation, but I don't think that there are a lot of easy buttons in the Cowboys' offense, and they're very predictable as well. I think uh, Dak Prescott is a pretty substantial upgrade over Tua. I think I he's a substantial. Say that. substantial. Having, having I Dallas, think he's a substantial. Being in Dallas, you know what's funny too? Because I, I don't know if we could say that. You know what's funny? Uh, given circumstance, Dak played worse than Tua. No, he didn't. Chiefs he defense didn't. clears the Packers defense. It clears. I mean, he played them. bad. Played, he played, a, played like played shit. in he played a bad. dome. Like if we played, take the garbage time stats, wait, Dak played. Dak, bad. Dak was the second worst quarterback in the playoffs. Makes sense. Tua was bad. the worst. Honestly, bro, they both sucks. fucking. They both were bad. Given circumstance, playing in a fucking dome. I don't know if we can say that. I like. I don't. I think I'd rather just. Because you got to pay Dak, too. I honestly think I'd rather but just wait th to see what Tua looks like at that age as opposed to just trading for but Dak. But that's the thing, Riff. If I was the Dolphins, what I would do is that I would try to trade for Dak and I'd try to do a Tua and Dak swap. Dak's Dak is on the last year of his contract. Dak is on the last year of his contract. If it doesn't work out, you can move off from him. You're not tied to him long term. But I'd look to get an upgrade because once they pay Tua – they will not be able to build out this roster to the point yeah. that they can consistently be successful yeah, yeah, at a high that. level and win playoff games. But that's games. not a needle mover in the AFC. Like, I, I, like the, the, you, well, you still got the Josh. The AFC is, is a great point. You still point. got Mahomes. Great point. You know, you still got Lamar. So he'll still be, you know, he may be better than Tua, but he'll still be at the bottom of those. Even Herbert's to Joe Burr, Like, he'll still be at the bottom of those guys. Like, so, like, I don't know. I get what you're saying. You know, you mentioned his last year. So the money shit makes sense. That works up perfectly. He's already signed for the fifth year. So so yeah. it's going to be the extent. Mm -hmm. They the, probably so won't extend them this yeah, year. Yeah, the money It'll makes sense. After you got a chance to do that. But that's just tough because they st Miami still got some holes to fill in their roster too. So, you know, that's still, you know. If two is smart, takes the year, let you know, lets his, his play do smart. the talking. He has no choice. He needs to take that money. No. I'm saying for team success. Fuck all that. Take the money. He's already breaded. If I was the, the Dolphins, no. I wouldn't outbid myself. If I, I don't know how... I don't know how many teams in the NFL would give to a forty million dollars. My point being is, I don't think there's a lot. My claim is, is there even one? You can make the same argument about Daniel Jones and his contract last. But season. that was the team. If Miami doesn't give to it at what other teams are giving? They have 40? no other choice. They have to. Mike pay White, him. Stop. you're fucking trolling. 
Wait, if they if they don't give Tua that money, can they sign Kirk and free agency? Well, Tua's not a free agent. Tua mm-hmm. is already playing mm-hmm. next season. Stand. Oh, so After he's that, there. Bro. Ah. Unless he gets, oh, he's already or locked in for sure. You can oh, see, listen. you can see like a Jordan Love type extension, like a one year, twenty mil, just to give that's cool. The it doesn't low security some upside and also two low security. It doesn't take long to see special Jordan Love in his first year as a starter. Oh, I don't disagree. It's special. It's, it's special. Talk he can, about the other guy. He can, like almost as good as Will Levis. I have to piss. That's how he walked Who, Who's off. the other guy? CJ Stroud, man. CJ Stroud is special. It doesn't take long to see. I like those texts, bro. It doesn't. It doesn't take long to see if somebody is truly special. Yeah, and not everybody can be Josh Allen, man. Not everybody can, but that's how you win in the playoffs in AFC. You need a guy like that. Yeah. And that's why the Texans they drafted CJ Stroud. They traded up to go get Will Anderson and CJ Stroud. Both huge dubs. They did that to get a special guy. Yeah, no, you're right. Every 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 team in the AFC has a dude. Like look outside, like Chargers got a dude, Bengals got a dude. Uh, Chiefs, Buffalo, you know, they got some dudes. So even pre uh, Aaron Rodgers injury, the Jets went and gotten traded for a dude. So, you know, Miami, unfortunately, they got the guys on the offense. They just don't have a dude. And, you know, it's tough to walk into play. Like, I love Brock Purdy to death, but I'm so glad he doesn't have to walk into playoff games and, like, he doesn't have to go, yeah, he doesn't have to go. Pound for pound with Josh, pound for pound with Mahomes. You know, he has guys. He doesn't have to play so much better than the other quarterback on the other side, you know. In the NFC, it's a lot easier to just, you know, we got these young guys coming. Caleb's probably going to go to NFC. You know, Jordan Love is walking into that category. Yeah, Drake May's probably going to. So we got guys coming in, but as of right now, AFC has the the the, the poised veteran guys, the the young gunners. So it's, it's tough for Tua to just go out there. And be like, I gotta be him, you know. Oh, I don't have the ability of Josh. Hey, he goes you know, to an tough. NFC team in a dome like Minnesota or does Atlanta Saints, play in a dome? Something like that. Atlanta, oh, I like sure. that. That works for Tua, where he's in a controlled environment. Uh, they're probably not going to play a lot of road games. So I feel like a lot of NFC teams have domes, and there's some good weather teams too. That would work. But uh, Drew said uh, the other day, he's like, "Oh, bring him to Denver." I was like, Whew, yeah, outside of Philly, I think you want outside of Philly who play outside in the cold. Like San Fran is hot, you know. If you go on the road, you know. Um, Seattle could get Dallas. Is, uh, I think Dallas they're in a dome, dome, right? Yeah. Uh, Atlanta's in a dome. Detroit's in a dome. Seattle is windy. Green yeah. Bay can get shitty. Green Bay can get really dog shit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. But that's why you take risks because, like I said, the Texans drafted CJ. The coach drafted Anthony Richardson. You take chances on guys that have traits, and that's why, like, there are just certain guys that. Because they have the talent, they could grow into somebody. Because you don't need somebody as good as Mahomes, mm. but you need somebody who can go toe to toe. Because I know Trevor Lawrence isn't in the best situation, but the quarterbacks in the AFC with Josh Allen, oh, Joe Burrow, Lamar, Trevor, I feel comfortable that they can, in the right system, go toe to toe with with the top end guys. They can go toe to toe with each other, and that's where Tua. I don't feel like he's shown that. He hasn't shown he could go toe to toe with them. Justin Herbert. He's going to milk that one, yeah. Dak Prescott. We didn't add him in this conversation. It's toe-to-toe. Oh, yeah, got yeah. it, we, got him. Just saying he went toe-to-toe. With him. Who, Justin Herbert? And Dak Prescott. He said oh. Justin and Dak. Yeah. He did. This guy's ridiculous. I cooked. Sure. I was under the assumption that Mike McCarthy was going to get fired. Me too. And so is Nick Seriani going to get fired. And both of them are looking to get retained. Yeah. You guys really thought Nick was going to get fired? Definitely. I don't know. Collapsed on the stretch. It was so ugly. Nah, he wasn't going to get fired. I knew they was going to give him another opportunity to bring in a new team. Rev, true or false, you guys went from the best team in the league to bottom three. Bottom three team? I'm guessing. Oh, I'm not going to lie. You guys were bottom ten team no, the last six. Bottom three season. defense, that's a lot. Sure. Bottom team, I'm, I'm trolling. The offense were, was, yeah. fell apart. The defense was dog shit, and then the offense fell apart. Bottom you 10 you almost lost right. twice to the Giants. Um, lost to the Cardinals. Lost to the Cardinals. Lost by the Bucks. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. Doesn't move. Got destroyed by Dallas. Yeah. Got destroyed by the Niners. Eh, I'll wash that one away. <laughs> Everything else is... Uh. I don't know who's under more pressure, whether it's the Eagles or the Cowboys. Really? It's very easily the Dallas Cowboys. I think they that's... Have not, they have not made an NFC Championship game since the 90s. It's, what, 28? I years? think the pressure's on the Cowboys every single year, though. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why Which that's... Which is why that's it's always answer. and forever but, will but be this is, But this is the counterpoint to that. The Dallas Cowboys, universally, people have this belief that at some point, things will collapse for them. Correct. Where except the, you. the Eagles, you know, except me. <laughs> he's changed the tide, though. He's, except yes, except yes, two yes, years rumor ago. Has it. Rumor has it. He said he was done. That with he's that. done. Yeah, yeah, he said he was done. But with the Eagles, they're just coming off the Super Bowl. 
and people thought they were very real. And they lost in a wild card, and I think probably just as an embarrassing fashion as the Cowboys lost to the Packers. Nick Sirianni staying, at least with Mike McCarthy, you can say he's calling plays. Dak Prescott had his best season with him. Yep. With Nick Sirianni, he's not calling plays. Shane Steichen called the plays for Hurts, and that led to the best season. So Nick, if Nick they're Scott. finding a new coordinator defensively and offensively, I think there's more pressure on the, on the Eagles because Jalen Hurts has to get back to what he was in a regular season in 2022 and the team, which is losing Jason Kelsey. No, he might. He didn't. He didn't. You, 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 he's gone. Stop. Jason's gone. He's no, retiring. He, he, no, he just said it on his podcast. On New yeah. Heights? Yeah. yeah. He's he, thinking he said, about it? He said he, he hasn't confirmed, he hasn't anything. confirmed anything. Good. That's yeah. awesome. So, Huge uh, news. So that in the box. That's gone. Um, well, that's not gone. It's just a maybe. Well, no, you said what? he's gone. I still so lean towards he's retiring. But, I think he's no, he's old to shit. I think If he retires, shout out to him. Let this be a you guys segment. No, because I don't really think this is a conversation. I think this is a team that just won a Super Bowl and then made a Super Bowl and then you know, another year where they won 11 games and they lost in the wild card for sure. But I don't think that we have more, like who's under more pressure? Is that the question? I don't think it's the question. I don't think that's more than Dallas. Dallas is known universally as America's football team. They are known as this franchise that has all these legends. They're known as winners and they have yet to reach the heights that we've reached in the last five years. You know, we've made a Super Bowl. You know, as we didn't go, we both went out sad as fuck. I'll be honest. We both, both our teams went out sad as fuck in the first round. The only thing we can hold on to, though, is that we went to a Super Bowl the year before and we won a Super Bowl five years ago. Dallas has to go back to the 90s to even grab that type of, that type Eagles. of feel. Yeah. Even if we go to the 2000s, the Eagles went to the Super Bowl in that moment. They went to NFC Championship games. Dallas has yet to reach that. That's why, unfortunately, you know, they will always get the more pressure. You know, they will always get the under, like, they will always be under a microscope because they are, you know, run by Jerry Jones. They do have this this type of insane aura in the building. Like, they are the Dallas Cowboys. Up. No, they're they're kind of like the Lakers and the Celtics of that, just that aura around that building. It's the Cowboys, it's the Lakers, it's New York. It, like, that's what they do. So, But I think both teams, like, in my honest, genuine opinion, are under the same pressure. You know, I think when you look at the NFC landscape, like we just talked about it, Caleb Williams is coming. Drake May is coming, possibly, like more likely than not. Detroit's on the way. They're getting better as a unit. Atlanta is just a two or three moves away for being a legit team in the NFC. Green Bay Packers, they're on the way. You know, see, it's, uh, San Fran is still going to be there. So this isn't going to be – and, you know, you still got to always keep mindful of the Giants. You know, so this isn't like something that they're going to just be elite at every year. No, this is, should be a wake-up call for both teams, you know. And I, I'm not – opposed to Sirianni getting fired. I just don't think he would. I think he's earned another year. And if they, they're giving him the opportunity to, you know, bring in a new uh, a new OC, a new DC, I think I'm, I'm fine with seeing how he looks in the next year. Because, you know, you've won 11 games, went to a Super Bowl. Whether you did the most work, the least work, you were a part of that. So I, I understand that that he deserves a – he earned another year. I don't want to say deserve, but he earned another year. But I think both teams are under the same pressure. You know, you got Dak. Uh, his contract is almost up with us. I think because we have the young quarterback, you know, because we has uh, we have a guy that's seen he can grow, he can improve, he can be a top ten quarterback in this league, he can continue to climb. We have AJ Brown, we have Smitty, you know. I think we 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 have a team. We just drafted Jalen Carter. We have Howie Roseman. We have Howie who can legitimately draft. Derrick he Henry has, could be on the way. That's, that would be fire. He's a little old, but that'd be fire. You know, I think we could have be. we can rely on that part that we don't. We're, you know, we're not in a worse position. So, so is there more Henry. pressure on if you haven't been somewhere? Is there more pressure on you to go or if you've been there to get back? I think for the idea that we've been waiting so long. This is the year. The this no, 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 no. This is the year. I lied. No, this is the like year. For Washington and Dallas, they both haven't been to a Super Bowl. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Washington, whatever. But they neither of them been to the Super Bowl in forever. But Dallas, it's... It's Dallas. Joel, are you going to argue that the Eagles have more pressure on them? The Eagles have felt the height of going to the Super Bowl. But they've won it. They've won it, though. Not with this current group. I'm talking about, like, if you're saying as a history of a franchise. A lot of guys are still here. What what franchise Fletcher's has more? Fletcher's still here. Kelsey's Graham, still here. Kelsey Lane, Lane. A bunch it's of It's a linemen. brand new coaching staff, though. It's, oh, it's, yes, yes. It's yes, mostly yes. new. You know, yeah, Bradbury, yeah. Slay wasn't on those teams. But if we talk just this culture, uh, this um, coaching staff, Sirianni has done more than Mike. I know. But that's what I'm saying is that in the history of the of the teams, yes, the Cowboys are always going to have more pressure than the Eagles because they're under a bigger microscope. But if you have reached the pinnacle of getting to a Super Bowl and losing, I think there's more pressure on you to get back than there is on Dallas to 
get there because they haven't felt that. I think you're reaching. I think if we just go off minor reach, minor. I, I think just if we're going up just this coaching staff, like just so we're we're throwing out the uh, old news. We're going Mike versus Nick. I think the fact that Nick has got to the Super Bowl, he got to the Super Bowl, made the playoffs, lost in the wild card. Mike, being that they've been one of the top teams in the NFC, they had a, they they last year they lost to the Niners on the road, and then this year they kind of fell short and lost at home as a top seed after winning the division. This year they had a better towards the end. They had more of a favorite to go to the championship than we did. That's just that's just a fact towards the end of the year. So I think Mike never really like Cowboys being as talented as they are, being heightened up the last two three years, well two years, never really getting at least to the NFC championship game. I think that just holds a little. We've shown that we could do it. So, we, of course, uh, the the goal and the expectation is to get back. But the fact that Dallas has built up this much talent as a team and hasn't got there, that's a little bit more, you know. Yeah, I think uh, both teams are under a ton of pressure. Um, for Philly, I, I do think it's different for Philly and Dallas because for Philly, you pay Jalen Hurts after the one elite season. Um, and I don't think there's anything that showed you you shouldn't have paid him. Like, down the stretch, they played bad. But I think it was collectively they played bad. You know, Hertz wasn't great, but also the play calling, um, I think, across the league, which is which is very strange. I was telling this to Drew in the car. I thought after that Eagles game, it was going to be like 50-50 Hertz play calling, but it was like 95-5. Most people were like, Brian Johnson is not good. They did not have an answer for a blitz. I was funny. happy to see that. Um, yeah, you were. But what you can hang your hat on is, like you guys mentioned, two years ago you were in the Super Bowl. Jalen Hurts went up against uh, defense, uh, Spag's defense. He went toe-to-toe with Patrick Mahomes. So you saw the ceiling of Jalen Hurts, right? Was that ceiling also with an elite play caller, two elite options, two elite weapons, and an all, a great offensive line? Absolutely. But I do think if you have a above average to average play caller there that has an answer to blitz, I think Jalen Hurts is going to look a lot better. Just utilize um, many would be okay. Because because yeah. even two years ago, right, the year prior to his breakout, statistically wasn't phenomenal, but he limited the turnovers, right? He had less than ten interceptions, so you kind of saw the growth there. Last season, under 10 interceptions, but this year the turnovers were, were there and they were pretty apparent. I think that's something that get, could get brought down. For Dallas, though, I think it's twofold. Um, I think for one, it's Mike McCarthy, and then the other is Dak Prescott. You have three straight years now as a top five offense, top five scoring offense, that is. So it's hard for Jerry Jones to look at the numbers, look at McCarthy and Dak, and be like, we have to move off because you've been one of the most elite offenses in football for three years. But unfortunately, it just, it just hasn't turned into playoff wins. And we do this with Mike Tomlin, so I think it's fair to do it with Mike McCarthy. Since 2017, Mike McCarthy has won playoff win. He, always, he has only won multiple playoff games twice in his career. Um, and Dak Prescott in the playoffs really hasn't been that good. You know, this past game, the numbers are going to tell you he's great. We are in ag- we're all in agreement that he was not good. This was a terrible Dak Prescott garbage game. Time game. That first half, especially in the second quarter, basically gave the game away with multiple interceptions down the stretch. Um and then the other six playoff games that he's been before that. It's 222 yards per game, 11 touchdowns, five interceptions, completing 63% of his passes. He had a great game last year against Tampa, but the only other really great game was his rookie year against Green Bay. And it was a similar game script to this game where the Cowboys scored 16 in the fourth quarter and it looked closer than it actually was. So there's some stat padding there too. Um, he didn't play well against Seattle? He did. He had a game-winning touchdown. He ran it in. wasn't. I know that it was the Zeke game, if I'm not mistaken, but I remember him playing all right. And then against the Rams, I remember him playing a solid game. Numbers are 220 yards a game, 11 touchdowns, 5 picks, 60% completion. That's not horrible. Uh, That's not $45 million quarterback. Uh, So what McCarthy and Dak (laughs) have shown you is that they can get you to the playoffs. But Jerry Jones has seen the Eagles win it. He's seen the Giants win it in his own division. Jerry Jones wants his chance to at least get to the Super Bowl. Um, so that's why I would say Dallas has more pressure, just because they haven't got to that moment. Maybe Philly has more in just one singular year because you're riding a lot on Jalen Hurts to, have a replica, to replicate his season from the from last year. Um, but overall, I mean, Dallas hasn't been to the Super Bowl since the '90s, so I would get, I would give them more pressure. So comparing this to the NBA, who has more pressure to make the finals, the Celtics or the Sixers? Sixers. I think so. You think it's the Sixers? I personally think so. Even though the Celtics are like... Because you got to think the young supporting cast of the Actually, Celtics. Ooh. I think that's the Celtics. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good question. Because if Philly wins in the second round, goes to seven, say against Boston in the conference I finals, you'll be like, okay. Here's the thing. I'm going to stand on business. I'm still going to say the Sixers for the idea. 
What's the big narrative on Embiid? I think Embiid? Embiid has more pressure than the Celtics. But he is not, Philly, not, essentially. Not Philly. I think Embiid, if you just put it to a singular player, yeah. Embiid has That's more why pressure I say than Philly. the Celtics. Like he, That's why I say Philly. He probably needs it more than God Anyone. needs yeah. water. <laughs> the, Celtics, <laughs> the Celtics haven't won. Like, Philly won. They're just, know, they're just more, years, it's though. more pressure for them because of they're, they're the best team in the league. For Philly, it's more you haven't done it. You've had moments, you know. Yeah, I'm still going to stand on this where I think their time frame is not just this season. I think with so long as the Jays are on this yeah, team yeah. as the core, you know, you still have years to figure it out. I look at Philadelphia, and we've had conversations already about is the process coming to an end? Is if they lose early in the postseason, is the process getting broken up? Is Embiid getting traded? That's the reason why I still will stand on Philly having the most pressure because we'll look at a com- we could be looking at a completely different Philadelphia 76ers team next season if they have a failure of a postseason as opposed to the Celtics where JB and Tatum aren't going anywhere and those are the foundational pieces of the Boston Celtics. I think Dak has more pressure than Jalen Hurts, but I think the Eagles have more pressure than the Cowboys like to get back to Super Bowl. The Cowboys if mm. they string together two playoff wins which yeah. it seems Hard. Like very, very, very far, <laughs> but that is that is a success for the fan base. Where the Eagles, I feel like moving forward, it's either every year Super Bowl or bust. If you okay. don't make the Super Bowl, it's a failure of a season because y'all have been there. But does that not put Jalen Hurts having more pressure than that? Because this is with his regime, this is with his unit, this was with his group. See, with Boston, the difference was. They've done it, you know, with the Jays, yeah, but they've also had other stars come in and do things. You know, with them, it's like you got it. You you, you wanted uh, Nick Foles, you know, who wasn't really the guy. Wentz was more of the guy. Then you kind of had a, you know, bad moment, new team, different vibe. With Boston's like they've kind of had the same guys. You know, with the Sixers, it's kind of like you know you mentioned Embiid and Dak. So is it? Would you say Hertz has more because now it's an every year thing, or because of Dak? You know, just being on Dallas. I just think Dak, because he's on that contract and okay. he's yet to prove anything on it in the playoffs. Like, at least Jalen Hurts, he went to the Super Bowl and he played well. Mm-hmm. Dak cannot say that. So that's why I think Dak got the most pressure because Jalen Hurts is going to have a leash with Philadelphia for the next three seasons. Where I think Dak, after this year, if he doesn't perform, he's not going to be in Dallas no more. Damn. Yeah. Shout out to him. Hey, though. Dak. There's a spot open up in in a nice city called Denver. Be paying Russ forty million still. So. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll happily. Money? I'll happily. It's not my money, and our our owner is number two you richest. Guys are also dog shit. We are. We are. Jared Stidham, bridge bridge year. Three hours and fifteen minutes. Folks. I want nothing to do with it. I it's about nothing. time we haven't had a full podcast episode in a, you know two it takes for like a minutes, week. So you know. I gave forewarning. We also gave four episodes this week. Five. I guess no. Monday was Saturday, yeah. Sunday, Monday, Monday Wednesday. Shit, we Four or five off. days you've gotten content. And I lied. Didn't you drop an episode of Joel Moran you yesterday? Sure did. You and sure. t- today. Didn't a Riv uh, drop Riv? Oh. Mm, mm, I knew that was Mr. coming. Riv. <laughs> Once you brought that shit up, I knew it was coming. I'll drop this weekend. I promise. Okay. Let's do it. Saturday's football. You said you're locked in. You're going to make Dude, your video before? Are we not playing basketball? When? We were supposed to play yesterday. What happened? Did you check the group chat? I did check. What happened? Read the group chat. Okay. Because uh, I actually don't remember. Okay, got it. But whatever I text you, that's what it was. I understand. Ranking the quarterback needy teams heading into the 2024 <sighs> offseason. Okay. You want to go? Riv, do you have a list? Nope. I do have a list. You don't? <laughs> said no. Okay. Riv, you want to have our this my, my list be our list or? Yeah, sure. Take it or leave it. Okay, here we go. Let's, uh, do you want to all collab on a list? Yes, I'm fine with that. that. All right, okay. so do we want to go seven to one? That makes me look I really have bad eight if all teams that I feel like a quarterback Ooh, leading. I have seven, and I know one of them is one I that I'm eight. not going to agree with. Do you guys? Well, have, I'm looking at your list. Who's, the one, who's a team, team that, that, that you don't I have? I won't say. Well, this is not my order, but the Bears are quarterback needy. Seven? The Giants. I knew you were going to say the Giants. That's oh, the team I personally left I didn't, I didn't have Giants on here. I have one of my oh, brain. Oh, you don't think the, the Giants are quarterback needy? I think needy? they do, but they're paying Daniel Jones. My brother in Christ. <laughs> they, they need a quarterback. <laughs> they need a quarterback, but... That I, looks at things so wrong, man. I love... Just like, I love... No, no. He's, they need he's a quarterback. Crystal clear. You see these glasses? No, I just... The, the Patriots? Stand. Yeah, I have them, sure. but they have Mac Jones still. What's the but issue? They're not paying him forty million. No, no. <laughs> so the money is the problem. All right, can we have a but list? This Daniel Jones easy, final year. Draft the quarterback, guys. We're getting, we're getting. But I don't think at eight. Or getting distracted. Let's go. You said eight. I pick six. I have yes. seven. I have seven. Personally, I don't have the Giants here. 
I but have you know what, by that regard, I also shouldn't have Chicago here because I don't think they're QB needy per se. Although I do think Caleb Williams is an upgrade over just uh, over Justin Fields for sure. Hey, I think the Bears are less quarterback needy than the Giants because well, I think Fields is better. They than should be the Jones. last. On but the to list. be fair, because they're the going to get number one. Yeah, the Bears should be. Eight. I have them last as well. Should, okay. Do you have the Titans on this list? I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't. No. Okay. Are the Titans seven? You got to have faith in what Will Levis can be still. Ah, That's what I yes. thought it, pretty much, honestly. Why do we need to do that? Because he was a rookie. he took him over. I'm <laughs> just being an asshole. He did. He he fucking did. did. Asshole. Don't sleep on Will Levis. He got the traits. He's good. He got the traits. He, loves he can traits. be good, I should say. Uh, he got he can the be traits. Good. He's solid. You cool with that? Nah. 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 Wait until he get Bobby Slogan there. Okay. Bobby Slogan that will go to the tennis, Tennessee. Would I would be moved, for sure. D-Hop probably leaves, right? No, he's there for nah, one more year. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he going to sign a two year deal. All right, um, I feel like we can't come to agreement. My last team, the Bears are the least quarterback needy. I have them last. They have the first overall pick though, so they're going to get a quarterback. Correct. But to me, I think they are the le- least quarterback needy team of all these teams. I agree. Next up is the Giants for me. I can understand and level, but I, I personally won't have them yeah, on my list. I mean, thinking of it like that, absolutely and shit. They might be higher than fucking seven. Number six, I got Daniel the Steelers. Jones bounce back here. You fuck. Uh, so far, you're cooking? Yes. Um, Dude, I'll keep it a stack. The Steelers are disgustingly high on my list. I have them higher. I have one I'll team honest, lower than the them. In front of the Patriots. I have one you team lower higher? than them. Las Vegas. He has them high. The Raiders are high for me. I can understand that. Yes. I can understand that. It's hard Raiders because, I mean, how do you compute? Like, all these te- You either have a quarterback or you don't. Wait, like, wait. Steelers <laughs> under the Broncos and Do you know why I have the Steelers higher? Yes. I have the Steelers higher because my number one team's the highest for a specific reason. I have Pittsburgh higher because I think their team. Let me not disrespect Vegas because they they're building something clearly, but I think Pittsburgh gets a good quarterback injected automatically. We're talking about a really good team in the AFC. That's why I have them higher than Vegas. I Nobody can understand Browns. that. Browns have Deshaun. Not I'll, yet. You I just didn't have him there. Dude, Even though he's not, we big, could put him on this list, but they're not getting a quarterback. If you put the Giants, I feel like you should put because for me, just one more Coke. year. Six to four, I have Steelers, Patriots, Broncos, because I think Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph, whatever, for what it's worth, like Mac Jones was awful, and he's not even starting. It's Bailey Zappi. I think Kenny Pickett is better than Bailey Zappi. Yes. So that's why the Patriots are over them, and then the Broncos are over them because now they're going to have Jared Stidham. So Russell Wilson is not going to be on the team no more, most likely, and it's Jared Stidham. And am I going to trust Jared Stidham or – what I seen from Mac Jones at least be at some point in time. Um, I feel like we're all over the place, so I'm just gonna yeah. I'm just gonna win. list my teams. Uh, we said Chicago last. Agreed. I mentioned Vegas. I have them falling in at number six. Number five, I have Pittsburgh. Like I like I said, I think that if you put a, a good quarterback on this team, this team could be something. Number four, I have Denver because they have Jared Stidham right now at quarterback. Uh, it gives me a pain in my stomach. Number three, I have the Patriots just because I don't know if they're ready to make any type of move, mm-hmm. but they do need a quarterback. It doesn't seem like they're going to move forward with either Bailey Zappi or Mac Jones. Uh, but if they were to take one more year with Mac Jones, I don't know, worst options, I guess. Can't Not great. To say the commanders. Number two, commanders. They are here. The Unf- Sam Howell fall off. It's tragic. Um, Fucking stinks. I, honestly, you know where it all started from? And I'm not even exaggerating. Brian Robinson getting injured. After he got injured, the season <laughs> fell apart. It was terrible. Yeah. Um, but that's a credit to Brian Robinson. Scary He's actually a good ball player. Off, and, but ironically, when Jacoby, Jacoby came in, he was amazing. You're going to see Terry with Drake May. He's going to light the world I hope so. Who I I've care for too, more. I've heard for 70 Who years. I yeah, care for he's more. He's one ones, you know? Jahan Dotson getting Drake May. The streets need it so Are you terribly. still going to be a Sam Howell fan? Credit to him. I'm, I wouldn't call me, you know, I wouldn't say fan, but really? time's over. Confused the shit out of me. I get it. Um, and clown number w- for putting 410 franchise level quarterback. <laughs> Confidence. No, you didn't get clown. You put Stafford uh, low on that list. Man. To four? I never. No, 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 not the tier list. <laughs> no, no, with like a one to ten. We did, we did. What you? was the confidence in Jordan L- or uh, Sam Howell uh, being yeah, a franchise just, quarterback? One, yeah. I was like, you oh, had like a four. four? <laughs> being even generous. That's fine. I guess <laughs> that's, and number one, by far and away, Atlanta Falcons. If you got a starting quarterback on this team that actually could do something of relevance, this is one of the better teams in in the NFC. I do firmly believe that. And we're talking about the division winner, and that's with respect to Tampa Bay. I say this defense is trending in that direction. You have that offensive talent. You draft yourself a solid quarterback. I do believe you should trade up from eight to two or three. 
Try your hardest. Give up assets if you need to to attain a, a, a higher draft pick to get Drake May or Jaden Daniels. I don't think eight's good enough to get you Jaden Daniels in this draft. No. So I, I still believe number one would be the Falcons because this could be an exciting ass team with a good quarterback in place. Yeah, I don't think one or two. I don't think it's be available. Honestly, I'd be surprised. I'd be shocked if Washington's going to trade out for the chance to get Caleb. Realistically, uh, the only one that May. could trade. Uh, which three I, with three with New England, Chicago, excuse me. depending on how they feel with Jaden Daniels, that is a chance. Um, my list uh, eight, I would have Chicago Bears. I like Justin Fields. Um, I don't know if he's a long term answer when you have Caleb Williams up for uh, you know you could select him number one. Seven, the Tennessee Titans. I like Bruce Hall from Will Levis, but overall he's pretty inconsistent. Completed less than sixty percent of his passes. Um, six, I have the Denver Broncos. It's going to be Jared Stidham. So if Jared Stidham is your only option, you need a quarterback. At five, I have the Las Vegas Raiders. Aiden O'Connell was not good this year. Jimmy Garoppolo got, what, four weeks, five weeks before he got pulled. Fine with that. There's no answer there. Four, the Commanders. The pieces offensively are set. You have a new owner, too. Um, and if they get the right head coach, the GM from San Francisco, I know you're a fan of, if they get the right head coach, they could turn it around quickly. Three, New England's. Um, they're searching for a Tom Brady succession plan. They thought it'd be Mac Jones. It's not Mac Jones. Two, I have the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, similar to the Commanders, the offensive pieces are in place. Ooh, Drake two. London could be a top 10 receiver. I think he has that type of talent. Kyle Pitts was still one of the most uh, you know, gifted prospects we'd seen coming out of the draft. Of course, B. John Robinson has potential to be one of the best backs in football. One, though, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, it's wow. not just quarterback. It's also because of Mike Tomlin. If Mike Tomlin doesn't get quarterback right, he said he's coming back for 2024, but that's the last year of his contract. If he doesn't get the quarterback right, there's a good chance he's gone. So I still think Tomlin's a good coach, but he has to get outside of the box when it comes to quarterbacks and play calling. They cannot keep being promotions in-house, trying Kenny Pickett or signing Mitch Trubisky or Mason Rudolph's been here for five years, but they could figure out quarterback and could keep Tomlin around. You could build something in Pittsburgh. I think the Commanders are the next great team in the NFC. I saw you tweet that, and honestly, I see your vision. I think Drake May is going to be That defense awesome. needs help, though. It does. It does. But the offense, I think, has a so many good very pieces. high ceiling. If was, you get Drake May, you get just a quarterback in that offense, then they can take a sizable leap. It's Chicago, bro. They got Ch a lot of Chicago assets. Chicago is next. Ryan Pohl low-key doesn't Chicago miss. And, and Falcons are next. He missed on Vilas Jones. That was about it. Vilas Jones. He had to kick kick when he, you know. Sorry, I just I just remember people like I was saying how terrible of a pick it was. Everyone's like, Vilas Jones is gonna ball out. Like, he, he's he done was, actually he relatively fucking, well he was though. Twenty five years old. When you go on his pro football reference page, they show punt returns before receiving yards. The Lakers are up ninety nine to eighty two. I'm keeping it I'm quiet. Who are you I'm playing? keeping. It I'm watching as we Dallas. speak. Dilo just had the insane ass scoop, oh, okay. and Luca's back and he's in Luca fashion. But what did I tell you on the way here? Was I talking to you? You were. Um, I wasn't in the car. Wasn't the way. You weren't. I apologize. Um, Would you saw a black I, shadow? You just assumed it was wow. me. It's unfortunate. Um, you know exactly what I? You know what I uh, <laughs> said to you? Luca will come back, and what would happen? It'll get worse. But who? Kyrie. Mm. He's playing like shit, isn't oh he? My God, right you don't want to look at the numbers. You don't want to do it. <laughs> I'm just excited about my Clippers winning it all, man. Gotta be Kyrie nice Irving tonight. Huh? Gotta be nice. Three for thirteen. Zero for three from three. Again. What is it about Coach Stars playing next to Luca? Quiet and play. Why? Kyrie's playing well. If Kawhi's healthy, though, ah, brother, man, it's going to be fun. No, he has been playing well. With Luca too, though. But mainly without. Without, he, the stats going to go up without Luca. Now, Kyrie's been bog lately. He's He's been on a different tear. And the next one was OD. I love the NBA. Next man, interesting. Nah, bro, because I saw ESPN chatting about how the Lakers not signing Kyrie. Is that the big mistake of their season? What, what, what went wrong? I'm just like... Just wait. Glazing. Just wait. And this is coming after we just beat OKC. Mm. OKC at full strength. That's why I was just like, I hate these conversations so terribly bad. It's the Lakers year, man. Crying. Don't let it happen. I'm going to be annoying. That's to be expected. All I ask is, you know, Clippers winning on. I'm you know what's my least favorite thing about being a Laker fan that I didn't realize until I started doing the show? Nobody likes us. I would, yeah. I, I wish I knew that. Yeah, this is even before a LeBron thing, you know. I know. Yeah. No one likes the Lakers. You, LeBron just made it ten times ten worse. Ten times worse. Yeah. And but it's like, the same thing with the Celtics. You, nobody likes the Celtics. Nobody likes but the Celtics. But I don't feel like the hate is as Because you bad. don't have like a LeBron. We also don't have Celtics topics. Like we talked about the Lakers. fucking talking like, about you guys. Like, I'll be honest. We're sick of it. There's, there's, I mean, I mean, there's all respect in the world. Let's not talk about Boston. Yeah, Dilo is Fuck, we can say, yeah, the best team in the league. Yeah. Like, uh, until fucking April comes yeah. around, there's nothing to talk about. Dilo's trying to start to misery. You're an idiot. He's playing well. 
You see who's the uh, number one in successful challenges? No. Who is, is it you guys? Smart fucking guy. You know it's the back people that tell him when the challenge done. He also has to make the decision. Yeah, after, yeah, the yeah. after they tell him challenge. Who they hired show, those they back show him, Who hired those Now you're guys. fucking cooking. I don't know. It wasn't Mozula? Probably. It's his staff. Oh, well, he, he didn't get... He was somebody else's. You know, maybe they got hired. Up, you know what? Yeah, me, but last year, he took hate, all of those hate, guys. Stop, Who's been hate. a better coach? Joe Mozula or Steve Kerr this Steve Kerr's been a bottom two coach in the NFL. I'm NBA. So a smoke you made the other day? I said Steve Kerr was damn near horrendous last year. You said lie. Steve Kerr, Darvin <laughs> Ham, not uh, that different. I've been telling Will you about the sky for a minute Will now. Will Hardy and Joe Mazzula might have been carrying Eme. Hate to say it. You're cooking. Well, Eme's doing good in Houston. We smoked him. When they're home. Yeah. yeah. Uh, everyone was going crazy about the Rockets. Reality hit, unfortunately. When they're home, they're dogs. They are really good at home. Yeah. You guys are... 20-0. Holy shit. 20-0 at okay. home? I was watching... Fire. I was watching. It'd be a shame if Miami the come in there Shout and just out to crumble the it all. You know? <laughs> uh, they mentioned how the only team to get close to going undefeated, which obviously is a good stat, is San Antonio. They lost the one game second on the second to last day of the NBA season. They lost to the Lakers. Kawhi and LA and Pau Gasol. Was it then? I think it was. I think the Celtics went forty and one one year too. I think it was them. That was, that was with like, the eighty five. Didn't the twenty sixteen so, Warriors some, go forty and one? Some old shit. That was, I feel like whenever you talk about the Celtics, people hate on you. Nah, that, I won't lie. You get hate for sure. The 86 Celtics were 14-1 at home. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. But I didn't realize that. People you do, you do an insanely amount of glazing, though. I do. That's my yeah. team. Do I glaze the Lakers like that? You do. I think I just trust them. That's all I do. Every, I trust Every five them. minutes, uh, bring them to the Lakers. We don't See, that's that. different, though. That's me that manifesting. Bad. You're an idiot. We're cooking. Joe Barreto sent us a super chat. First hey. off, shout out to the credit card connection, shout legend. Card connection. You guys are one. truly the best. The grind is real. Let's go. Let's start watching his video. Three bro. hour, 30 minute show. I'll tell you what, he's helped me out a lot, bro. Yeah, I got to get in tune. Yeah, Friday so, episode, so. hour 15 minutes. Hope you guys enjoy it. Yeah, you know, we haven't done a three hour show in a, in a while. I feel like that's only good for basketball, football purposes. Now, our, some of our best basketball episodes were three hours. Those are, but I'm saying for the season, like those are more playoff summer vibes. Just you know, but like, I miss talking about basketball. It's getting juicier. Talk about Friday, February's coming. I wanted to talk about today. Get rid of this to a topic. Hey, Y'all really? got me in my bag for an hour. I'm angry at you guys. You, you I'm not looking at about? him. I can't be mad at him. I expected this. I'm mad at y'all. Y'all had to pull some weight there. I barely talked. I know. Be honest. <laughs> I knew. I like, say that for the idea, yo. Now, guys, we don't need to talk about this. I've talked four times in four days in the group chat. Good for you. Yeah, I know that's not a flex. No, he said it, but you didn't say that. I said that. Oh, to no, him I was too. saying based on today's segment. I was like, that's what. I, yeah, the, shit, you, the two I'll thing was mis- sack, bro. the two thing was genuinely a yacht. We could have just went on. You think so? Both. I mean, both y'all, but you you're the one saying it was too long. You could have just been like, you know what? You were running your mouth a lot. You could have just been like, he's some, not holding back the dog. So, so, at, at some point, when I get an argument like that, I'm just being like, all right, bro. Your monologue was so it. fucking long. It was. It. it was kind it was of a mad filibuster. Long, yeah. You know what a filibuster is? No. Sometimes when you're in Congress, you get up on stage and you have to talk for a certain amount of time so that way a bill doesn't get passed. So you passed. said a whole bunch of nothing. <laughs> I wouldn't say a whole bunch of nothing, but I definitely you were just, talked you were a lot more. just running more. us the play-by-play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just so we ensured that uh-huh. I had all my bases covered. At the two minute fifty two second mark, they ran this play. <laughs> Tyree Kill, he just I don't know what he was doing. I was just, I don't even think he ever fully answered your question. No, I did say the answer. No, I don't recall at all. But I also was trying to emphasize the fact of is Tua holding him back. If you want to use this Chiefs game as him holding him back, I just wanted to show you the play calling as well. No, it's just a one please in no, six record no, in the no. playoffs. That's what's holding them back. They got to go. win games. Don't he beat respond. Dallas? His Super Bowl pick. Yeah, that was the Super Bowl. pick. And you call to a late, and he's not a late. I'm standing on business. We were this close. He's not a late. What, he is. Brave, do you have any closing remarks about what transpired this weekend before we shut down the show? Correct. I didn't, but um, I'll just say. Uh, Look into the camera. Adjust the fans, please. Uh, I think the camera <laughs> shut off. The memory card full. Yeah, it's still showing, though. We right, still have video. Go ahead. Look into the camera and talk. So I'll just say um, I apologize to the fans. You know, I apologize for letting you out down, especially the day one ones that, um, you know, look at me as their guy. You know, you know how I feel. You know how I am. And um, I want to get back to that mentality of standing on business, you know, and um, just being the, the fan favorite. So I'm going to do whatever I can to work hard and get back to that goal because that's my main goal. I don't really give a fuck about what I say. It's just being, you know, the favorite for y'all. Isn't that, that I, I bet it must have hurt to see Riv no longer my favorite. I'm moving on to Drew. It did. Like of all like people, I know, I know. You're like, you're the bottom of the barrel. I know. <laughs> so it's like going to you, bottom like, barrel, that so hurt nice. me mentally, but. We'll that's got to hurt. Yeah. And that's going to do it for episode 344 <laughs> of <laughs> the Pick Aside Podcast. You guys can follow us at Pick Aside Podcast on TikTok, 
and on Instagram at Pick Us Out Pod on Twitter. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Santa goes, I'm looking away. <laughs>